OG, I throw up the plate. Penny, he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. Penny, he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. Penny, he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. Penny, he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate. Niggas don't know what to think. Don't I get money, you change. What you thought we was the same? Still stay away from them clones. Niggas better leave me alone. Talking about niggas is low. Run with niggas who don't know you. Whoa. I made that zagger when city to city. You niggas not hot in your state. Yeah. If it was money to get a hit, Henny, we get it and never complain. Same go for the game. And we split it up all the same. I can't really eat, let's stay straight. Cause we go way back in the day. My day runs from back in the day. They still hang around me today. You wanna come run us, you can't. I'm rolling, I'm loud, it's great. But mama, she bad, but complain. Cause I'm too in love with my dreams. And I gotta get on the plane. And go get this money with you. I draw up the plate. Penny, he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Gang. Henny be all on my drink. You niggas is stupid, you think that should change? You not even hot in your gang. Ain't nothing even hot about your gang. You niggas be lying about saying, be posting them pictures of guns for the fame. Niggas just look at me different now. Say that's your man, but he a clown. But fuck around with the fuck around. Boy, nigga, you should cut it out. Me and my niggas take different routes. Put your bitch nigga all in his mouth. Hold up, my nigga, we different now. I need a robber to sit my style. I get a check today, I spent it all tomorrow. I get a bitch today, she probably a foreign model. Yeah, yeah. I get a check today, I spent it all tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. I'm with my gang today, tomorrow never promise. OG, I draw up the plate, and then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang, gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate, and then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang, gang, gang. OG, I draw up the plate, and then he go get the cake. Then we link up with the gang. Sexy boy, I'm not your 
watch your boy toy I'm just a sexy boy I'm not your boy toy That might flip the Hands off the merchandise I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. Boy, 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 boy. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. Boy, boy. I'm just a sexy boy. Sexy boy. I'm not your boy toy. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to another edition of the Pocket Locker Podcast. Sorry about that. Earlier had a little bit of technical difficulty. Uh, I I forgot the reason I didn't show you guys the uh, Bill Nye and Ken Ham walking tour of the arc encounter is because doing so uh, gets the stream pulled. I forgot how strict freaking answers and genesis is with their uh dmca copyright stuff so uh i apologize for that also i honestly gotta be honest with you guys i'm thinking we're probably gonna have to restart this stream i don't know it just it just looks to me like it's not uh it looks like it's having an encoder problem to be honest with you where it's just not like staying up and running. My stream keeps freezing. Let me know how it is on you guys and what's going on on your end. Like on my end, the stream looks like dog shit. It just it just is freezing, 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 freezing. Um how's the how's the stream out there in in, in YouTube land? Cause I'd rather restart it than have a a a, a multi hour f- stream that's absolutely useless no freezing you guys good to go all right all right i'll take your i'll take your war for it thanks gang appreciate the mods for giving me some feedback um all right then uh let's go ahead and uh do what we do best in that case let's get our goddamn show started people tuned in for a show all right um let's get started with our communion uh y'all already know the drill if you don't act like you do uh i've got some freezing cold whiskey here in my tumbler oh i forgot i gotta change Ah, there we go. There we go. Got to get my machines ready here. Hashtag time to sue all the machines. Communion time, baby. Please raise your glasses and hold on to your asses. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the flying man. All glory and honor is yours who flied for our sins forever and ever. You may drink.
right, gang, that was our communion hymn, and our communion song comes to us from Foy oh, Vance. It is called Where Everybody Knows Your Name. It's our little community theme song, and uh, we hope you enjoy it. Let me see. Let me get you guys set up here. I've uh, switched the screen over so you can see what I see. Boom. Boy, you're going to play what to finish us up? Do you know what? I don't know the name of this song, actually, but I know the song, and so will you. Oh, look forward to this. <laughs> Five bands, take it away. <laughs> Everything you got. Alright, Wolf then is first. Taking Appreciate a break you. from all your worries sure would help a lot. Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name. And the Glad you came. You want to be where you can see. Troubles are all the same. You want to go where everybody knows your name. Well, all those nights when you got no lights. Cameron and Bennett the check was second. Is in the mail. And Lamont was and third. Your little angel on the cottard by its tail. You served fiance. Alright, I've got Wolf then, Cameron Bennett, Lamont, YouTube Punk, Crypto, uh, Pragmatic Crystal, this one guy. Thanks for the compliment, appreciate that. Uh, Liz Allen. Paul's in the house. You wanna be where Jeff's daughter. I, 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 I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> Jeff's daughter. <laughs> Lena, Melody, Joy. Appreciate y'all. Well, you get out of bed, the coffee's dead. The morning isn't looking bright. You shrink right off to your and He doesn't even write Your girlfriend says she's not a girl Be glad there's one place in the world Where everybody knows your name And they're always glad you came you want to be where you can see Troubles are all the same You want to go where everybody knows your name You want to be where you can see Troubles are all the same You want to go where everybody knows your name Vance. Most common word coming in by text boy is goosebumps, believe it or not. We've had that repeatedly across the whole series. Alright, gang, like I said, I, I totally I, I was like, I, I could have sworn I wanted to review the Ken Ham Bill Nye um, second debate at the Ark Encounter on stream before, and I was like, oh yeah, that's right. That's because it gets pulled. So fuck answers in Genesis. They're sitting on some bullshit. Uh, but what I decided I think I'll do, especially since some of this is spurred on by that person trying to be a smart ass and call out Uncle Bobby, oh, you should visit the Ark Encounter, um, is I think I'll ask Uncle Bobby to review that um, second debate with me. Um, in Gather, as like a Gather exclusive, 
and that should be a good way to fulfill our movie night for our patrons. So, um, you know, check out Gin and Truth on YouTube. Link's in the description. Join his Patreon. I have a Patreon as well. Link is in the description. Um, and um, I think as long as you're a Patreon of one of us, or, or I think the mods also uh, um, have access, we'll have access to that VIP gather. Uh, but yeah, I think we may want to do that exclusively for our Patreons. Um, so anyway, I think that's what we'll do. I'm sure Uncle Bobby will be thinking that's cool. He said before he'd like to do like uh, apologist movies and stuff as a review. So um, that'll be, um, I think we'll do it that way. And uh, in the meanwhile, as sort of like a preview um, before we get into the main um, program of today, the main thing I want to review, which is uh, Lena's appearance on Richard Madsen, which, boy, whew, it's going to be a lot there. Um, let's uh, take a little look at um, this uh, video from Seth Andrews over at The Thinking Atheist, which is... Um, uh, a discussion of his time with some other atheists at the Ark Encounter. So we'll do this as kind of like a preview of um, reviewing that full uh, two-hour debate between Ken Ham and Bill Nye. On a rainy September Friday, I visited Ken Ham's $100 million paperweight in Williamstown, Kentucky. I went to the Ark Encounter. Yeah, that's me, under a borrowed umbrella, standing in a suspiciously appropriate rainstorm. No, not that kind of rainstorm. An actual rain. One that did not last for 40 days and 40 nights, which is really good, because Ken Ham's Ark was looking a little rough around the woodwork, presumably due to the elements, which prompts the question of how Ken's actual Ark might have fared on actual seas. But that is another video for another time. Now, I don't know what the crowd normally looks like, but on this rainy this so Friday, good. this was the view of the outer parking lot. And this was the lot near the gate. These spaces presumably filled by religious homeschoolers who thought that Ken Ham's Creation Absolutely. Museum was a scientific tour de force. School heroes, Here's one of the first baby. things I discovered. The Ark isn't really an Ark. At the all. The back half of the structure is actually a building, which is something I don't remember hearing about at all the fundraising press conferences. I'm pulling him down a little bit. I walked around the structure, back that to the Ark side, me. past the suffocating crowds, and I was joined by my friend and fellow activist, Matt Dillahunty. Because if you're going to tour the Ark, you should do so two by two. Two by two, baby. Let's Here's get it. Here's one of the first things I saw inside the exhibit. It was a wood carving. Now, it's hard to make out what's happening. To me, it looks like Dumbledore levitating a tiny, like, bathtub toy Ark while standing next to a snake and a severed leg with the top of the carving populated with various Seth animals has a fantastic under voice. a giant phoenix. And Jesus, I don't know what the hell this is. I don't know what it's supposed to represent. And for the record, it was one of the more sensible exhibits on display. I saw a bunch of crates. Apparently, this is where they keep the Ark of the Covenant. I got to see Bambi while I was there. Now, from this exhibit, we can infer that Noah ran one of the world's first puppy mills. Go ahead, Google puppy mill. Those awful places where breeders keep dogs in tiny cages with various apparatus to deliver food and water. Look it up, and then look at this section of the Ark Encounter. Had Noah built this sucker today, the Humane Society would not be happy. The good news is now this is a this is a really good point, and of course, you know the point that third grade Uncle Bobby was really uh, trying to press home, at least on uh, at a particular time, was what do they do with all the poop? Uh, but this is just as big of an issue, which is you know uh, not only would it be inhumane to house the animals in this close quarters, there's no way they'd be able to develop properly, right? Like. Um, you know, you, you can't develop 
the proper ability to walk without space to walk, right? I mean, um, so this is one of many absolute absurdities, right? And to build this structure just to lie to people about this all is really uh, quite sinister, gang. Real fucked up. As at least the Ark was apparently built to code with sprinklers, you know, in case God decided to punish somebody with fire. Ah! Noah's family was there to greet us near the entrance. Now notice the various ethnicities of each of the wives. According to the Ark encounter, Thanks, Cameron. Appreciate Noah's you, wife, brother. who did not look 500, was imagined as somebody who might look like the great, 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 great etc. grandmother to all of humankind. Japheth's wife was imagined Boom. as more European. Ham's wife was more African. There you go, Japheth's daughter. Yo, yo, fam, fam up in here. And Shem's wife was a mixture of please. Wait, what's wife was more African. Oh, and look, more, more, as more African, European. more Europe. Ham's wife was more. And it literally says this. Look, 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 look at this, y'all. Japheth and Raina. Possesses distinct features that are commonly seen in many people from Europe. I gotta talk to Rob about this, y'all. I got an idea for Rob Pennock. Ooh, I got an idea. Ooh, I got an idea for Rob. All right, so look, there's Japheth's daughter, right? Japheth's people. All right, then him. They have features that are more African and Asian. Kezia's appearance highlights traits of people found in both of these regions. Like, they just... What? So they, so they build their racist-ass narrative out and then backfill it with what we figured out about what we know about real people from these regions. This is just... And then Shem's people, them fucked up assholes that can't, that can't quit quarreling, the, they were in the Middle East, such as Ariel's appearance mirrors the attributes of people from that area of the world. Wow. African, and Shem's wife was a mixture wow. of pleasing browns, which might explain several ethnicities. Now, you mix together this potpourri of traits, Ooh, and you sprinkle wow. in some incest... And All right, Wolf, yeah, hit me up on Discord, bro. And That's the best way to get the touch thousands of ethnic groups that we see on the earth today. Angels, Thanks, Angels, Noah. From Africa right now. Africa also, right one now. of the first things Africa I noticed right were these curious Africa right light now. fixtures inside the ark. They just struck me. I mean, I don't know. They had a strangely testicular quality. You see what I'm talking about? They do. I saw a few more animals here and there in various cages. Lots of storage for water and food and dinosaurs. But damn near nowhere yes, enough. Yes, dinosaurs. Yes, dinosaurs. I bumped into a painting of Kenny Loggins. I just love his music. Gang, what is the problem here? Again, they still have to keep mess representing this. It's the problem. Hey, Wolf, then glad you're here, bro. Check this out, bro. Check this out, bro. Kent. Hovind is a liar who lies to people because dinosaurs and people didn't cohabitate the earth at the same time. And to make biblical narratives work, man has to be around from the beginning, which means all the animal groups have to be around from the beginning, which means they're always depicting humans and large dinosaurs as contemporaries that is a fucking lie and it is such a basic anachronism y'all it is like taking a tesla it's like taking a tesla and putting it in the the fucking dead sea scrolls that's how glaring of a mistake it is like, yeah, like, yeah, everybody was riding around on Camelback, except this one group who was in a flying car with a supercomputer inside of it. Like, like, it, it, it is, it is, wow. Like, like, it, it's a very simple thing because a lot of us don't really think through geology 
and we don't think through like which animal groups lived at the same time as which other ones. But we, you don't have to. You don't have to. Just focus on this one glaring anachronism, this one glaring mistake, this one obvious deal breaker. Humans and the, the large dinosaurs you see in Jurassic Park did not cohabitate the planet at the same time. Okay? It's a problem. Uh, now, you want to talk about dinosaur, birds or dinosaurs, and we cohabitate the planet with birds. It's too terrifying. You're just misrepresenting this because you don't want to admit when you're wrong. I learned at the Ark Encounter one of the reasons for humankind's descent into darkness and the fall oh, of God. man was civilization. Wolf, then we really can't talk about it. We really can't talk about it because if you actually wanted to have a conversation, if you actually wanted, if you actually wanted to be open about it, you would already know I'm right. So what you guys want to do is you want to have a conversation, a debate. You're open to learning about something that isn't a conversation, isn't a debate. And quite frankly, if you haven't learned this by now, you're thoroughly deficient. And this is the tough part that y'all got to understand that. Y'all know me. I got a new attitude in 2023. It's really the attitude I always had, just amped up and tired of bullshit. And I've just gotten exhausted. I'm just, I'm already exhausted of the word games and the the civility politics. We just got to call a spade a spade. Lupin, if you weren't such an ignorant fuckhead to begin with, we wouldn't be having this conversation. As soon as you get a fucking clue, and actually go learn some shit, you're going to realize how wrong you are about this. And not only will there no longer be anything to talk about, you're actually going to be quite embarrassed that you used to believe the way you believe. So I personally don't really think us having a conversation about did dinosaurs and humans uh, cohabitate, it is, it's just live on the earth. It's not, it's not a good conversation for anybody to have. Matter of fact, the only reason you want to have it is because it then frames our knowledge and your ignorance on equal footing as simply differences of belief or differences of opinion. It isn't about our beliefs and opinions. We're right, you're wrong. And the, the really sad part is you guys don't seem to realize how arrogant you are to keep insisting otherwise. But I'm not going to keep being nice about it. You guys are assholes. You're on the same shit Richard Madsen is on. You don't come to bring peace. You don't come to bring respect. You literally come to interfere with people's truth. You come to gaslight us, point blank end of story, and you're very, very immature and ill-intentioned people. So... Shit's going to be rough around here because, again, I'm here to bond with my community. I honestly wish a lot of these people would go away. We give them a chance. We hear them out. We try to set them straight. If they don't respond, it's because they don't, if they don't know, it's because they don't want to know. If they don't grow, it's because they don't want to grow. When they don't learn, it's because they don't want to learn. At the end of the day, we're right. And, uh, you know, it's like people that come into my classroom you come into my classroom, I'm here to teach you. Shut the fuck up and learn. Now, if you're going to challenge my shit, you better show up with some fucking evidence capable of challenging my shit. But they don't because they know they can't. The difference is in the classroom is we hold people accountable. We give out grades. The people who learn and reflect that they're learning get A's. The students who are eh get C's. And the students who don't get it get F's. And they fail. And they either have to try again or they do not continue to matriculate. I can't have that kind of accountability on YouTube, but I'm not just going to keep wasting my time. Lupin, here's the truth. You've taken my class. We've talked about shit for hours. You fail to grow every single time. You've seen what's going on. You've seen Kent Hovind drag through the mud on YouTube. You've seen your faith exposed. You've heard all these fucking arguments. You think you know better than everybody. You've seen Donald Trump. You've seen all the fucking evidence against him. You just, you just don't care. So, I, I mean, 
I, I, I don't hate you. I'm not thoroughly, I'm not like, and I'm not like super opposed to the idea of appearing on your channel. But if I'm being honest, I, I think engaging with you is a waste of time. So somewhat I do it for my own entertainment. Somewhat I hope I do it so that people who think like you are vicariously embarrassed through you. But you got a lot of maturing to do before uh, we're really willing, we're ready to sit down across the table from each other as equals. That's right. We became too civilized to remain good. I stumbled upon this fantastic diorama. It depicts pre-flood wickedness. People back then weren't thrown to the lions. They were thrown to the, to the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hang on. Oh, Ken, oh, it's too good. Ken Ham, you good. just cracked me up, man. Wait, hang on. We can't be... There were no more looping distractions. Come on. We got to go back. This is funny. Let's get it. I bumped into a this painting. Is all humans and, science, humans and, and dinosaurs. Music. Check it out. I learned at the Ark Encounter Humans one of the reasons for humankind's descent into darkness. Look at the and descent the into darkness. Look at the descent into darkness. <laughs> Wait, what is that? Does that say giants? Giants. Um, something else. Then it says music. Then polygamy. <laughs> Civilization. I learned at the Ark Encounter. Civilization is part of the descent into darkness. Yeah, you know that civilization that you guys know that fucking plumbing and agriculture and uh, animal husbandry that extended our life expectancy by decades, allowed us to exponentially grow our population size, allowed us to, uh, you, you know, transmit and translate ideas from different parts of the world and create the 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 very modern met metropolitan thinking right y'all i'm not talking about cities and da da da, da. metropolitan thinking right y'all this idea that people from different parts of the world different backgrounds can come together cohabitate live together learn from each other share their ideas create a common culture um, unique to that location that is in somewhat independent of the backgrounds of all the people participating in it. I mean, uh, American There's democracy... There's a reason why this world's going to hell. Seriously, American democracy is, is, is really of this breed, but again, they, they want to teach us that, that literally the shit that, that can... I mean, the, the, this is a cult I'll tell you the descent into darkness. It should be fucking Yahweh, the Old Testament, fucking uh, Jesus, Muhammad. I mean, yeah, yeah, there's a descent into darkness and religion is guiding the way. One of the reasons for humankind's descent into darkness and the fall of man was civilization. Are you not That's entertained? Right. We became too civilized to remain good. I stumbled upon this good. fantastic this. diorama. What the fuck? It depicts pre-flood wickedness. People back then weren't thrown to the lions. They were thrown to the, to the dinosaurs. Oh, they're thrown to the dinosaurs. <laughs> thrown to the T-Rex. Yo, that is literally so oh, bad. Ken, Ken. Does he live or does he die? You give, him the, you give him the fucking thumbs down, right? You give him the fucking thumbs down from the fucking, uh, the, the, you know, the Caesars fucking overlooking the shit. You know, should he live or shall he die? And then the people are chanting, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. We stand up all glorious and shit. Probably got the robe on because you're Caesar and all of that shit. Thumbs down. Oh! 
bitches start shaking their titties and everything. Like everybody gets so excited because they really just want to see somebody die. You know, it's 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 pre-flood wickedness. You know, they they you think the Romans? You think the Romans were into some blood sport? Oh, you should see the the pre-flood humans. Uh, oh, they put the Romans to shame. So as soon as they not now somebody's dying, the titties was all out. Bitches just started fingering themselves right there. Motherfuckers just start jerking off. They should jerk off to this shit. This was pre-porn, porn, porn. People hadn't even figured out yet that you should actually jerk off to sex. They would. They hadn't figured it out yet. They was back then. They was just jerking off to human sacrifice. Oh, feed them to the T Rex. That's that's what happened. That's what happened. It's some that shit is beautiful. Ham, you just cracked me up, man. The evil continued, just begging for a great and global flood. Humankind sacrificed babies. We participated in all kinds of carnality, and we were generally horny. There were more cages, various cages. Not many relative to the size of the ark, but enough to get your attention. Many of these cages relatively tiny which gave the few animals we saw almost no room to move or maneuver. Right. But they were right. stuffed, so I guess this was not a problem. Right. Like, but how do you get arc, a full-grown-ass monkey with nowhere to climb, walk, d- d- birds ain't got nowhere to... F- oh, Lord. And what it... were pissed. Feathers... We learned in the Ark Encounter they, how they thousands got, of tons of They still got dinosaurs poop. in here looking like lizards, not like uh, real dinosaurs. Poop might have been routed to a huge, animal-powered Uber toilet. A big toilet house within the boat. There it is, yep. Uncle Bobby! All right, Uncle Bobby, now quit your, quit your fucking yapping, nine-year-old Robert Reed. All right, they just they just had they just had a little toilet house. All right, there it is. They th- they thought of everything, gang. No, I wonder if problem they... problem solved. We learned in the Ark Encounter how thousands of tons of animal poop might have been routed to a huge animal-powered Uber toilet, or a big toilet powered. house oh, within damn, the that's boat. Good. You know, I wonder if they built it with shittim wood. For the kids, they had a section called Fairy Tale Ark, which I thought was the redundant. The entire ark, yeah, seriously. The ark had these various stations for growing vegetation. There were crew quarters for Noah and his family, pretty swank quarters, if I may say, which is good. They would definitely need to rest, considering that the ark would mean lots and lots of walking through lots and lots of empty space. In truth, not much in the way of animals, just lots of open air, some wood, some pottery, a few stuffed creatures, and tons and tons of guilt. The Ark Encounter is loaded with guilt. Guilt for being born human. Guilt for being so icky and sinful. Guilt for making God angry enough to drown us all in the first place. The Ark Encounter certainly was expensive to build. You know, I wonder, how did Noah manage to build an Ark with only trees and tar? While it took Ken Ham over $100 million, a huge construction crew, and state-of-the-art equipment. You know, I wonder what $100 million might have done to help disaster relief victims or build shelters for the homeless or feed hungry children or provide medicines to the sick or fund cancer research or provide tangible benefit for any of the countless worthy needs and causes that are supposed to be God's good work. Nah, as they said in that other video, there's just plenty of, there's plenty of organizations already doing that, you know? There's just there's just plenty of organizations already doing that, and, and somebody just had to build an ark. That's pretty much it. Some empty space, a few animals, lots of wood, lots of stuff on the walls you're supposed to read, all at an asking price of $40 Holy a ticket, shit. not including the $10 to park. Thou shalt not steal. Indeed. My friends, at the end of the tour, I was struck again by the opinion that the Ark Encounter is warped and not because of the rain. It's a bogus story sold to adults and a lie told to children. 
It's a church masquerading as a Kentucky tourist attraction, and it's a tragic waste of resources. The one upside was this. Inside the Ark Encounter, Matt Dillahunty and I discovered one moment of convergence where we and Ken Ham absolutely agree. The placard said, if I can convince you that the flood was not real, then I can convince you that heaven and hell are not real. Hey, Ken. Hey, baby. You're absolutely right. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh, way to end that, fellas. Oh, that was dope. Hell yeah. I want to put that shit on the wall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm with that. I'm with that. I'm with that. Yeah. Yeah, man, we're jamming. Yeah. And I hope you like jamming too. Yeah, uh, yeah, we're jamming. Oh, did you want the real music? Oh, did you want the real well, You're a fucking YouTube nerd. That's the problem. Get in gather. We can play real music and gather. We can't play shit on YouTube. You get everything snatched around here. You can't even play fucking answers in Genesis fucking public ass debates. This is ridiculous. All right, now, uh, here's what we're going to do next. Up next. Uh, we're we're going to get into what we're really here for. And God damn it, I didn't realize how much content there was, so... Maybe we'll get through all of this today if we stay here through the entire weekend. Uh, fuck. Oof, holy shit. Uh, but yeah, Lena was on Richard Madsen's channel. I didn't get to see a lot of it. I got to be honest with you guys. I don't watch Richard Madsen. Uh, but I noticed Lena was up there, so I was like, oh, cool. And the bit I listened to, Lena was just, destroying Richard Madsen, just knifing and slicing and dicing and murdery, murdery with the neck stuff. Uh, and Richard Madsen was just flailing and flailing and flailing and failing. Um, and so I said, hey, you know what? The fucking Ark Encounter bullshit got pulled. Let's, uh, let's, let's uh, run down Lena's conversation with Richard Madsen uh but then I guess in pulling it up I guess I realized um I'm actually the 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 catalyst for this conversation I guess you could say so I guess here in the beginning it looks like he's got some footage from me or something so uh I'll be right back we're gonna roll his intro uh I guess he'll so he'll talk a little bit about me and then get into the conversation with Lena so we were mostly here to uh, show some support to Lena, but uh, I guess uh, I'm up in this too because because Richard Madsen has had beef with me since I decided to, uh, you know, it's one of them rivalries that basically just starts because a person ain't got shit going on. They realize you ain't really buying what they selling, so then they decide they got to get something out of you. They got to get some blood from that stone, so... Uh, they they decide basically to start a rivalry. So I don't really remember. Oh yeah, this uh, supposedly started because I cursed when I when I didn't buy the Richard Space Jesus bullshit. But you know, of course not. He was he was trying to play a fucking word game with me and then like bully me out of if not my money, at least some sort of confession that. He had got me, and he was so right. Like, his whole thing is a gotcha. And to be honest with y'all, I don't really give a fuck about Richard Madsen, to be honest with you. I think he's a little bit beneath me. Like, I feel like I'm punching down when I talk about Richard Madsen because I just don't think he's really bright or intelligent. I think he's one of those dudes that's just really, really whacked out. Um, and, you know... This is like a somewhat healthy outlet for him, I guess. He's not harming anybody as long as he's sitting in his room making YouTube videos. But what bothers me about these type of morons is I feel like a lot of us are, let me keep it hunted, a lot of us are escaping cults. Like a lot of us 
we, we're, we're, we're part of families that are still in these cults. They're still Christians. They're still buying in all this bullshit. And um, a lot of our friends are still dealing with that, or that's just part of our past. And it's like we're trying to now reconstruct our lives and our new identities, um, you know, make some friends, make some community, really get some support for what we're dealing with. And then we have these people that essentially exist. They're like leeches. Like they, they literally, they're parasites. Like they, they don't have a thing. Their thing is to uh, tear apart our thing. And nevertheless, a lot of us are really still programmed by the cult bullshit. And then when people come around with the cult bullshit, a lot of us are still very vulnerable to that. And I'm trying it really pisses me off and I'm trying to be sensitive to our community. And really, I think a lot of us are just carrying that baggage with us. And we say, you could take the hood out the, you could take the kid out the hood. You can't take the hood out the kid. It feels very much like that. And so it feels like even now as atheists, as long as somebody comes around smiling and nodding and saying peace and respect or, saying they want to be friends or saying they support you or whatever. It's like we're ignoring their behavior. We're ignoring their intentions. We're ignoring the content of their message. We're ignoring the fact that they're um, obst obstructionist, that they're, that they're literally here to interfere. We're ignoring the fact that they hijack our streams, that they hijack our conversations, that they deliberately misrepresent what we're about and our arguments, that, that their fundamental stances undermine our intelligence, that they're fucking perpetual gaslighters. And, and I hate to say it, as much as I'm si I, 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 I'm, uh, it pisses me off, but motherfuckers like that are going to do that shit. They're assholes. They're losers. Losers are going to be fucking losers. What pisses me off is all you motherfuckers that are supposed to be critical thinkers and skeptics and you're supposed to know better and you fall for this shit still. Now, I'm trying to be sympathetic about it. Like, yeah, you know, we're the type of motherfuckers that are brand new out of cults a few years ago. So, yeah, we probably are still susceptible to cult-like behavior and we are still susceptible to that type of, uh, you know, building bridges of love and understanding. But I'm tired of that shit, y'all. You can't, you can't, you can't sugarcoat a poison pill and then I'm going to act like you didn't come to poison me. So I'm trying to be patient with our community to like figure this out. But I'm also going to call it out because I'm, I'm just tired of it. And so if you want to be one of these motherfuckers that defends these people because they're so friendly, like whatever. I just think you're a sucker. Like I, well, I think you're either a sucker or a virtue signaler. You're either so hooked on your fucking ego that you that you 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 have to have everybody think you're nice, even your fucking enemy. So somebody could come to your house to shit in the middle of your fucking dinner, and you're gonna be polite about it because you just need everybody to see how friendly and polite you are, or you're that much of a sucker. You really you really can't tell when somebody's coming to undermine your fucking identity, when somebody's gaslighting you, when somebody's literally pretending like you can't read, like you don't know, like you're an ex-evangelical, but you don't really understand what the true Christian doctrine really would be in all of this shit. You can lie to yourself, you can't lie to me. But peace and respect to you all. Go fuck yourself, Welcome Richard Mons Madsen. Doctrine. And today I'll be reviewing. Sometimes a review of a review. The objective of a talk. world and the narrative world touch. How long should I go on with this? Um. Not to be insulting at all, but, you know, you can ask a very short question and it might have a very long answer. So it doesn't always make sense to keep answering and keep answering. So I'm going to try to keep this fairly short, uh, keep it down to just the highlights, 
and not work too hard at expounding on and on and on. You guys have watched debates, right? What you end up with is a never-ending uh, forward progression, if it progresses, which often it doesn't. And I get the feeling that this actually won't progress much further than this. So this is the last time I'll be addressing this. Uh, Dr. J. Bundy of Pocket Locker 86. Um, if you happen to have watched the video that I created in response to the talk that I had with him, <laughs> and these things just go on forever. And I'm not sure they really should. I wonder how long you'll be interested in even viewing something like this. Here's the thing. If I don't respond, then it looks like I'm, he made good points and I can't respond. If I do respond, it looks like I'm just being pedantic and um, in my own biases, confirming my own views. In which case, you know, it's, it's a lose-lose situation at some point. So this will be the last time I'm doing this. And um, I hope you guys are skeptical and can see what's really going on here. I'm, I'm not very good at insulting people. I tried when I was a kid into my teenage years through puberty when usually what happened was I, I wasn't good at insulting people. I wasn't good at intimidating people. They would just eventually figure that I'm weak and, uh, and come at me and then I'd end up in a fight and kick their ass because I'm not good at talking crap. Uh, and here we go with somebody just talking crap. Uh, yeah, let's hear what the fuck this fool Richard Madsen is talking about. Oh my goodness. What a joke. Peace and respect to you all. Welcome to Demolish Doctrine. Let me pause that for a minute. I forgot to put my headphones on. These things are so comfortable. Man, if, if, if you got like 200 bucks to put into a set of earbuds um, that cannot make echo... I really recommend aftershocks. Now the the microphone on them is crap. You got to get a separate mic, but man. All right, end. pause the tape off rip. <coughs> I'm done with this nigga, yo. Like Richard Madsen, here's the thing. You come at the king, you best not miss. And here's the problem. You missed. Um Richard Madsen is sitting on some weaponized ignorance, and I really get sick of everybody making excuses for him because we like Richard Madsen. Look, I don't know what's weaponized about what I'm saying. Um, everything that I'm saying, I think I'm not stretching reality. I'm not stretching logic. I'm not stretching the text of the Bible. In fact, I'm, I'm usually playing it very, very safe and understating everything I'm saying. So, I don't know about this weaponization part, except that if someone feels that I'm weaponizing something, it's probably because they're being a little bit defensive for some reason. And I, I think I know in this case what those reasons are. If you guys are a sucker for that shit, then fine. Go ahead, be a sucker for that shit. But just because somebody says peace and respect to you doesn't mean they're bringing you peace or respect. Richard? I do want to extend everyone peace and respect. In fact, when I say it, it can be taken two ways. I wish that you give others peace and respect. You know, that you have peace so that you can respect others. And I, I really want that for you. And by that, I mean, I pray that you would accept the reality that you experience for exactly what it is. For instance, if a friend of yours, you know, who you're emotionally involved with, um, starts to act like they have some real mental issues, you should just accept that they have mental issues and try to take that into consideration in your interactions with them and that will give you peace uh, or even an enemy that ha apparently has actual mental issues why not accept that they have some kind of birth defect that it was never their fault that they never act asked for that that they they didn't want to be dysfunctional in whatever way like like we already do this in consideration of people that are born with an extra chromosome. Uh, we, we take them into consideration. We consider children. Uh, why not take into consideration 
the actual defect that is things like psychopathy, for instance. Not that I'm saying Dr. Uh, Bundy has psychopathy. I don't think he does. Um, but why not just say, I accept that this person is what they is, and I'm okay with it. I can have peace in that. And that's what I'm talking about. When I say peace and respect, I'm talking about, I, I hope for you, uh, anyone who watched this, everyone in the whole world, uh, I, I hope for them that they accept the reality at hand and have peace with it. Peace and respect, uh, Clout, Maynard Saves, and Mathpig. Uh, by the way, um, Maynard Saves, just so you know, I'm completely forthcoming. I, I, I do know uh, that you appear on other channels. Uh, I, I do know that, that you have commented on, on other channels and etc. Cheers, gang. Oh, man. Thank God it's Friday. Again, I feel a bit like I'm punching down, but in this case, punching down is necessary. <sighs> Richard Madsen is weaponized because like many other terms we use so strongly in this community, he fits the definition. <laughs> to weaponize something is to use it as a weapon or to exploit something uh, in opposition of a particular person or group. And what Richard Madsen He's weaponized about so many things, which is why I just said weaponized ignorance. He's got a whole suite of shit that he weaponizes. He intends to claim he's scientific only then to misrepresent science so that he can argue for anti-scientific positions to undermine and turn people against the consensus understanding of science and the scientific results. As a professional science scientist, that's a problem. You're working against my group. We are scientists, we do the science, and we are science educators, we teach the science. You undermine our research efforts by literally sowing seeds of discord and, and, and a lack of confidence in the process by which we produce our results. You undermine our education efforts by fundamentally misrepresenting the scientific process and how it works. And then you have the audacity to do it under the banner of pro-science. You have the, the, the audacity to fly the flag as a fucking traitor. On top of that, I'm an atheist, and you know that. I have a channel, an atheist channel. You know that. I'm very serious about building and supporting a community of atheists, and you know that. And he is an apologist. Seeking to argue and undermine the the personal narrative of atheist he literally seeks to get us to question our security in our atheism that's his goal again it's a form of abuse in which the abuser seeks to get the victim to doubt their sense of reality in order to gain power over them. I gave you the definition. What's the fucking word? Ding, ding, ding. You all said gaslighting, didn't you?
how much how how much clearer does it need to be? Shall I continue? I made it clear multiple times. I genuinely have a fucking a hundred dollar challenge and an open challenge. Also consider it to be a challenge against the U.S. Championship of World Wrestling Entertainment, but certainly got $100 on the line, and he knows this. If you can give me evidence of God. Now, of course, as a scientist, when I say evidence, I mean what scientists mean when scientists use the word evidence, and he knows that. And by God... He knows I also mean, number one, the actual definition of God, if you look it up in the dictionary, because that's the definition of God. And number two, certainly the, the God of Christianity and my former beliefs or any of the Abrahamic gods, again, the God that, of course, Richard knows I'm speaking to through my personal experience and the common definition of the word God. But again, he sought to do what? He sought to play a fucking word game where he gets to redefine evidence based on his preferred use of the term, which is not a use I would agree with and not the way scientists use the word evidence. And then totally twist and contort the definition of God so that it's no longer literally something most of us would consider to be God any longer. And then literally tell me I should turn over my money because ha ha checkmate Jay Bundy. He outsmarted the great dual PhD, hasn't he? Now again, if hijacking my show so you can embarrass me in front of my audience, potentially taking my money, although I'm sure he'll say he didn't do it for the money or whatever, but any of you remember that stream? That's exactly what he pretty much said. Oh, this will be easy for me to get your $100. Well, guess, guess, guess I'm going to get that $100 now, right? So literally hijacks my stream so he can twist and contort my words so he can show me up in front of my own community. Now, again, if that isn't literally the definition of weaponized, literally being the type of ignorant asshole who plays word games and twist and contort the words out of, like, just like we saw with Uncle Bobby and Chris, you have to be careful of every single syllable that comes out of your mouth because they will use it against you. It's like talking to, it's an interrogation, like Uncle Bobby said. It's a police interrogation. Uncle Bobby forgets to fill in the blanks. Uncle Bobby, what do you mean when you say it's a police interrogation? I just realized just now talking to y'all that this is the part that Uncle Bobby forgets to fill in. When Uncle Bobby says talking to an apologist is like interrogation, what he means is your fucking Miranda rights. What he means is you should remember you have the right to remain silent because anything you say will be used against you in the court of fuck-faced apologist. Can and will be used against you. Any fucking word out of your mouth. Now, I'm not going to play that fucking game because I got a little game to me. And as somebody with a little game to me, y'all already know what I say, mean when I say I must need to see evidence of your God. Y'all know because y'all have been looking for the same fucking evidence. And I'm pretty sure when I get convincing evidence and y'all see me get convincing evidence such that I'm actually convinced, you'll likewise be convinced and you'll be like, yeah, Jay, we're pretty sure that's good evidence of God right there. Now, can anybody hit me up in the chat that's not a fuck-faced apologist and tell me that they think that stunt Richard Matson pulled was good evidence of God? Go ahead. Let me know. I highly fucking doubt it. Because we all know that was sitting on some bullshit. So again, calling into somebody's show 
to undermine their personal growth and development, to undermine the narrative of their community so you can chew, twist and contort their words to use it against them on their show in front of their audience. If that is not weaponized, again, throw the fucking word out because it don't mean a goddamn thing. And now you're getting to see what I really understand about Richard Madsen and a lot of these content creators just like him. I've always known that this is who Richard Madsen is. It's never why I've never gotten that into Richard Madsen. I've always known Richard Madsen was a leech who ultimately is an apologist. I figured him out a long time ago. See, I don't know where I know Richard Madsen from. I know Richard Madsen. It's not going way back, but y'all know we've done like 300 shows now on this channel. So for us, that's way back, like back kind of in the early days. But in the early days when I was still running with No Name, y'all remember No Name, shout out to No Name. Um, me and No Name, No Name knew about Richard Madsen. And so the first couple of times Richard Madsen came through, I didn't really know who he was. But No Name was like, nah, you should check him out. I've seen some of his streams. You know, he's really out there. Like, I think you'll think he's like interesting. And so... I tuned in because No Name called in. No Name was like, yeah, I'm going to call in over there or whatever. So I tuned in after the stream one day. I was just, y'all know how we do. We listen to our, our mods. We listen to our friends. We listen to each other. So I was just checking it out. I was doing some shit around the studio, um, listening just to No Name call in and listening to them wax. And, and, and No Name kind of bringing out some of his weird shit. And that was really before he had even gotten to Space Jesus. But they were talking about some very simple philosophical shit, and Richard Madsen kept misrepresenting the whole shit from day one. So I was like, nah, that dude is fucking weird. I know he was off the first time I really listened to him. And then um, when I finally heard him start to uh, bring out some of his Space Jesus shit, like in a different stream, I was like, oh, I, I remember I had up known him. I was like, yo, that nigga's a theist, yo. When I first heard him, I just thought he was a weird ass atheist, but now I heard him talking shit. He's actually a weird. So I realized he was an apologist, but he kept coming around, and I was like, oh, I see who he is, because he was kind. Of, it's kind of like how it was with Otangelo at first, where a lot of these people they're kind of friendly, but eventually you realize like they're really just trying to build their audience off of your audience. Like they see you as having something going on that they wish they had going on or they want, they want to be a part of and they don't, they can't really directly come out and try to siphon your crowd away. They can't really celebrate what you do. So they try to have these little ways in which they kind of tokenize friendship. They kind of have these little, this little superficial friendliness that they want to offer you that way when they come around everybody's like oh hey that's our friend da, da, da. that's our friend da, da, da. that's our friend da, da, da. and then you're that much more likely to like their shit subscribe to their shit and watch them because now you've kind of seen them as part of our community and that's why i'm calling people like that out because number one i don't see them as part of the community I see them as parasites to our community. Um, number two, I know they're not here to help us. They're here to hurt the mission, so I'm not going to treat them like that. Number three, I'm res I feel a certain sense of protectiveness over my community, so I have to call these people out because um, it's like I'm one of the central figures of my community that's built up around my channel. So I so when people fuck up, it's like I'm gonna call them out. Now the community really can know where we really do stand with them. Like I said, come at the throne, you better not miss. Because just because I haven't pulled your card and ran you down on stream before doesn't mean I don't see you. It just means I, I haven't decided to be bothered with that yet. And this is what happens when I decide now I'm going to be bothered with that. So that's the issue here. Now, let me go to another misrepresentation. This nigga always wants to act like 
I'm rejecting his space Jesus and his narrative and his story, which, by the way, he rarely even gets into because he knows how fucking ridiculous and crazy it sounds. But he's always talking about how it's logical, but I just dismiss it because, you know, I don't like it. And he makes like, oh, I guess I know why. And he thinks it's this personal reason. And again, let me keep it clear. He's one of the first people we interviewed on Hot Program. It was one of our earlier episodes. People thought it was one of our best episodes at that time. I didn't even really ask a lot of questions. My one black friend really held it down. And we asked him very direct questions about his beliefs. He's had more time to explain his beliefs to me than damn near anybody I've interacted with on the Internet. Not to mention that he has a history of calling into my show for months. So much that I'm always like, yo, Richard Madsen, what's up? You got five minutes. Because <laughs> he called in that much. And it was like, yo, you, gotta just, you got five minutes. And, and he always was trying to argue. Some, and it was never convincing. So I always just wanted him to just have a few minutes to be polite. Okay, Richard, we're giving you time. Thanks for calling in. See you later. Because, <laughs> again, I could spend days with this. <laughs> He's never going to make sense to me. Never going to make sense to me. And then again, he's one of these motherfuckers, too. I got to call it out like this. Like, they're lazy. They're lazy. It's like I said earlier, but I think that stream got cut off, so I'm going to bring it up again. These motherfuckers are lazy, and they're fucking with the wrong people. I could play drums for a living. Real fun. It's my passion. It's the thing I've known I wanted to do since before I knew who the fuck I was. I could do law and politics for a living. Do you know how many fucking black men in America have ready-made careers in politics and public service for them? Like, where they're literally, like, groomed into that way of life as children? Do you know how rare that type of access and opportunity is for a young black kid? Nevertheless, when the scholarship bug hit me, when I really wanted to do research, when I really figured out that, damn, I love doing research and I really would like my opportunity to be an academic, yeah, I had to make those sacrifices. I had to decide, yeah, I'm going to go to grad school and try to become a professor, and yeah, that's going to really cut into my uh, music time. To the point I may have to settle for playing in local bands and, you know, playing on stream and, you know, playing in worship ministry and, and, and recording and maybe working with artists, up and coming artists, if, if I ever get the right opportunity in the right city one day and see where it goes. But it's going to be totally different than the life of just making that my all and trying to become the the play on world tours like I wanted to when I was when I was you know coming up it meant not going to law school I could still go to law school I still think of all types of ways where biology and evolution and science get together and maybe one day who knows but right now I realize you can't it's not that I can't do it not that I wouldn't get in I'd get a I'd get in with the full scholarship you kidding me pretty much any law school I want to go to but it would take time away from the work right now of doing research, being an educator, teaching, training the next generation of scientists, where I'm busy doing this work with y'all, where I'm taking my gift as a broadcaster and my multimedia skills, and again, instead of just playing games, I could be playing games all weekend and just playing cards or just having fun or just wilding out and entertaining y'all with some funny shit or just make playing wrestling games or like I used to do. I was just a gaming Twitch streamer who played music, did a little science shit once in a while and did multimedia production. But instead, I'm like, yo, I realize, yo, like this shit we trying to do out here as atheist men, trying to build community, trying to really accelerate the end of religion and, and, and build each other up and use 
you know, what I've learned and, and, and what I can contribute to, to help the community, like, that's a serious sacrifice for us. And you had these people who treat it like it's just a fucking game. And then they want the same credibility. Like they want, they want people to appreciate you, Jules. Yeah, we appreciate our teachers. But it's like they, 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 want, they want the same credibility. They want you to treat them like they're scholars and they're intellectuals and they're fucking faking it. And Richard Madsen makes excuses. He's like, oh, well, you should respect me. I'm, I'm at the top of my discipline. Nigga, you're not even in your discipline. What are you talking about? Oh, well, it's because my stuff is so fringe. That's why I don't even try. Bro, are you kidding me? How do you say you're at the top of your discipline and turn around in the same paragraph, basically, and say you don't even try? And are you serious? Like religion, y'all? Like religion, if you have a credible idea in religion, like you're getting your shit. Let's be honest. If, if Richard Batson actually tried, y'all, here's the funny thing. I actually think he could write a dissertation on space Jesus. Like literally, I actually think he could. If he's as confident as he fucking thinks he, did, he is, like if he can legitly interpret his own Bible and argue that, you know, if you, if you change the meaning of all the words and you take the names as astrological signs and you, you know, uh, run the, the, the chronologies the way he says you should and you understand that it was the angels who delivered the message and it's about a Jesus but not a Hebrew Jesus. It takes place on an earth but not this earth, right? Like, if, if it's there, go, go to a fucking religious studies department and write the shit up. That's, that's the difference, Richard Madsen. I did it. I put all my other ambitions aside. I got under the best scientist I could. I said, show me how to fucking do this. And I did it. And you want me to give you more pulling Richard Madsen card? Guess what, Richard Madsen? I had to take years off of school when I, when I was diagnosed as bipolar. I was on a full academic scholarship. I lost it. They took it from me. And they had no intention on giving it back. I went back to Penn State, forsaking scholarships at other places, made, finished making my own major, did so well they gave me my scholarship back after explicitly stating they weren't going to do so. I will, I'm still in debt because of the full year I had to pay for. Again, sacrifices I made to finish what I started after having it interrupted for years by mental health issues. Then on top of that, you're right. I have a dual PhD in integrative biology and ecology, evolutionary biology, behavior. Yet I took no biology as an undergrad. People on this stream watch me do, program, do my experiments with digital organisms. I wrote my dissertation using digital research on digital organisms. I had zero background in computer programming. Literally, the only computer program class I took was called Computer Programming for Musicians, and you learned how to use fucking Pro Tools. What's my point, y'all? Not having the background is not a fucking excuse. I did not have the background at all in my field, on the biology side or the computer science side. I had the passion, I had the curiosity, I had the work ethic, I had the, the proven track record of, of good scholarship, and people were willing to fucking work with me, just like they'd be willing to work with Richard Madsen if he actually cared enough to fucking try.
But he doesn't. Because he's an internet gangster. He doesn't want to get his work through peer review of religious studies experts. He doesn't want to get academic credentials. He doesn't want to teach. He doesn't want to publish. He wants to impress people on YouTube. That's his peer review. Richard Madsen in my world, when a person who is faking it looks a goddamn professional in the face and tells them they've got it fucked up, we call people like that cowards and keyboard warriors. Like I said, you come at the throne, Better not miss. I'm totally okay with everything you've ever said. Richard Madsen's a fucking gaslighter who just like all these gaslighters out here who want to who want to undermine the most sound theories ever in the history of scientific theories. This mother motherfucker Richard Madsen basically wants to tell you you can't read, and he knows better than every other biblical scholar. And he's got some unique. It's it's not that I think other people can't read, and it's Go not Jules. that I think that other people. Grad school is fucking hard, so uh, I, I applaud anybody who does it. Uh, also, uh, Heathen Queen is applying to go to grad school. Super excited for her. I, I hope that actually more people in our community decide to go back to school, whatever level that is for them, because I know so many people in our community have a passion for learning. I know that because literally learning and scholarship is what they do for entertainment in their spare time, which is actually a lot more than I can say for most academics, right? So it's kind of weird. Um, you guys definitely have the motivation. So whatever level that means, I hope, you know, as you guys are growing and realizing, oh shit, I'm interested in this, I'm interested in that. Um, whether that's just taking a class or something or you know, reading more uh, from scholars on a particular topic, but all the way to, you know, taking online courses or re-enrolling somewhere. I hope um, people are encouraged to pursue more formal education because it, it matters. It makes a difference. I, I'm, I'm not a person who could have taught myself the, uh, where I'm at. I had to teach myself a lot of it, um, but certainly having uh, the guidance and instruction of real experts uh, made all the difference in the world. So, yeah, we should encourage each other. Congratulations, and uh, let us know how you're doing. People um, are stupid, or uh, or that I think their theology is necessarily flawed. What what I am saying is, I've adopted this and accepted it. Uh, oh, that's very sweet, Maynard saves. Thank you. I, you know, I. I, I really do want to be a good Christian. I do want, I mean, I'm a religious person and that's kind of off-putting, I know, uh, for a person who isn't. In fact, for the people who are religious, it's still off-putting uh, because I, I don't agree with them. And that ties back. It is, because again, Richard Madsen says he wants to be a good Christian, but he literally says that all Christian doctrine as practiced is illogical. So put Richard Madsen in a room with 20 Christians and Richard Madsen is going to tell all of them that they're fundamentally wrong about their Christianity. Again, they're going to tell you there was a guy named Jesus. He was all up in Jerusalem. They crucified him. He was killed. Three days later, he popped up out that bitch. He came back later. He had some fish and some loaves with his friends. He popped on up to heaven. He going to come back again right here to this planet Earth to judge the living and the dead. Richard Madsen is going to look them all in the face and tell them they misinterpreted every word of the Bible. Uh, which version of the Bible's right? None of them. The only version Richard Madsen will sign off on is the Richard Madsen version, his own translation. I asked him this question to his face. On my own channel, Richard Matson is the source of my claim that Richard Matson only buys the Richard Matson Bible. So again, Richard Matson, again, this is what I mean about the double talk. I want to be a good Christian. I just think every other Christian is fucking it up and isn't a good Christian. Sorry, Richard Matson. 
put yourself in a room full of Christians, all them Christians are going to say you're an asshole. The consensus of all one, literally put Richard Madsen and 99 other Christians in a room, the consensus is going to be that Richard Madsen is the asshole in that room. Put Richard Madsen in a room full of a bunch of honest atheists, they'll conclude the same thing. So it's just, you know, we just got to stop. At some point, you just got to say, listen, person, we get that you're friendly. We really don't care. You just are not okay. here." And, and here's the other thing, gang. He's so big on nobody can prove that his shit is illogical or impossible. That is not how any of this works. But here's the thing. You don't have to. If Richard Madsen wants to be taken seriously, he understands that serious people do the serious work of serious scholarship. Fine, Richard Madsen, you've got a great theory of space Jesus that nobody can disprove. None of us have to take it seriously until you do the serious work to get it taken seriously. I'll offer the same critique of Richard Carrier. But see, the difference is Richard Carrier is basing his stuff on a book he actually did get through peer review. And I'm critiquing him for not going back for more. I'm, not, I'm saying, look, Richard Carrier, this book is fantastic. People are, you know, doing something with this book. There's some questions about it. There's some blah, 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 blah. But if you want to flesh this out more, you're going to have to bite the bullet and do the scholarship. If he says, sorry, I'm just not interested. I want to sell books and, and make YouTube videos and write a blog. All right, Richard Matt, uh, sorry, or all right, Richard Carey, you're free to do so, but then please stop turning around acting like you're being academically persecuted when you're not even participating in academia. Again, take that shit elsewhere on YouTube, Richard Madsen. I'm an academic, an actual university man. I'm not saying that to boast or brag. I'm saying it because it's the fucking reality. Trust me, I have the underpaid salary to prove it. So literally take that shit somewhere else. And to, to what uh, Dr. Bundy was just saying here, uh, it's not that I think that I'm smarter than everyone else or, or anything like that. In fact, I involuntarily and under objection uh, received this reading frame, but I can't deny that it works. That would just be dishonest. And I can't deny that I see that in... Christian religions concerning the text of the Bible, although, oh my gosh, I've talked to some Jews that really, really make sense against the text and against reality, and they we just generally end up agreeing with each other uh, about what it's trying to say. Um, there's a lot of Christians who, for not their fault, that they're they're not. Uh, rooted in, <laughs> I feel you, uh, Jews. A society that was based That's in the Jews life. of the ancient Near East, so. It makes sense that they should not understand what Torah, what the Tanakh is trying to say. That, that totally makes sense. But I, I've been shown a way to read this where it does make sense and, and where it doesn't have conflicts in reality doing things like defeating physics. So, it, I, And that's the problem. All of us can adopt a reading frame for the Bible that makes it all make sense. It's worse than it's literally for I told the Bible so, right? <laughs> like again, like y'all, we could we could we could argue all day. I could I could adopt a a, a mythicist position where the Bible is true because Jesus was really the incarnation of the idea of Godness and visions of him were always intended to be spiritual and the resurrection is a spiritual resurrection. Well, doesn't it make sense now? But guys, guys, doesn't that, but doesn't that way make more sense? So doesn't it, isn't it more logical to read it in my way because my way makes more sense? Nigga, we don't think the shit makes sense. Richard Madsen fundamentally needs to do irrational, illogical things to make the Bible rational and logical. And then he's wondering, why doesn't everybody get it? Why won't everybody get on board? Because that's not how it works. So if you're going to keep saying, oh, well, I like him. He's really nice. He smiles at me. I like his beard. Cool. You're just falling for the tactics of a pathetic cult leader who doesn't really have the, char the charisma to like 
I don't know, give you some personality, give you something to be hooked on, right? Like, that's Richard Madsen, y'all. Think of Richard Madsen. What do you think of? You think of weird arguments that you just can't even wrap your head around, which somehow makes him smarter than everybody else. I've never figured out how that works. Um, and then, and then what? Long beard, peace and respect, 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 peace and respect. So literally, Richard Madsen has offered you nothing but peace and respect and bullshit. Peace and respect, bullshit. Peace and respect. Literally, Richard Madsen is a bullshit sandwich where the bread is the expression peace and respect. And y'all are sitting up here like, well, I, I like Richard Madsen. I guess he's a really nice guy. I don't know. To me, he's just a bullshit artist who says peace and respect all the goddamn time. I wish more people would adopt it. Uh, peace and respect, Orge. Version of God. He's some intellectual fucking Yeah, no offense, Jules. People qualify their mean talk with no offense. That's exactly right. Okay, well, I want to exactly say that he's right. No right offense, about that. but I'm about to say something I've, offensive. I have no accolades. accolades. I, I don't. Again, you heard it there. It's not an insult, y'all. It's not an insult. But again, if you're going to throw yourself down on that pile for humility's sake, because now you think it's virtue signaling, you cannot be pissed when academics are like, sorry, we don't take you seriously. And, and then here's the other thing, y'all. I'm not even shitting on a man like, bro, I don't take you seriously because you got to get your shit approved by the Jay Bundy standard of academics. I'm just like, bro, what did you say your field was? Uh, like he would say something akin to what? Philosophy and religious studies, right? Cool. All you got to do, bro, is get logic people and religious studies people on board with this. And again, y'all, I don't want to hear shit about biases. Listen, I had to get my shit through STEM. Yes, that's because I'm a scientist. That meant all my shit had to be up to the scientific standard, including my classes, my exams, my research, my dissertation, my dissertation defense, all of that shit. But the standards are not the same in religious studies. And now let's be very clear. I'm not saying that as an insult to religious studies. It's not meant to be at all. Religious studies has to have a different standard because you can't test all of these ideas. You can't do experiments to prove whether the Hindus got it right or the, the Buddhists got it right or the Christians got it right. What you tend to do instead, as I understand it in those disciplines, is you just have to lay out a different type of qualitative case that shows that, you know, you can piece together what is known about the cultural milieu of the time based on, you know, credible research by the relevant experts in those fields and then show that you have an interpretation based on the proper, you know, ways of interpreting that makes it reasonable to believe that this is... Um, uh, an actual coherent uh, doctrinal interpretation of Christianity. And so again, let's be clear, the standard isn't saying Richard Matson can't get his shit published because he can't go to a major university and convince everybody that space Jesus is real. That is not what would be required? Perfect example, the Rielians. We teach this in our class. If you want more about this, um, Rob Pennock's Tower of Babel, either my main man, James Apperson, is going to uh, do an ebook of reading that, or we'll get back to it, and I'll do it on the channel. But grab the book, Robert Pennock, Tower of Babel. He'll talk about the Rielians in there, or just look them up. 
The Raelians are people who have a creation narrative. It's a religion. They believe that we were created by, like, basically super beings in, you know, Richard Metz is going to talk about an ant farm or something like that, but you can think about that as, like, the Raelian type of hypothesis where da 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 we were created by the right so richard matson shit is almost eerily similar to Rialians. like one could even almost argue richard Rat matson knows about Rialians or similar you know extraterrestrial um narratives of creation and some of which are are biblical including the Rialians and then he's remixed that to say oh well if that makes sense then you know space Jesus <laughs> which is fine right like but that's what I'm saying y'all is you can go to you can you can you can go to religious studies and write about the Rialians right we teach a science class our arts, our students are literally in my evolutionary biology class. They're allowed to write about the Rialians, right? Because the Rialians are a perfectly good example of a creation narrative that can be spun to be consistent with evolution. And in our class, where we're talking about the philosophy of science, and in many cases how it relates to religious thought, our students are allowed to just say, I want to write a 20-page term paper all about them fucked up ass weirdo Rialians. Aliens, and me and Rob Panic will be sitting there like, yep, yep, mm-hmm, real good, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yep, you're good to go. Have a nice day, great job, A+, plus. see you later, have fun at med school. So Richard Madsen, if there were any meat on those bones at all, your theory would be welcome. All you have to do is do the fucking work. Thing my whole life, he's right. Uh, I'm a construction worker. Um, dozer, grader, scraper, loader, backhoe. Good shit, YouTube punk. That's I'm pretty good with a chainsaw too. I'll pull it up uh, behind the um, scenes. And and I'm not learned, but that that is not something that discredits this actually it it lends it more credit because i i don't i don't know the hebrew language oh hang on this might be funny let's see this God damn it. is there no sound what what is happening what? Why are you not? Oh, I got the tab muted. The Great Wall of China is a series of fortifications that were built across the historical northern borders of ancient Chinese states and imperial China as protection against various groups from the Eurasian steppe. The Great Wall of China is one of the most impressive feats of human engineering in the history of the world. But what if it wasn't made by man at all? What if the Great Wall of China was made by aliens? What if those aliens were Chinese? Unfortunately, we'll never know. That's why they call it a mystery. Yeah, exactly. Boom. Boom. Done. Oh, oh, and there's your mystery minute. Yeah, Great Wall exactly. Of China. Exactly. Exactly. I, I don't, I didn't know the Bible. I didn't know astronomy. I didn't know chemistry. Peace and respect, Lena. <sighs> Don't know how to read their holy book. Lena, that, that's a straw man. You, you've been listening to Dr. Bundy too much. That is not my position. In fact, this I just said this before you came in. I, I was I was this was forced upon me. I only accept it because I uh Lena said you being smarter than everyone else, uh quote, seems kind of seems to be implicit with religious people. You're even saying the Christians don't know how to read their holy book. The Jews don't know how to read, etc. I'm happy to call in. Yeah, Lena's just dead on. Exa that was exactly my point. And again, he's not just telling me. And yes, it's insulting to me. To me, y'all. I grew up a Christian. 
I worked in the church. I was a Christian. I was a, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to do the whole thing, but trust me, my Christian bona fides are bona fucking fide. Yes. It is utterly insulting to me to act like I don't understand the religious text that was so central to my life for like 30 fucking years or whatever it was, the better part of three decades. Now, again, the issue he'll have here, you know, it's like, a, it's like if I'm in a debate with Ken Hovind. I don't really give a fuck that Ken Hovind doesn't agree with me, to be honest, on the scale of evolutionary biologists to disagree with. That's it. That's all I am. I'm just a professional evolutionary biologist who's just starting his career, finished grad school a couple years ago, is, you know, still working on the, the, the early fruits of my research. Fine, whatever. But the truth is when you undermine evolution, you're disagreeing with the most well-established theory in the history of biology. So you're disagreeing with all of biology. That's your problem. My black ass, sure, you're not convinced. Cool. That's not the problem. The problem is you disagree with all the experts. That is also Richard Madsen's problem. Not only is he telling me, I don't know what the Bible's about. Not only is he telling us, y'all don't know what the Bible's about. Um, not only is he telling Christians and Jews, they don't know what the Bible's about. He is telling all of the biblical scholars who, let's be clear, have studied those languages, have bona fide credentials, not only in the, the religious studies, but the translations and the linguistic traditions and the, the histories and the comparative religion, all of that shit. He's saying every single one of them motherfuckers is wrong too. But no, 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 no. I'm the asshole for summarizing that as Richard Madsen thinks he's smarter than everybody. Again, just misusing your words so that they can play a fucking word game rather than address your fundamental critique. Dog shit. Can't find a way to deny it. Moving on. Again, getting a little tired of the internet gangsters and keyboard warriors. Internet gangsters and, and keyboard Madsen warriors. Just a low level, quite frankly, low IQ. Low level is true. I don't know how he knows I'm, I have a low IQ. I don't your arguments, part. Richard, your um, arguments. Your arguments, your arguments are really low IQ. Now look, here's the deal. I've never seen Richard Madsen's IQ test. But this is like the Doug deal. Y'all all know Doug's a right ringer, right? And he loves to say, uh, we're talking about Doug of Pine Creek, if you're new. Check out Pine Creek on YouTube. Why? Because y'all know I'm a heel. I'm a bad guy. So you check out Pine Creek, you're going to hate your life. Bring me some heat. That's how I get down. Uh, <laughs> But no, seriously, the nigga's always talking about I lean right. Yeah, lean right of Tucker Carlson, right? Um, and so when we'll be like, yo, Pine Creek is sitting on that Fox News bullshit, you know, Pine Creek is basically, you know, got the, the essence of, uh, you know, uh, one American news network in his, in his channel, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll throw his arms up and act all exasperated. And how dare you say that? Because he doesn't watch Fox News. So you don't know what type of media he consumes. So how dare you say that? You had it like nigga, I don't care what you read when you're taking a shit. All I know is the horse shit that comes out of your mouth. And if the horse shit that comes out of your mouth sounds like it was written by the producers of Tucker Carlson show, then you're on that Tucker Carlson bullshit. Because the audience knows what we mean when we say you're on some Tucker Carlson bullshit. I don't give a fuck which particular right wingers you get your ideation from or if you don't get your ideation from any right wingers at all. I highly doubt it because, again, you're parroting all their fucking talking points. So how is it that you're just coinkadinky parroting all their talking points? Even so, it would just mean that you really are the type of dog shit piece of person that their content is meant to appeal to. So if you're not 
Um, the if you're not the fucking uh, the host, if if you're not the audience of this particular uh, you know content or this particular channel, you're literally the audience, the captured audience they intend uh, to broadcast to. I don't really care about distinguishing between those possibilities. Same thing with Richard Madsen. I don't care what your IQ test is, Richard Madsen. Matter of fact, we all know IQ tests ain't the most reliable shit in the world. And I say that as a person who reliably scores quite high on them. Um, but I, I use other indicators in my life to uh, corroborate my you know, own sense of my intelligence. And I'm sure I have it wrong. <laughs> I'm sure there are times I grossly underestimate and grossly overestimate how intelligent I am. We all are. But we certainly are able to hold up a person's ideas and their content and, and, and look for consistency in it and assess our opinion of the basically the IQ level reflected in their material. Richard Matson's material is essentially low IQ shit. It is constantly arguing from a framework that's revealed to him and everyone should just work with the revealed framework to him because then that would post hoc make everything logical, which would be a more rational, like, bro, if that's how you think, sorry, that ain't brilliant. Sorry, that's not even average. All right, that is not even that does not even reflect what we would consider an average understanding of you know philosophical reasoning or or how to how to problem solve, right? If you're constantly misrepresenting the basics of the scientific method the need for testable hypothesis, what that means, what a theory is, all of this type of stuff. Like, like again, this reflects a below average, especially given exposure, right? Especially given exposure. What do I mean by that? A lot of you are like, well, Jay, if you threw certain philosophical terms at me, right, I wouldn't know what to say or I wouldn't know how to use them or I might use them incorrectly. Okay, well, that's because you've never been exposed to them. That doesn't reflect that you have, you know, a lack of aptitude or lack of conf or a lack of, lack of competence. It just means you haven't been exposed to certain material, right? So your below average performance on these matters would just reflect that you've never been exposed, right? But Richard Madsen has been exposed. We know that because he's arguing against them. Right, so we know he's read this stuff. We know he's looked this stuff up. We know he's watched videos on this shit. We know he's 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 been exposed to this stuff. He just keeps getting it wrong. So again, that's below average. I hate I hate to say it, but like that that's how we assess our students, right? We don't grade our students on what they know coming in before we've taught them any goddamn thing, do we? No. We wait, we wait till we make sure that they've gone through the reading material and they've had a chance to learn about this and learn about that. And then we see if they can make heads or tails of the good information from the bad information. And we assess their ability to do so. Now, what are the students who consistently um, learn shit and, and, and then they reflect the proper answer based on it, we're ding, 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 gold star, gold star, gold star, gold star, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0, 4.0. But if they're 50 50 hit or miss, 50 50 is failing in most, in most academic systems, right? Below 65 is failing. So to me, I'm not claiming, again, but again, I'm making a show, I'm expressive, I'm, I'm doing my thing. I don't have time to sit here and break this down every time. The only reason we're doing it like this today is because it's the weekend, we're chilling. Lena was on there, so I felt like uh, beating up on Richard Madsen today uh, just, to, just to stomp around and have some fun with Lena. But for the most part, y'all know what it is. I kick the actual facts. It was like Uncle Bobby. I keep it moving. We keep shit flowing. And, and, and um, um, I'm... More than satisfied that our audience knows what I mean when I say things. Um, 
And if they're not picking up what I lay, what I'm laying down, they're free to unsubscribe. But, uh, you know, just to break it down like that, that is what I'm talking about, Richard Madsen. I don't give a fuck what your IQ score is. I really don't care. What I care is about is what intelligence you show us on your channel. And if you consistently make low IQ content, I'm going to call it low IQ bullshit. Them's be the breaks on YouTube. And to be honest, I think Richard Madsen's a fucking asshole. But oh, yeah, he just Jules pre testing absolutely has this place. Thing. Like some broken, and I'm you know, and I'm just I'm just giving the, the short of it, Jules, just for you know the point about uh, assessing our students. But in reality, uh, when we're doing research, especially research to assess our teaching um, in the curriculum, then of course we're doing pre and post testing, uh, and then all in most of our courses we actually do pre and post testing. Um, most of our stuff we have grants where we're using that for research, but even if we don't. Uh, Good educators often are taking that information uh, for their own because it's really good data. Absolutely. Really important to mention. Appreciate you. That's two bit imam who needs to tell you, oh, brother, brother, brother. I never, brother, I didn't brother, hear brother, any brother. of this, um, Lena. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, let him do his thing. But I think you're about to call in. Be right back. Of religion. Yeah, I'll be right back. We have a let us move through some stuff. Case. Helps if you guys have heard all this. Probably We're getting twice. refreshed. I apologize. Depending on what you select, and then you can download from the cloud or your computer. And they, I don't, they work. Cleon, you're reviewing. Old pocket lock, a decent microbiome like he is. Our experiment uh, showed that uh, mut mutations can result in survival in uh, involving environmental pressures. Yeah, the, gang, uh, we're if you think it's strawmanning Richard Lenski to say that he forced evolution. <laughs> 22,000 generations of them nearly starving to death in an, an uh, I'm sorry, an aerobic environment with plenty of anaerobic uh, food source and not nearly enough anaerobic food source where they were in huge competition for food and for survival. That is forcing. Now, could that happen naturally in some environment on the planet? Absolutely. But there's no difference between artificial uh, environment and natural environment. And if there were, then the entirety of, of Richard Lenski's thought process on how to cause uh, e. coli to, uh, to try to do something to survive would be invalid. <laughs> so I, I, I think it's just his bias. I mean, Dr. Bundy knows this. I mean, he was there at some point with Dr. Linsky. And actually, I was bragging on Pocket Locker saying where he'd been and he just seems to not notice that <sighs> not in the channel. that's how he did just it. to get through really this richard madsen dog richard shit Linsky, check him out okay. oh my goodness um, but dr j Bunting of pocket locker he got my field wrong I, uh, by... I i said it was some kind of biology i don't know how it's wrong he is in like biological stuff microbiology something like that i, I i'm not I'm not an expert in that stuff. If I said it poorly, that's to be expected. Uh, I did the best that I could from my memory from things you've said, but I don't know the names of those kinds of research. But, again, I was bragging on you <laughs> that uh, you are in the top of your field in biology of some kind, whatever. But I'm aware that, that you're not a joke in your field. I'm aware of that, and I wasn't trying to make it seem like you are. Dual PhD is in integrative biology and uh, ecology, evolution. I, I mean, do I have to write that down to talk about the guy, what he just said there? Do I have to, like, write it down and quote it perfectly? Or is this just... 
Oh, I'm a doctor. Thereby, you must say all my accolades perfectly. No. No, I recognize you're serious and recognized by your peers. Again, would it be important to distinguish the fact that Dr. Bart Ehrman is an expert in New Testament studies versus a, test, a scholar in Old Testament studies? Does it matter to say, oh, so-and-so is a scholar in ancient Hebrew versus so-and-so is a scholar in ancient Latin? Grow the fuck up, Richard Madsen. I, I, I'm not insulting you or insulted that you did not get it correct, but I have every right in the world to correct it. On top of that, this is what I mean about the cult technique. This is what I mean about the... Um, the I can let me use the word peace and respect and then say a bunch of weaponized bullshit. This is what I mean about the people like you said, no offense, but, and then you say something offensive. You have to not know that as evolutionary biologists who do natural selection, yes, in artificial environments, in the lab, or in a computer in my case, that that is the, deliberately the thing that is used against us. They, we are, our research has opponents. It has enemies, creationists mostly. What is their constant argument? That we're forcing evolution to happen, that we're making. And he has to not know that this is the most loaded thing you could possibly say about our work. Again, is it just a little slip of the tongue? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't quite get it perfect. No, you, like I said, you got it wrong in the worst way to get it wrong. But again, now I, I, now I can't say that, that that's low IQ. You, you mean to tell me you have a fucking YouTube channel in this community where people are constantly debating creationism and evolution, and you didn't know that saying the most famous experimental evolutionary biologist in the world was forcing evolution in his experiment was a really bad way to put it. You didn't know, you didn't know that? Again, okay, you, you messed up, but guess what? Definitely not a high IQ mistake. Definitely not a mistake somebody who cares enough to really look into these things or understand them would make. So at some point, you're either too inept to get it or more than likely too lazy to bother to try. And now, of course, I'm going to correct you when you are incorrect about my training because you've literally just been incorrect basically about everything you've said. So, again, why won't you let me compliment you? Why won't me let you compliment? Because it's a backhanded compliment when you fuck it up that bad. And which is it? Are you a fucking top-notch expert at the top of your field? And you're just the fucking most greatest intellectual to ever intellect, or are you totally incompetent? Because he seems to want to have his cake and eat it too. He's at the top of his field. He's the best. He understands all the scholarship. He's 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 smarter than the best scholars to ever scholar. But then at the same time, when he gets anything wrong, which is basically everything, all of a sudden, it's, well, I'm not trained. I don't have any actual academic credibility. I don't have any actual training. I've never actually accomplished anything. I've never actually done anything. So it's not my fault. I'm just out here. I'm just out here throwing shit to the wind. Yeah, Richard, you're just out here throwing shit to the wind. That's the problem. Lena, you know that because you care, but I'm not an evolutionary Mike biologist Crystal. or any kind of a biologist. My things are like ancient religious 100% texts deception. and rationality, and that's, that's really all I care about. Evolutionary biology and behavior and the long term. Why didn't you write down, hey, Lena, you missed the behavioral biologist thing. Why, why'd you miss that? You don't know this guy very well, do you?
term evolution experiment no, is Lena not was perfect. Lena said he's an evolutionary, evolutionary biologist. Literally the most like, weaponized way. That possible. was perfect. He misrepresented what my PhDs are in. I corrected that. Lena correctly identified my field and my specialty. I am an evolutionary biologist. That is my job. To describe it. Maybe you don't like my words, but it's factually correct. It's an example wow. of natural selection and artificial environment. Force not only is an inaccurate way of reviewing or dropping by and clocking in and, and putting some, uh, what some comments in what would otherwise be an empty comment section. I have uh, pinned a challenge to you guys. See how many what? logical fallacies that you know of. And maybe you'll catch mm. some that I don't even catch. You know, because I, I can't say, I, I want to be fair, you know, but I can't say I'm emotionally uninvolved in this. Um, it was extremely Oof. insulting. Um, but uh, I guess you'll see that over time. I don't, I don't want to be another one poisoning the well, so I'll just, I'll just stop Oof. right there. Uh, but I was very insulted. So I am emotionally charged about this, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm not completely objective. Mm. Okay. All right, so Lena left a good comment. Lena, here. I would have a conversation with you any time I've offered before. All you have to do is, like, comment under a video. Oh, my gosh, I'll, I'll give it to you right now. This is my one and only, only one I've ever had, um, email address. I pass it out like candy because I'm not scared. I'm not, I mean, my life is really good and secure and all that stuff. Lena wrote. I want to be clear, I don't think you're a bad actor like Jay. Like, I guess that means like Jay thinks that you are. Uh, okay. I think you're dishonest in an academic sense. Okay, if by dis... Yeah, and this is a really important point because, number one, you see that, the difference in my approach versus Lena. I fundamentally think Richard's a bad actor. Matter of fact, I'm only dealing with Richard's content because I'm hoping to convince people uh, a little bit more that Richard's a bad actor, or at least begin to really uh, take that into con serious consideration. Uh, but Lena thinks that he's dishonest in an academic sense, and we've been talking more about that, and I'm gonna let Lena, I'm sure Lena's gonna get into that, but I wanna say that um, I see this distinction and I agree, and so that's important. Lena doesn't think Richard's a bad actor, but I do. Richard, uh, Lena thinks Richard is dishonest in an academic sense, and I do as well. So that's simple, right? Lena's thing is not a bad actor, just dishonest academically. I am bad actor and academically dishonest. Dishonest, you mean like intellectually lazy? Or something like that. Oh, I know he's gaslighting. <laughs> the word dishonest shows intent. Punk. That means I'm lying and I know it. That's One what thing dishonest he, we means. both know he's not is okay. slick. <laughs> I'm not lying. And if I'm wrong, I don't know it. And am I trying to prove myself wrong? Oh my God. Every day. And that's where we call bullshit, right? You see it right there because he's got he's to gotta give it to you. Right. That's the that's the cloak and dagger bullshit. He's got to say, oh, well, I'm a, I'm I'm not a bad actor because if I'm wrong, I don't know I'm wrong. And that's where you see it right there. That's where he's weaponizing plausible deniability. Of course, we can't know if he knows that he's wrong, but I know enough now to know that he's either avoiding becoming aware that he's wrong or he's simply refusing to assess um, evidence that he that he's wrong fairly and honestly. Um, either way, I don't care. At that point, you're a bad actor in my book. Um, and then and then the part about well, I'm trying to disprove my shit every day. All the apologists say that, and they're all full of shit. And and we know they're full of shit. And this is the thing. This is one of those things where. I think our meta is a little bit higher than theirs. We were on the other side. We know what it really is like to engage these questions. 
uh, and really look at the evidence. And we all know you consistently come out on the other side. Um, and so this is just bullshit. And we know it's bullshit. Whether or not uh, his fans do, I don't really care. <laughs> Why? Because I'd rather be right than proud. I'd much rather be correct than proud. I think pride is an abomination. And it keeps people from learning. Myself, I was a very proud student in school when I was a kid, you know, all the way through high school. Um, and, and I was a terrible student because of that. And uh, dishonest in an academic sense. I don't know what you mean by in an academic sense. Uh, gang, let me know you how your stream quality me, uh, is. Mine looks many people okay here do. right now. Yeah, pass it. I like candy. Feel free to use it, Maynard. I think you already have my email. Um, as as many people do, um, that I I don't I'm not guessing about the text. In fact, you can watch my playlist three episodes with Dr. Joshua Bowen, which in this very response video, uh, Dr. Bundy strawmans my position in my claims about my relationship uh, with okay, Dr. YouTube Bowen. Punk. Uh, and it's evident, and, and I'm not delusional. If the signal's okay, then when let me he know. Says, when Dr. Uh, mine, my, it was, mine was looking a little shoddy earlier, but I thought it was on my end. I do appreciate uh, feedback about the connection, so just let me know. Um, but yeah, uh, Randy, you know, we're word wrestlers, right? So this is, this is what word wrestling is like. I'm, I'm very territorial. You don't, you, don't, you don't come in my yard talking shit about me. The champ's going to shut up, step up and shut that shit down. Uh, as far as caring, uh, I don't know that I do care. Like, you know, I, I think uh, we, just, we just do what we do. That's our business. That's what we're here for. So uh, I don't know. I never, I never know how to answer questions like that. It's like... Bowen says... If people were talking um, shit about you, well, on the Richard, internet, you'd, you'd that's probably say interesting. something about it. That doesn't mean he agrees with me that that's the correct way to read it. And when he says, "Well, I never thought about it that way," thanks, they are. Appreciate I'm it. not saying that um, I'm smarter than him or that he is agreeing with. I'm not. All I have said is what he has said, which is the following: I do not agree with Randy, you, Randy. I got to be honest with you, though. I'm always looking for a fight out here. And the downside of this is like, I see, I like, I can get Sal going, I can get Otangelo going, and, you know, and get Richard Madsen going. I think most of these people are literally using us because they just don't have any, they, they, they can't generate that type of interest on their own. But the sad part is we just can't find a real challenge. Like, God, it's it, like uh, I'm looking for a fight, but I prefer a good one, you know? Richard, that part in parenthesis, because he never actually said that exactly like that. I, I do not agree with you. Oh, Randy, fucking uh, share that shit with us when in, it happens. In the Send language the itself and in the definitions of the word, I can see how you can extract this out of the text, and it's not Love inconsistent with drama. the word's definitions, their usage. Or the, the people of that time and the way they spoke of things. But again, I know that because of the reading context I've adopted, not because I'm a scholar of the ancient Near East like Dr. Bowen is, and not because I was raised in a Jewish family, I wasn't. And not that I was raised in a Hebrew culture, I wasn't. But the context continues to work. And so oh, long as work. it works, I got and the you. more it works, the more I'm going to believe that it's accurate. Because that's how we test things. Yes. Yeah, yes. I'm sure yeah, Sandy's on that correct. religion. To be a liar, could, could be one would have to be deliberately this. stating something they know. But it's not likely at this point. Not knowing is a totally different thing. this contextual reading frame... Thank you, uh, Lena. I'll respond just as soon as this stream is over with. I'll respond to you because my brain's a little busy right now. You'll forgive me for having asked you to wait. Um, what was I saying? Not knowing is a totally different thing. Yes, uh, I could be completely wrong about all of this. I, I would be fine with that. But at this point, uh, it's going to be hard to convince me it's wrong. 
when it's had such predictive power that in the Masoretic, in the Masoretic texts and in the Greek lexicon, there were certain words that we didn't have definitions for when, say, for instance, the King James, which I use as a reference guide, not that it's perfect, it's not, but um, I use it as a reference guide to look up these words, and sometimes they skip words because they literally didn't know what that, what that Hebrew word meant. And, and when I can look at those skipped over words and within my context, guess what the definition is going to be, having not looked it up. That's predictive power, literally. And since we have more communication, we have more definitions for those words, we now know what the words are. So I can, I can like copy that word, paste it into Google, hit search, and, and it'll give me the definition of that word in Hebrew. That's literally the best you can do. In, is is in predictive power to know that you're looking at something correctly. I mean, this is not anti-scientific. In fact, I'm using the scientific method to make my statements or to confirm that this uh, reading frame is correct. Okay. Uh... Hey guys, don't get into a fight. You're here to fight with me. Fight with me if you like. That'd be great. Tell me why I'm stupid. But have a good argument for it, okay? Mm. Is my point. Mm. All right. Um, so if you guys can count the logical fallacies, maybe keep track of them. Maybe you want. All right, gang. Um. Uh. This this whole live thing, I think, is really interesting because I think what happens is we deal with a bunch of apologists, and they play this word game. And so there's basic definition where lying is to, you know, intentionally make a false statement or whatever like that, right? And it's like they want to play this word game where if you don't know it's not true, then it can't be a lie. And I think, again, you can't hold that as the standard, especially in an environment where people are weaponizing plausible deniability. And if you want to play a word game, then play a fucking word game. Intentionally just means on purpose or with intent, deliberately. So again, if you make a false statement, one could argue that as long as you made that statement intentionally and on purpose, there's, there's really nothing in the definition that says that you have to know the statement is false. It's really saying you're making the false statement intentionally. Nevertheless, it's all a fucking word game. Because... We all know we can't know what another person knows. But there has to become a point where a person should know better. And if you are intending to make these statements and they are in fact false and people have intended, intentionally tried to correct you on it and you refuse the correction, then you are in fact in my book lying and I don't care anymore. If you have to make a definitional excuse of why someone is dishonest, you already know they are being dishonest, and now you are being dishonest about dishonesty. And I'm fucking sick of the word games. The truth is, Richard Madsen is responsible for his content. So, his monkey ass should know better about how scholarship works, about how science works, about how philosophy works, about how religious studies works, before he gets his monkey ass up on the internet, pretends to be some sort of intellectual skeptic about these things, and then goes around presenting his horse shit. If he doesn't know better, it was his responsibility to know better before making content about it. Now quit making excuses for this grown ass man. to get a pen and paper because you're going to be busy just trying to do that in this conversation that you're about to witness. Is this what I'm guilty of? Logical fallacies? Lord, I'm mentioned. Okay. So first, yeah, yes, 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 yes. Dr. Bundy, 
you use scientific yeah, logic in your everyday shit. work. And, and those are philosophical statements. <coughs> like, you would have to subscribe to uniformitarianism. Look at Lena. What if you you've seen show, in the past you don't know it. And the claim knowledge is in indicative of, being of able future to results. Now, if alive. you don't do that, there's Bingo. absolutely no way to do science. Because if you don't assume that, you can never say something like, I predict A. You could never say it. Okay? But quite literally, it's um, commonly called the red barn fallacy. If I drive through Iowa and I see a thousand red barns in a row along a highway, does that make the next red barn or the next barn red? No, it doesn't. But we can't deal with reality That's without assuming that the next barn will be red. Might not be. Not, not true. Not true. And, and yes, logical fallacies. Not how any of this works. Like when you make the philosophical statement that philosophy is not useful. I mean, in, in one idea, that's self-defeating. Quite literally, self-defeating. So w when you say people have wasted their lives on philosophy when they, and they were intelligent people who could have gone into the STEM sciences and helped mankind, uh, I, just, I just don't know what to tell you. I might just Again, let him roll. I don't know what the hell I'm he talking about. Lena, if you laid game. out clearly why you think I'm dishonest, then I must have missed it. Hopefully, Lena's about to call in. Um, Richard Matson's just, you know, I can't I, stop I it every time he says something stupid. I would appreciate it if you, like, presented some kind of a logical deductive syllogism or something Gotta be logical here now deductive. so I can see what you're talking about. Richard and, only and wants to play on the playground by that. his rules where he can win. Try to be objective and see if you're right. First, I'd like to show you uh, this. So this is a direct Ooh. quote uh, from the Ooh. Bible. This is from the, verse, the uh, translation of the New American Standard Bible. Now, I don't depend on translations because they're God, well translations. In no what I do like to do is, is you, you see how he's just like went off? We pop off for our head, baby. <laughs> And he continues to go off. That's right. That's right. Every time I'm making a solid point. That's right. We blacking out. Why would that we popping be? popping off. We popping off. He's reviewing a video and not <laughs> pausing it and talking oh. over it and making really loud yo, noises. Yo, I'm sorry. This sounds like white boy fragility. <laughs> um, and, and that's you at see, least, you see how the I don't know, for his, his audience, tone. distracting. <laughs> it had to be. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, B.S. Lewis, peace and respect. Welcome. Also, um, Cryptomania, welcome. Uh, oh man, I love making these insecure dudes is, uncomfortable. Is inference a logical fallacy? No, it's not that we inference pop is off logical around fallacy. here, Richard. It's not at all. Don't come around um, here with that bullshit, boy. <laughs> it's, um, it's the next best thing we can have to deductive uh, reasoning. Deductive reasoning is preferable, but sometimes you, you can't. You can't show in an, like an evidential, solid way a certain thing because it's, it shouldn't even be thought of that way. For instance, I could say um, this other human in my life um, treats me kindly. That's you know a data point. Uh, this, this person, this same person in my life has a tendency to try to be considerate of how I feel. That's another point. Um, I don't even remember what we doing over here. What are we doing over here? This person buys uh, me gifts on All my right, birthday. Boom. That's another data point. Uh, I infer that this person cares for me. Now they could be a complete liar. I can't prove it because they could like hold up this uh, this facade for quite some time, and I could be completely wrong. They hate me, and as soon as they're uh, sleeping on my couch in my living room, uh, and I fall asleep in my bed. They're going to uh, stay awake on purpose and shoot me in the head in the middle of the night while I'm not expecting it and I can't react. But I infer that they care about me, you know? But I, there are certain things you just can't prove deductively. Yes, BS, that's correct. Uh, the, the red barn fallacy, you've got it right.
go back to the original words and, and see how much uh, church Andrew. doctrine was involved in any given translation. So when I say original Later, words, Andy. Uh, right, in this case, I would be... For those of you following along at home, because space Jesus is such a serious threat. You, you see that? <laughs> space Jesus. It yes, sounds so ridiculous. It, it is ridiculous. Space Jesus. Space Jesus, and he's baby. Right. It does sound, on its face, goofy. It does. The gospel that's not the is right foolishness. Question. It's not. It's not about how you feel to about those who will perish. A proposition. A premise. It's not. It's not about how you feel about it. Oh my goodness! You're Truths right, don't gang. care about just, how you it's feel. It's just that it's so true. It doesn't true, matter and that I just it's against can't. your intuitions. What happens on a <laughs> quantum level? That that doesn't matter. Y'all, Richard Madsen's Richard Madsen's retort, y'all, is first off, I got to start playing Uncle Bobby. We got to we got to just be featuring Uncle Bobby all the time on stream now. All all the time. All types of crazy ways. We're going to be gaming and all types of shit. That way, from now on, when people want to yank our shit and then, like, replay it and make content based off it, they have to, like, you know, show our gaming or, you know, just show Uncle Bobby looking like an ass kicker. You know, so if you want to tear me a new asshole, you at least have to, like, you know, I don't know. I'm having fun with that. I'm enjoying that. We're going to make the, like, real fucking... Uh, you know, Inception type shit where Uncle Bobby's on the screen while somebody's pissed at me and then they have Uncle Bobby on the screen while I'm responding to them pissed off at me with Uncle Bobby on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> then they have double Uncle Bobby on the screen <laughs> when they respond to that. Oh, it's going to be epic. Uh, but seriously... His retort is, listen, you want to know the truth about space Jesus? You can't handle the truth. Because you're not at that scale. We didn't evolve to think about things like that. Uh, we evolved to things, think about things on a much larger, more average scale. So... It doesn't matter if you like or don't like superposition. That's that's irrelevant. It doesn't make it untrue, even if it's counterintuitive. Oh, my goodness. Just because whole deer don't pop up in front of a hunter or, or disappear from in front of the hunter. I love how he just spends all his time explaining there shit. There are little parts, already little knows. tiny, tiny parts of that deer There's that are always appearing and with disappearing. Our actual but disagreements. on average, the deer is there, and you can eat it. So that's just a small example of how what is counterintuitive to us can still be true. So if I said uh, it's been since Carl Sagan that we've been talking about publicly the possibility of extraterrestrials in reality, well, I, that's not that's not a um, me mis misusing the the situation. Like that's a real thing. Um, even more, we now have what are proposed as, and I can't prove they are, uh, we, we have film footage of objects in our atmosphere that we can't explain the way that they act. Uh, and we, we don't know why we can't explain the way that we act. And, and this is film footage that's come out from the U.S. Navy, for goodness sakes. Um, so they may or may not be extraterrestrial. We don't really know, but we know they act really weird. And we have no explanation for how they can act certain ways. Um, and NASA has now found, I think, more than 70 planets. 70! That are Let's close go. to us. Learning which, these because of locks. observations uh, we gotta in get light refraction and we gotta the become a more complete of the fighter. anomalous... You know, What's well, not anomalous because it happens all the time. But there's this anomaly within every gas when a light shines through it. This is such it a fun way to create, learn this game. Well, the guy's name was Fraunhofer, if you want to look that up. Uh, Fraunhofer lines. Look at that, Sam. Uh, so we know, uh, and we can't see very far. Uh, we're only talking about planets in our galaxy. 
And we can't even look at individual planets outside of our galaxy Lena. yet. Lena. We know that Lena. there is, has to be Lena. green plants and liquid Lena. water Lena. on some of these exoplanets. We, we know oh, that. Oh, my goodness. And I think that leaves the believer, because of the extreme unlikelihood of that happening, and so many of them in such close proximity We don't with know us, this. That, don't that leaves the believer saying there must have been intelligent interference in this. And, what? and they could be wrong. It could happen naturally, but statistically what? it shouldn't happen. I want to listen to Lena, but hang on, hang on, hang on. He got to the deep, deep conspiracy uh, part. Here we go. Uh, and we can't see very far. Uh, we're only talking about planets in our galaxy. And we can't even look at individual planets outside of our right, galaxy Right, here we go. Yet. Mystery. Uh, we know that there is has to be green plants and liquid water on some of these exoplanets. We, we know that. And I think that... Nope. Nope. That's what Lena's talking about. We don't know that. It leaves the believer because of the extreme unlikelihood of that happening. And, and none so of that has of to be anything to do with God. Proximity with us. That, that leaves the believer saying there must have been intelligent interference in this. And, and they could... No. Again, it would just leave us with a natural world with some green as exoplanets, with some water elsewhere in the universe. And we could probably use that water to make some pools for some pool parties. And we could get high. Mm, and then we could drink. And we could have a fucking pool party and eat pizzas. But ain't none of this got a goddamn thing to do with an intelligence that made shit be wrong it could happen naturally but statistically it shouldn't happen this often and and we see that if we extrapolated out the the, and near, the gang i need uh, space or... that we can see from on exoplanets james exoplanets, uh because of the star behind them somebody else y'all need to get in here get some beat down the, practice beating up on known, richard madsen's easy i promise um, you the known diameter of this universe which we don't know it's what not the hard universe's at all. actual diameter is, but to the known diameter, we extrapolate that out, you end up with 6.3 billion Earth-like planets. I mean, come on. <laughs> 6.3 billion of them? Oh, but, 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 but extraterrestrial life is a dumb idea. W really? What? How special do we think that we are? How special should we think that we are? Be specific, Lena. I can't respond to that. You're just, you're just like telling me I'm just tell me how. Don't don't just say, "Oh." Lena, I'm not presenting evidence for space Jesus. I'm I talking about the agree, logical Lena. impossibility completely of space agree. Jesus. It's not it's not logically impossible. It's not self-defeating in any way. We do see evidence in science of the things I've just mentioned. No, we And we, we do propose don't. that there could be alien civilizations. I mean, no, have, have, you, have you ever heard don't. of Kardashev or, or uh, the Fermi Paradox? That, that's not about things on this earth. That's, that's about life out there. Wow. Intellectual, aware life out there as aware as we are or more and as advanced as we are or more that's that's what all that is that's talking about weird i'm not exactly fringe on this uh bro said extra true life isn't bro fringe your is your whole flavor bro man straw man and if you want me to not have a keyboard warrior then let me on the t i'm i intend to you, you might notice that are you backstage right now? Is that what you're saying? Because that was fairly unclear. Um, yeah, there's there's a link at the top there, and I'm gonna let people in as soon as I get through this. I also don't want to ignore you, you know. So I'm trying to look at gang. Chat be right back, while. everybody. Get refreshed. Uh, Love y'all. No, I'm not. I'm not blowing you off. It's about to be lean and tight. Can we get the lean and tight? Let's be very clear about what I mean when I say God. You are not backstage. Fact, we might switch these on up. I don't know if YouTube punts around, but we'll, we'll, you, we could switch these up to where we... We're not even up. trying to come in. We could do chat. We'll switch it so... Because uh, Richard Madsen's probably going to put a bunch of shit on the screen. Uncle Bobby don't really put a bunch of bullshit on the screen, but... Oh.
God, y'all. Basic Becky, y'all know me. Um, so I'm not gonna do much. I'm not gonna do all my own research. I don't really do all that. And listen to me, I'm sick of it. Side to I'm taking evidence. the gloves off. You're never expecting them to have good evidence. You're never expecting them to have a good argument. You're constantly telling your friend, yo, please go look into this. Please go look into that. Because I'm telling you, man, I've looked into this. And yo, man, the Christian side isn't holding up, bro. I, I looked at, I, I promise you, friend, I looked at. There are two things. Just What, did I close it? Chris Warren had that open. Oh my gosh, I closed it. Forever. I did have a conversation here. Sorry, I'm supposed to say, bad times don't last forever, but bad guys do. James Apperson and Mark Reed, which I'm not trying. I'm semi-retired, Lena. Back to how Sonic Kaiju. Talking about. Reed, we're talking about if a person were to die on... That's enough of that. that that's enough. Okay. Uh, yeah, I've, I've shut this down. You're welcome to come in. Uh, the link's pinned at the top of the side chat. Okay, so I, I, I'm i kind of tired of it. I'm not I'm not going to keep reviewing this. Show me some camera simos because I put a link in the description and blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Shut it back off if you like. Welcome, peace, and respect. Simos, I'm getting an echo through the YouTube that you have live. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's okay, we do that. Yeah, how you doing? I'm better than I deserve. Uh, peace and respect, St. Tommy and Peter W. just came in. Nice. Hey, uh, St. Tommy. Uh, yeah, good. So, I, I just heard you talking about aliens. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I, 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 I do think... Uh, I, did not, I did not kick Lena. Lena's connection must have dropped. Or they kicked uh, no themselves idea. or something. No I don't even I'm just saying, memory. because they're, they're the only person who's wanting to come in and apparently and you might and I, you're welcome to please attack me with reason and logic and uh, yeah i always i try to um, you do but whether that's an attack or not is another matter um well i'm, yeah, I'm welcome to attacks actually as long as they're reasonable really yeah, of course of course um yeah so uh you know look we don't know uh, whether there is alien life or not i don't think anybody claims to have absolute knowledge of that and um I think one of the arguments or the Drake equation is it called the Drake equation? Is that right? Or is my not familiar with that going? one? Oh, well, that's, oh, that's like some kind of like statistical likelihood. The Drake equation. That's right. Yeah, the aliens okay. exist, and given the expanse of the universe, uh, given the number of stars, uh, given uh, the number of possible planets, uh, then and, and given the All right, y'all, things are about to get good because people are calling in. It's opened up, and Lena's calling in soon here. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. All right. Um, but for those of you who's not used to workflow, what's going on is we're doing career mode with Uncle Bobby right now, gaming and shaming. Sometimes we take little breaks to feature the game. And uh, with this, with UFC, we take a break for the actual fights. Um, so that we can, uh, you know, focus on the actual fights that we need to focus on winning, and it's super fun. So, uh, it is fucking fight night. Let's get it. Ooh, that's hard. Let's go. Coming up next is the UFC heavyweight division. Yeah. Oh yeah, Derek Lewis, one of my guys. Damn, is tonight fight night? No, nah, no, nah, tomorrow's fight night. It's a good ass fight gonna be on tomorrow night. The Black Beast. Yo, l let me be honest with y'all. Let's be very clear. The situation with Derek Lewis is hella, hella dangerous. As long as we are inside the octagon and the ref has not stopped the fight, if that meant 
There it is. Every time the punches land, you can feel the unbelievable thud. Everything he does is killer. If he touches you, you're dying. We got to be very defensive, very careful. He can absolutely destroy us and end the night with one strike. Holy shit. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let's go! Time to dance! Party time! in age with similar height and reach. Here once more is Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, a boxer holding a professional record of 31 wins, 18 losses, and one no contest. He stands six feet three inches tall, weighing in at 260 pounds, fighting out of Houston, Texas, Derek the Black Beast Lewis! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a Muay Thai kickboxer and jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 26 wins, 3 losses. He stands six feet five inches tall, weighing in at 255 pounds, fighting out of Austin, Texas, Robert. Let's go. And when the action Let's go. The in charge, Herb Dean. Let's go. The veteran Herb Dean draws the assignment here. Let's go. All right, the game plan is simple. Don't die. his last fight by submission to the surprise of some he was submitted despite being the betting favorite that night so all eyes are on him tonight the pressure is on him as he not only tries to maintain his spot on this ufc roster but to prove that he can contend with the top 15 guys in this division well it didn't take him long to get a good read on his opponent another good series of kicks there he thought the kicks would be the key tonight and they sure have been nice punch lands can really limit the mobility of your opponent with those leg kicks. Oh! Oh, straight right! Oh, look at that jab. Snapped his head back. His jab gets to the target so fast, and he always brings his hands right back to his face. Look at the angle of that nice body kick. Oh! Use her. Serve him up. Go get him. Oh, he checked those kicks. Good shit. Man, he's my so sound defensively. Nice job to raise the guard there. It's the relaxed safe. This right there as he lands and maybe time to get the bonus checks ready. I mean, oh, he didn't step into that. He's got him hurt very bad. Oh, I needed a counter there. Shit. Big shots being landed on both sides here. Get out of there. I don't want that. He's getting desperate. Oh, there's the counter. One more. Ooh. Shit. Get out of there. Get out of there. He's fucking dangerous, too. Keep moving. Keep moving. Watch him prove defensively as he blocks the shot. Oh! 
Great leg kick. Oh, there it is. There's another one. I checked that one. Fuck. Great head kick. My legs fucked up. Just checked the bone to my kicks. Oh, straight right. I went to counter. He was fast. His hands were quick. Decision, decision. We're out of here. Right there. Ooh. Ooh. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, let's get up. Get up, get up, get up. Get up. No, it was no very close round. That's a 10 8 round. Other than that fucking knockdown, maybe give him 10 9. Yeah, I do gotta get better my takedown defense though. It was tough. All right, round two. Oh, missed. Come on, get out of that. Oh, strong punch there by Lewis. Barely missed on an uppercut right here on the inside. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh shit. Oh, it means missed it. There it is. Back to the feet. Oh. There it is. He ducked into it. Went to that leg kick. He went to check the leg kick. Went up. There it is. There it is. That his opponent candidly didn't even see coming. It landed flush, and the rest, as they say, is history. Big knockout win for him. Woo! Oh, take a look back at the highlights. You know we're going to find that nasty head kick somewhere in this highlight rip. Just an incredible result for him. Here a very nice head kick. Y'all already know that man had to be transported. Call them, boys. Bring out the stretcher. Put that man through the motherfucking concussion protocol. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Harry Dean has called the Sanchez contest. At one minute, 13 seconds of round number two. Playing the winner by knockout. Excuse me. Knockout win tonight. I'm in the head of the way right now. Go win, Saints. I'm in the head of the way right now. All right, we lost some attributes, but that's all right. We're good to go. Let's uh, get back to our call in here. I think Lena's about to call in. Let's go. The, how, however unlikely it may be that life, uh, that life exists, or that it takes to get life on any said planet, uh, then you know you're at least looking at some reasonable chance that life exists elsewhere in the universe. And I think that's, that's, that's the kind of phraseology I would use. Um, we don't know how likely it is or how uh, unlikely it is that life uh, would, um, you know, spontaneously arrive or, or be, I don't want to use the word created, but spontaneously arise <laughs> on any planet. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, don't <laughs> never never assign personality to chemical reactions, it and it's hard to not it. do that. <laughs> it, yeah, it can help it. but it is part of. At our least language. there's uh, uh, limits to what you can lose, huh? Pointed out, but nonetheless, um, that's how yeah, you got so, so much goddamn uh, pocket you know, change. I, we don't know how unlikely it is that life will arise, so we can't really even give an accurate, uh, you know, what's the word, likelihood 
uh, that life arose on another planet. And that's 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 it. And that's the long and short of it, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so floor yeah, is yours, I, Lena. Oh, hello, Lena. Did you go to eat, or are you here because you're muted on Streamyard? I can definitely. I mean, mute symbol. All right, time for the next if, fight. If you went, yeah. If, if you went to go and eat, that's okay. I'm just going to leave you in here till you come back. Then Rob, or fix your fix your uh, microphone problem or whatever's going on. Okay, so um, apparently they're having connection problems. Okay. okay. Hopefully, come back. So, do you, All right, you, would, you would agree with that, would you, Richard? Yeah, you know, I, I, I don't even claim to know things, but every, and probably not often enough, which Sammy Jenkins and Math Pig have pointed out to me, I don't often enough say um, a, a standard disclaimer, like, I'm not claiming knowledge. I'm talking about what I am persuaded to believe. Of course, <laughs> all of us speak in what we're persuaded to believe as if they are facts, because no. we think they are. No, nope. so quite often, it's, yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard to avoid you know, unless like every other sentence you say, I'm I am persuaded, I'm convinced of. This is not necessarily true. And I get sick of saying it. Oh, he gets I mean, sick like, of saying I mean like I've made that, overall statements in my words. That this yeah. is what makes best sense to me, and that doesn't Asshole. prove it true. Yes, I've heard you say that on multiple occasions. Oh yes. Yeah. Well let Lena as soon as you're in Lena and you've got your mic going and we'll test it. Um We heard the click. Yeah, my computer is really laggy. Can you hear me okay? All right. Yeah, we'll just try to be patient with each other. It should be fine. Okay, you I've got like a five-second delay on my end. Wow. Floor is yours. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, I wanted to start by, by hearing from you because I, I don't know exactly what I'm... Um, attacking. I don't know what your claims are exactly. I've just heard these vague exactly. talks about space Jesus. Exactly, so vague. And then I heard when Jay asked you for evidence on his show, um, you started going into scripture at one point, and then you gave like a list of different yep. like, traits Love, or qualities. Love, justice, and... Um, one of them was like wisdom. Wisdom. And there were some wisdom. other ones. And then boom! So I, I'm already just kind of getting the sense that you don't really have a clear... Uh, um, view on what your Damn, empirical claims are and what right out with that of your religious ideology entails. Um, and I, I don't want like a whole, you know, hour long lecture about the nuances of what you believe. Can you just give me some like really basic, clear cut? These are the empirical, like what's actually real that I believe in. Okay, uh, empirical things are physical things. There is no empiricism attached to the idea of wisdom. Okay? So I'm not I'm not claiming empiricism because you can't. Uh what well, I'm gonna disagree claiming, with you right there. Because wisdom is empirically demonstrable. Wisdom is a is a thing that results from physical processes. It's real. Uh, I can I can scientifically prove to you what we mean what we're, when we're talking about wisdom, how it how it interacts in the real world, like that's a real concept. Wisdom is a real thing. Okay, you you might pause longer next time so I can finish a thought so that you don't misunderstand me and say things like you just did. You might want to pause just a little bit longer. Okay. Um, so I said I said there's no physical thing that is wisdom other than like electrical patterns we see in the brain. Okay. What? That's but not. Which we physical. still know. Are you feeling a little combative? Because I'm not attacking you. Oh my you. goodness! No, yeah, I'm just. I, I want to be clear that do. what the the laundry list of qualities that you Get described you were all me. physical, in my understanding. Nothing that you said was supernatural or outside of the physical oh, okay, material okay, world. Okay. So um, exactly. yes, there are physical representations of these immaterial constructs. If that's good enough. What? No. No. Definitely not. I mean, I don't know what you mean by immaterial. Okay. Um, I can say something like 
things have mass and are heavy. Okay? And the reason that what I just said is knowledge is because we can measure that things have mass and are thereby heavy. Okay? But I'm talking about my statement, which is the truth proposition. And I am not talking, when I say knowledge, I'm not talking, the, the knowledge is not the gravity. Shazam. The knowledge is not the mass nor its attraction. That is not the knowledge. The knowledge is that those things are true. That is, you, you can search all through gravity and, and acceleration and mass and all those things. There, there's not going to be a thing that you find which is the knowledge. Go ahead. I mean, I, I think as a physicalist, I disagree. But I'll, I'll let you, I, I don't want to interrupt, I'll let you flesh that out. Other than what we see happening in the human mind which is indicative of a person experiencing what is knowledge. That knowledge is not the same as the observations. It's, it's, it's the difference between the concept of the truth bearer, to bear a truth or speak it, right? the truth statement, and the truth holder, the thing of which that is true. Like when I say gravity, the things don't get heavier because I say gravity. But instead, when I say gravity, I'm referring to something that exists in reality. Correct. Okay. And the thought exists. And that, like, that process of, of understanding, of experiencing knowledge, right? The, con the consciousness that's involved in that, that's all physical. Yes. That's, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Okay. But I'm not talking about the electricity in my brain, and I'm not talking about the fact that things are attracted to each other, okay? When I say gravity, that's not what I'm referring to. I'm referring to the idea and all everything that's attached to the idea of gravity, like the slingshot effect, that's attached to gravity, you know? I'm not going to go through a list, by, and try to, I'm not going to insult you. Peace and respect, Jody Burns, and rage, welcome, um, and law of faith. Um, so... I'm, I'm talking about the value of the statement itself, which is grounded in the actuality. And the wisdom is not the gravity. The wisdom or knowledge or, or whatever aspect of these immaterial constructs, th that idea set, which can be seen in the brain, that's fine. But I'm talking about the idea itself. That's an immaterial construct. Doesn't make it not physical. It's just that I don't want to argue that because people will argue physicalism versus blah, blah, blah. I don't want to get into that. Uh, but I can say that my, me as a truth bearer can say that Lena is on my show. And what holds that as true is Lena is on my show. I think it's just difficult when you, in the same breath, say it's immaterial, but it's still oh. physical. I think that's where okay. I and others are going to yeah, be Yeah, Lena, he just... He just okay, I, I okay. Just, uh, I, I want to be fair about that. Um, can can we just uh, not worry about whether or not it's immaterial or physical? Can we just not really, worry about that and then, again, then assess the truth that's values? That's William Lane Craig. That's fine. So my contention is that you're trying to take sure. this idea of wisdom and then claim that it's space Jesus? Or how does this fit into your conception of God? Very good. Thank you. And, and you know, I, I, I'm not missing the fact that you're being patient with me. I'm not lost on I'm that. trying my best. And I appreciate that. I, pre no, I, I deeply appreciate that you are trying to understand, really. Because I get that so seldom. <laughs> um, okay. So, it, first of all, it's not space Jesus. That's totally the wrong idea. That the idea of Jesus is a job that a person functionally performs on an earth. So people so we're not are not Jewish Palestinian carpenter again ri ridiculous. No, just, just to be clear, like we're no. not talking about an actual person who lived in the 12th no. century. No, nope. not when we talk about David. wisdom. There is no person no. wisdom. Oh, see what the wisdom fuck is not a person. That. You're not trying to attribute the co the the concept of wisdom wow, so to, to an entity. My defense there. No, the being, right? Okay, that was no. well. That was that was definitely confusing in that in that. Uh, live stream of course it was well I, I, okay to be fair 
Um, I, I didn't say much about that, and and I didn't get to address you personally. And everyone's brain is very different from every other brain in nuanced ways. So I think I was thinking the same thing that you. Jay was, was thinking when Jay asked, um, "What is the evidence for space Jesus?" I I think I, I had the same no idea in mind of what he wanted. Okay, well, it's malformed. What a lot of atheists Big, would want. It's malformed because it was never one of my claims. A whole lot of nothing. It's just not AR. one of the claims. The, the claim is, and why I shown the text, is because the the te and I'm referring to I'm doing an internal critique here to see if it's plausible and consistent. Okay, and that's what I'm talking about is an again, internal critique. Again, plausible um, and consistent. So is have evidence. a novel, testable claim of interest. I'd like to get past this first. <laughs> of course. Go ahead. Of course. Okay. So my my claim is the text reads that Jehovah, not Jesus, not the Father, only Jehovah is a set of ideas. Okay? So when I talk about Jehovah, and I try to use the word Jehovah or yod heh vav -Hey or Yahweh, I try to be specific. And you're never going to hear me accidentally calling Jesus wisdom. I, I, that doesn't make any sense from the way I, way I understand it. So okay? let, let's talk about Jehovah then. Let's talk about um, Jehovah then because... Okay. What does it mean to say that Jehovah is wisdom? Now are you attributing a concept to an entity, or is Jehovah not an entity, as most Christians and, and Jews would believe? Okay. Y is yes. it not a being? Yes, I understand I'm fringe. Yes, I, I understand that I am not agreeing with them on that. That's because fine. I'm not... What, what I'm, tr I'm not conflating the Father... I'm looking up Hammer Fist. ...with... Man. Yahweh. I'm not conflating those two, and that's what's normally done. Okay. What? <laughs> but it says in the text that this Yahweh is a set of spirits and lists them. On on the flip side, and which has existence but no personage, it has being but it's not a person. Uh, and then it says that the then it reads that the Father has things like personality traits, and it calls him God too, and that's all very damn confusing if a person didn't go and look into the words, which I have. And, and it's actually very, very divine, and it never contradicts itself in, in that the Father has personage, but Yahweh only has being, like the Constitution, or, or the, the periodic table. It doesn't have a personality, it's just not part of it. Okay, so I, I have four different terms that I now need clarification on. I know. God... Jesus, Yahweh, and the Father. So which, which one do you care about the most that you feel has empirical evidence for? And, and give me that one. Okay. Uh, first, the four definitions. Um, El, or uh, God, which includes the term Baal, which is the same as Baal. Uh, it just generally means God. It's not a good term to use. I don't think the word God should be in the Bible at all because it's so damn vague. I agree. I th uh, yeah, that's exactly why I don't like that word. That's uh, why I avoid religious terminology in general. But go on. Okay. And, and then uh, the Yahweh is the set of immaterial constructs which we experience, you know, physically. Right. Uh, okay, and then the Father. We got we to gotta sure. unpackage that. It is a set of immaterial properties. That's what you said? Yeah, that's good enough, yeah. So, I'm, I mean, I'm already um, opposed to this concept, to its utility, to its, um, right. God its existence as, a set of as one unified concepts. thing. Like, what is that? Uh, as, as, as its utility as something to be prayed to or as having any relation to religion as it's... And I, I, I understand you've already accepted that it has no relation to how other Christians use it. You, but what, what's the point of, of putting all these concepts together? Why do we call this set of concepts God? Okay, just like the Constitution or the periodic table, you can't pray to it and it respond and that has some meaning. Right, whereas a lot of Christians, when they think about praying to a, a God, they think about a being who hears them and appreciates their worship. 
So that's because the explain, generality of the term God that you and I already reject. Yeah. So explain to me why do we need a word for the set for this these set of qualities? Why why can't we just call them what they are? Why are you inventing this word? What am I inventing? The word God. The the set of qualities of what was it? Wisdom, virtue, some other stuff. The list isn't going to matter to you right now. It's it's just really basic fundamental constructs. Well, I mean, but why? Why are you doing that? Why am I doing that? Uh, yeah. When you say, don't you why know that you're being I... intentional? Like it seems like you're being intentionally deceptive and and, and right. Um, like mystery occult and like it, it just feels like you're trying to have some special knowledge on everyone by making up terms that everyone else agrees with and believes in, like wisdom. But then you want to say, no, you know that it's actually this, like, entity that's God. And it, it's frustrating. Why are you making up this word? I'm going to kick you very soon. Oh, my Lord. Because you've lost really? all of your ability to cooperate. Oh, my goodness. And this is such you're, a you're, power. You're, like, what a constantly. constantly. What? Um, you're not letting me respond. You've asked the question three what? times in a row now. Could you please stop that? Y'all, I didn't even hear this shit yet. Go, this go is ahead. outrageous. I don't know how Lena okay. I mean, I don't think I this. don't understand the question. If I respond Holy poorly, shit. tell me I responded Richard, poorly. Richard, you responded Peace poorly. Peace and respect, God. Rage. Okay, Peace and respect. So, Peace and respect. I'm, I'm not making this up. It's literally printed in the story. Have fun, so In the appreciate internal appreciate critique appreciate of the story, you. I have made up nothing. Now, Christians have made some stuff up conflating the idea of the Father wow. with the idea of Yahweh. And that's what you're talking about, is that conflation, which I don't think is valid. Okay, So I don't think that uh, this set of immaterial constructs has a personality. And I don't think you should pray to the, the periodic table. I, I, and I don't. Okay, But is it the highest thing? Well, yeah. In chemistry, the periodic table is the, like it's the principal most basic thing. You can't get more base than that. Uh, and you can't change it. I'm not you sure can't I expound know what that on it. There's more base than the periodic table? You don't know what that means? I, I, I have some idea what you mean by that. But let me make it less personal and just say, why did the people who came up with the concept of Yahweh, whoever wrote the story, why okay. do you think they did that? I can approach it from that angle. What purpose does the word Yahweh let's, have? Let, let, let's say that however many people, and, and let's grant them they maybe even weren't all that dang smart. Let's, let's grant them all that. And there was a big group of them. Uh, the assessment in the text is that wisdom, knowledge, counsel, understanding, fear, power, and conservation are really fundamental ideas for a society. And there's really like, they're saying there's no way of getting around them. I, that's that's not a it's not a, an intelligible claim in my mind. You're like what, it doesn't what's seem unintelligible like actually, about it. It's not that it's unintelligible. It's that it's not um, specific. It's not applicable. Again, it's, I don't know what it's the exactly hell I'm talking what a grifter about. would do when they're pushed onto their back foot, <laughs> and they have to admit that everything they've been saying isn't actually spiritual or, or otherworldly. But is in fact just a metaphorical way of talking about the real world. It's a metaphorical way of talking about the real world. Now, what you just right. did there, what you just did there, was you used a known code, in this case English, and with your knowledge of English, you oh, used your goodness. wisdom wow. to take from your mind. Something that was completely disorganized, and you organized it within English, right? And then you used your then power I don't of I'm not done. Step further. Then you used your power of speech to express that to me, and then I had to decode it. Correct, but I don't go the step farther like Deepak Chopra and say that that's God or say that that's some supernatural thing. And try to I don't know what's supernatural about anything you did or anything I'm claiming. 
Well, then you've got a PR issue because everyone I've talked to about you thinks that you're pushing some supernatural religious woo-woo. Let's get right and here. He goes, and this is where he's gonna he's gonna try to play his fucking word game because he defines his god as something that's not supernatural, which is inherently against what most people think of as God. So his God, which again, y'all, I literally have asked this man, okay, Richard, so what you're saying is you have this naturalistic theory of your God is wisdom and blah, 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 and then the Bible is a narrative about uh, the Jesus who played the role of Jesus on an earth and da, 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 da. So I asked a very simple question then. How did we get the story? Right? Because it's like Lena said, right? Like, so you're saying he's not this Middle Eastern dude from, you know, he's not a carpenter from the Levant or whatever the fuck. And, and he's like, oh, nah, you know, it's just other so asked a simple question. Then how do we get the story? Right, because somehow we got this fucking Bible we have, which all the Jews and all the Christians keep, you know, telling us dates back to the Hebrews and and, and the, those writers and all this. So how did they get this Bible? And he says, um, angels, angels. Again, every, uh, to to us, we all think of angels as being supernatural divine entities. Richard Madsen describes his God as not supernatural because it's wisdom and love and all of these things that we can, you know, vibe with naturally, although he needs to go to immaterial, you know, the William Lane Craig, timeless, spaceless, immaterial being or whatever to get us there. Then we need angels to be the mechanism by which we get our story of his non super do y'all see the do y'all see the, the the irrational pretzel this man ties himself into just so he can seem like he's smarter than everybody and again richard madsen like I, it, there's a simple solution to this bro just leave that shit alone like we we got to stop acting like people are so reasonable for defending this shit to the death Bro, the correct answer is like, yeah, sorry, I, I thought about it some more. Uh, my bads, that's not really the way to go. Until until further notice, I'm a naturalist. And if you can't do that, to me, like, you, you don't really deserve a place in this conversation because you just can't be honest with yourself enough to be honest with the rest of us. Rage to comment on that, Rage. Africa right yeah, now. I'm not Africa quite right sure. Now. Uh, Africa I don't know. Right seems, Africa yeah, it seems right like you're coming into much. this conversation with the wrong pretty idea about much. Richard. Uh, I'd like to kind of get your idea. Like when you say grifter, what do you mean? Are you talking about like a charlatan or somebody that doesn't angels uh, have even there yeah, he's actually believe in the, right in the ideals right that they're Africa pushing? Africa right now. From Africa right the, the, now. The kind of god that he's pushing <laughs> sounds exactly <laughs> like the Jordan Peterson kind of god. Yep. We're, we're Rage, uh, bro, Rage Lena has yeah, a bad delay. Page, Please baby. try to take that into consideration. They're not being rude. All right. Thank okay. you. I appreciate that, Richard. Timeless, um, spaceless, immaterial being. I lost my train of thought. Go ahead. Jordan Peterson, go back to it. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah so the, the way in which he will adopt religious language and talk about God without going into detail about what he specifically means up into the point where he's literally forced to, where he's on an interview or a, a debate and he's, his feet are held to the fire, then he'll admit that it's just a metaphorical concept and it's not literally real. So it, it's, it's, that's the frustration that I have with him and with all these other, as I view them, grifters. Grifters. Uh, is, is that... They, Ooh, they do got this dance, and then no, when they're called him. out for it, look at him, look at him. they try and pretend like oh, they didn't pissed. do anything wrong. Oh, well, I've just been talking oh, about yeah, metaphorical well, no, yeah, stuff. I was just, da, 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 well, I, I yeah. say that, but right there in your kind of example, there, there, there's that huge difference right there. I, I totally agree with you about uh, Peterson and, and Peterson's take on religion. Um, I, don't, I don't think that he believes in a God, and yet he totally grips. Also, let me call this out for what it is. He knows who he gets on here, and so he's very selective where he gets people on who he knows are probably going to defend his shit. Is this? I don't know. It just it just bothers me. I I I feel like I see this shit happen a lot, and it's it's kind of irritating. Where again, 
instead of letting this be a really direct exchange where, um, you know, Richard's going to defend himself, he now gets his sort of panel to do his, his, his bidding for him, uh, which again allows him to just kind of nitpick and choose uh, what he wants to allow to, you know, it's like if they say something he likes and he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if they're, if they're incorrect about something and then Lena calls that out, you know, he'll be like, oh, I didn't say that. You know, to me, to me, this is more of a dodge by way of facilitation, you know, rather than a direct dodge to um like the right wing idea of it anyway or he'll say stupid things like it's fundamental for the 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 uh, western civilization to have existed so therefore just accept it that's um, exactly but, what richard is doing but you said it right there in, justice, in your description hope, of it mercy is that oh, he doesn't God. go into detail unless really really pressed and to whereas richard i think anybody that that listens to Richard. I don't agree with most of what Richard Again, Lena's been asking for the details and can't and get I, them. I find it a lot more rational. But I, if you listen to Richard long enough, for one, he's going into extreme detail with his beliefs. Um, he he's not afraid to to confront non-believers like ourselves, but also to get confronted or to confront believers and stand in his conviction within that. He never changes a story. Um, and and I think that if you listen to Richard long enough, there's no way that you can come out of that thinking, "Hey, Richard doesn't believe." Um, what he's putting forward you might it might be hard to understand because it's completely different than from what we get from other christians but i think if he was trying to do a grift well he, he would be more in line uh with at least some of the mainstream concepts so he wouldn't have every christian at his throat i can respect that and um i want to be clear that when i talk about grifters in the sense i don't think that they're being intentionally deliberately dishonest like i don't even think jordan peterson thinks to himself yeah, yeah i don't really believe in god but he's just you know, doing this stick no that like would be, these people uh, that would be just yeah like so i want to be clear with you slightly different than you do but yeah so yeah totally I, I i get what you're saying because by definition it just means pretty much charlatan or somebody that takes advantage of people yeah and then my main objection may be just uh, a pr issue right the, the fact that richard is waving the christian flag and that not everyone most people who, who hear of him are not going to watch or listen to his stuff. And so it, it's kind of a guilt by association problem. But but I have a feeling that even if I did get into the the nuance and, and we did uncover that it is all just metaphorical and that these ancient fairy tales do really relate to, to real world issues and that there are lessons to be learned and all this jazz, I, I'm still going to say that it's you know, a waste of my time and not contributing to the atheist Christian YouTube debate culture. To be fair, Lena, sorry, sorry, Rage. Sorry about that. No, no, go ahead. I I knew you were going to respond, but I want (laughs) to, I want to talk about that just a little bit. Uh, Lena, I would advise you to not grant me that uh, it's bad PR because I think at at this uh, point in our uh, interchange, you can't make that assessment yet. Um, that y- you shouldn't grant me that much forgiveness. Although it's really nice of you, I don't think I yet deserve it. Oh, wait, I'm confused. <laughs> what? What, what, what? Should I not be criticizing you for for having a bad look or... Is that a gang? I think this whole shit that we're experiencing right now shows you the problem with this debacle, y'all. Am I an atheist or a Christian? Have I always been an atheist? Am I a naturalist or not? Do I believe in the scientific method? Do I hold any positions that you would consider counter to the major scientific consensus in any major areas that you're aware of? I'm not trying to be funny. What I'm trying to, what I'm trying to communicate to y'all is genuine people communicate genuinely in such a way that it is always seeking to minimize ambiguity about their positions. 
Richard Madsen has a god that's not defined like any other gods. His god is all natural, although the mechanism of delivery is supernatural. It's rational, although all you have to do is think irrationally to rationalize it. I'm confused. Is Jordan Peterson a Christian or not a Christian? Seems open to Christianity, cries about Jesus, but doesn't identify as an evangelical. Like, why? 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 Why is this so hard? I don't, I don't know. Talks about atheists like they're dogs, but then doesn't really come out explicitly stating it's Christian. Da, da, da. Like, it, it just speaks to the whole problem in this culture of these people who just, their whole thing is double talk, double speak, soft stances, soft, weird stances. They just want to have their cake and eat it, too. They're, they're, they're just so afraid to grow up. They're so afraid to put on their big boy pants and say, I don't think this is right. I don't agree with this. Da, 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 da. And so their stances are, on everything is just so fucking jumbled, and that's the way they need it to be. They need to make sure nobody's ever really clear on where they stand. That way they don't ever have to face the consequences of taking a fucking stand on anything. And again, I could just run down all of these metaphysical questions, and y'all knew, y'all knew uh, right, right away. World you knew the answer. And the narrative world touch. You knew the fucking answer to all of this shit. Yeah, Jay's an atheist Christian. No, you too, punk. Y'all know the story. No, that's fine. No, that's that's <laughs> fine. That's a valid critique. I, I just wouldn't give as much forgiveness based on bad PR as you What's just up, expressed. I, I don't think you can show that yet. What have I forgiven you for? Or what should I not <laughs> forgive you for? He doesn't know. Uh, that for that it could just be how fringe, how fringe I am. And, and, uh, and that doesn't necessarily show that what I'm saying makes sense in reality or has any value in our experience. But, I mean, I thought it was really nice of you. But it, it, sure. you, you can't really show that yet. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, and it doesn't show how potentially dangerous it could be either. I, 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 I try to err on the side of caution and say that if it's an ideology that's not factually and scientifically based, then it's inherently dangerous and inherently fascistic, which, I mean, people are going to object to that word for all sorts of Teach reasons. Teach me a new but word. I, well, I think it falls under the... The one point of fascism Let's which is go, a, Lena. A inherent disdain for intellectualism and the arts. And Don't so, do it, Rage. We are not getting into politics right now. I know that just almost killed you. Gang, like all great politicians, Lena knows not to leave us without the greatest hits. Lena, we showed up to hear you call these people fascist. <laughs> Bring it on, baby. I'll be right back, gang, and then it's fight night. But uh, in the meantime, Lena, oh, baby, bring it to me. This is what we're here for. This is what we're here for. <laughs> well, I, I was going to say, like, I, I actually agree with the point to an extent, but I, I don't think you can say, like, all, um, I, I don't know, um, um, religious um, or, or even spiritual um, ideologies out there uh, actually do fall into that. I, I, you know, there's a lot of Native American spiritual spiritualities out there to where um, they actually do encourage intellectualism. Uh, and, and there's actual, like, sex and right, Christianity but if, that if the ideology... Them. Sure, but if a Native American spiritual ideology contains anti-intellectual or pseudo-intellectual uh, elements, those elements are, I, I would consider to be at, at least in um, some small extent inherently fascistic. 
And I don't, I, I don't but, think that necessarily means that the society is going to look fascistic or that any of these elements are going to, to evolve into a, a larger um, problem or into a fascistic government. I'm just saying that the the room that ideologies give uh, when you when you allow them to to get away with scientifically questionable or, or pseudoscientific elements, there is that the, always that risk. So I always try and um, err on the side of what can actually be demonstrated. Well, so uh, so uh, fascism is a very specific ideology. That, I mean, there's very specific definitions to it. That was great. I, I mean, like, I'm using it very broadly, just very I, I, broadly, well, I, the, the disdain I, for intellectualism I, I, in the arts. You know, I, I'm a lefty, and I'm not knocking any lefty, but I think leftists do this a lot. Um, I, I don't think... <sighs> To, to, to call something fashy or, or, or to say that, you know, like th this ideology can have like symptoms. I, I, I think that's the wrong way to go about it, because then then you can you can pretty much cherry pick anything and anything and, and call it fashion. I disagree. And, and just... Oh, no, I disagree. I think it, it's hard to point out elements of fascism in systems that aren't fascistic. I think I think okay. there actually is a quite a clear line. I hope you both really enjoyed that little three minute. Yeah, sorry, uh, sorry. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you. I hope you guys get together. Get this together is, and, and have a big talk on that. <laughs> yeah, this is the Space Jesus Show. Uh, okay. Yeah, totally so, so, so how can we detach you okay. from the Space Jesus PR? Because uh, you you said that that's wrong. It's not Space Jesus. Boy, these motherfucking theists know how to pass a hot potato. You saw how fast he got away from that? Oh, y'all could go somewhere and have it. Belina. They, see, see, they think I'm not on brand. I'm out here on brand. What do you see me doing in this UFC for? Working on Uncle Bobby's wrestling. What else do we do? Word wrestling entertainment, professional wrestling, UFC wrestling, football wrestling. Any, anything I want to turn into wrestling becomes wrestling. If I say it's now wrestling, it's now wrestling. Boom, microphone wrestling. See how I did that? I clubbed the microphone. It's now, look, look, I got this mic in a fucking truck. Microphone wrestling. See, I, I just made up a new form of wrestling right there. And this nigga trying to squirm. He's trying to squirm. But just like Uncle Bobby, Lena is making the transitions. Lena's like, no, you're not going to get what? You want to turn this way? Okay, now we're back sitting. Now I'll climb all over your back. What? Don't give me your arm. I will break this arm, nigga. What? What, nigga? What? You going to give me the legs, nigga? I will choke out your legs right now. What? What, nigga? What? What? N Lena? What? What? Boom. Body shots. Body shots. Lena's not fucking around. Lena's like, no, 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 nigga. You want to run that space, Jesus PR? Bringing our ass back all right around here to, set, to, to fascism. Because I can't separate the two. Y'all catch that? That shit was slick. Nigga trying to be out here doing PR for space, Jesus, which is fascism. Lena tries to say, I got a problem with that. It's inherently fascistic. So then Richard lets his dummy jump in. The tag team partner that's supposed to get worked over and take the heat. Let's this fool get worked over on fascism and then goes, oh, well, you guys could have that conversation some other time. Let's get back on topic. Lane is like, nah, nigga, this is the topic. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Lena wasn't feeling that squirming shit, y'all. Lena, Lena was making them fucking BJJ transitions and shit. Lena was not letting this nigga squirm. I love it. I love it. Is, okay. is there a way that you can kind of um, conclusively shut that down for everyone and just, just let everyone know how it's that idea worse. maybe came about and, and why it was misappropriately attributed to you? Uh, okay, so the misappropriation Love you too, is Jesus it. is God. That's nowhere in the story. And also that Jesus is the Father is God. That's also not in the story. But that living beings can follow a set of immaterial constructs like, for instance, uh, Bill of Rights and the Constitution and stuff like that. People can do that, okay? But that doesn't mean the Bill of Rights has personality, even though it makes demands of you. 
and and it and it gives you rights and it gives you privileges of certain kind if it's equally applied and blah 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 problems but can i interrupt you're 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 comparing the bill of rights to the bible and i i find it uh questionable or, or problematic it seems silly because i i've read the bible i know it's a story about um a figure you're you're saying it's a compilation and they're they're taking different stories that don't go together and they're uh incorrectly attributing the father as yahweh uh, i've read the story the it first sounds like several a volcano parts of god that no right so where's the Richard, first where are we of getting that no Jesus and the last part of that instead of volcano yes, god there's a conflation between the father and the the jehovah um and when I say Jehovah or Yahweh or yod heh vav it's literally all the same exact term. It's just easier and harder ways to say it. And again, Richard Madsen, let's be clear about this, y'all. We got to be clear about this because sometimes these niggas, they be making these points and they just keep insisting that nobody gets the point they're trying to make. And, and eventually we just have to move on. But let's be very clear about this. Of course Lena gets the point. Of course we get the... The problem is this is a stupid point. This point is literally on the level of the Christian's uh, fucking evangelism opener. Have you heard about my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Nah, motherfucker, I've, I, this shit is news to me. What? A tornado? What? The weatherman said it was going to be sunny today. How, how could this be the news? Like, seriously? Have you heard the good news? No, nah, I ain't never heard the good news. <laughs> right? But to me, that's what he's doing. Like, did you know that Christians conflate the concept of father, which is a, a role, a job, a vocation, so to speak? It, a father, see, see, father is a concept fathering right and so the bible confuses fathering with this yahweh god that nigga shut the fuck up you are not adding dick to the conversation acting like we don't know the difference between the the idea of the god concept as a stand-in for god the father versus fa like <sighs> Again, it's low IQ if you really got a grandstand and do this big ta-da to make your big point, and your point sucks, everybody already knew it, and adds nothing to the conversation. I'm sorry, y'all, that is the definition of low IQ behavior. You were like, look at me, look at me, look at me. We looked at you, and you didn't show us a goddamn thing. Um. And you probably already knew that, Lena. But Stupid. Here, here's the issue. It's not so much that What's up, Joel? Uh, these things are evidently conflated. I mean, look at the Trinity. It's absolutely logically impossible. But yeah, I agree. so yeah, totally. And, and but more than that, the way the Christians are looking at it is not in the text. Uh, because of the conflations they're making, because of church uh, doctrine and tradition. By the way, the Jews don't make those conflations. The Jews have it all separate and neatly, clock, clock, clock. Uh, and, and I think really close to or spot on. Uh, in fact, I hardly ever have an, a, an argument with someone of a traditional Orthodox Jewish hey view because they just we just sit there and agree that that's what those words means and words mean in hey, that Lena, context. Is that you? Okay, so I'm. It's uh, me. I'm finally off work. Oh, nice. All right. What uh? What do you? What 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 say you of this so far? Man, every time I engage with someone afterwards, I'm like, I was way too. You always draw me back to to reality, Jay. I'm like, I try <laughs> to be nice and I question myself and wonder maybe I'm not seeing it right. And you always bring it back, Jay, and I appreciate that. Well, I appreciate you too because you're being a lot nicer than I would have been. And I do think it has a lot a lot of value because you bring a lot of clarity. It would never happen otherwise. Yeah, and it wouldn't happen if you just <laughs> blow up and blow, blow, you know, just, just sort of go for the kill every time. 
But it it bothers me almost defensively because I think this is what we're fleeing from, right? We're we're leaving a church, a lot of us, or leaving behind that church culture, right? And the problem was never that they didn't say peace and respect or that they didn't say you're welcome here. The problem isn't that they show up to, you know, a scientific discussion and curse everybody out and and beat them over the head. They've always been friendly. They've always brought cookies and punch. Um, And if we're going to call out their problematic behavior, that has to be part of what we're calling out. Or at least have to say that that's not going to suffice anymore. And the thing that really bothers me about it is that I do feel like it's weaponized. Um, where yeah. they take advantage of that, right? It, like the, just the whole politics of civility thing. So that's what bothers me. It's not that I think it's a mistake to be kind to them or whatever. It's just uh, it's a risk it's that like we your take and I see them take it, tricking take it you. Too yeah, exactly. You exactly. like dress up your cell, make it look real nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, it is frustrating watching it back. Um, and just kind of seeing like the larger picture and, and framing of the whole conversation, right? And and then just the way that he's like using Judaism as like a underlying support for credibility. When I don't think Judaism has any credibility and is totally pseudo And so it's of course, yeah. It, it, it's um, it's like there's there's layers of of deconstruction where it's like oh well he's not those christians who like take the book literally so it's there's there's like room for yeah and for credibility and it's it's not it's it's weird it's not uh, what we do on these conversations it's not mixed martial arts and it's not pro wrestling it's it's somewhere in between with dramatic swings and what i mean by that is when you go into like a conversation with say a Kent Hovind, there's a way in which it's almost, it's not scripted like a pro wrestling match because you don't sit down ahead of time and plan it out and, 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 and tell the same story cooperatively. Right. But you kind of know exactly what his script is you know well you know what his moves are you know exactly what he's looking to do and so you can almost in a sense prepare for it in a way that doesn't allow you to be scripted but you you really you kind of know exactly how this is going to play out um with someone like richard madsen you're much more not completely like mixed martial arts but more in that space where you kind of know what he's known for you kind of know what his discipline is you know you can watch some tape and kind of see what he's doing right but ultimately you know when you get in the cage with them it's gonna be uh, you know it's like you say about chess right each chess match is unique and you might you might know your openers but you're going to get at some point where you're both past your openers and now you've just got to play chess right (laughs) um and so i think that you always in hindsight get a lot more out of it so you know that's my way of saying don't be too critical of yourself right because you're in a situation where you're reacting and responding in real time and so you're always going to look back at it and go oh now i can see what they were doing and you know you can see the whole story arc a little bit different And he's not playing some hyper aggressive attacking strategy right he's playing this sort of Right. Quiet, passive, defensive. (laughs) Yeah, literally revealing as little as possible. And yeah, that's the game. And then the other thing is that's, I think, part of the, that's the Richard Madsen tactic. You know, everybody's got their thing. But in some sense, he's on that Rebecca tip where he's in our community. A lot of people like myself probably don't even realize Richard Madsen had a channel or they're just realizing Richard Madsen has a channel, right? And they mostly know Richard Madsen from coming in through and saying peace and respect, more or less seeming like he's on the same page with us when we call out the absurdity of right-wing garbage or, you know, Christian other theist, right? And so he's, oh, oh, yeah, we love Richard Madsen. He's one of us, right? So he's 
ingratiated himself a lot of ways like that, right? And so it's that much harder to, um, you know, see what his real intents are and, and stuff like that. So I, I think you actually did a fantastic job. I'm really impressed. And I love, that's the thing I love about our communities. We all have our different approaches. I don't think I could have done this because, you know, I've, I've realized I got to start choking people out, Lena, because it's like, that's like, that's like my fighting instincts. Right. And, uh, <laughs> but and I, I, like know, I said, I like cleaning up your scraps. I like, yeah, but you're uh, really I think good it's good to have thing. the flavor. It's good to have the spectrum. And I think, um, cause I didn't, I didn't disagree with anything, any of your takes. Like I just wouldn't have the same emotion towards it, but I'm sure if I were in your shoes, then I would. Um, cause yeah, like it's just, if I were an academic, doing a YouTube channel, trying to push back against pseudoscience, I, I would probably t take a, the same offense and then see it as weaponized as you do. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think we all benefit, and we all help each other, too. Um, but yeah, to me, this is... We're really lucky in the sense that we, like I said, we can reach out and touch these people, at least virtually or whatever, like you know, they're not just people we talk about. We we can talk with them and, at times and stuff like that. But they epitomize the things that we talk about in science education, right? Like in this class I'm taking with Rob where we talk about philosophy of science and we are trying to distinguish it from pseudoscience. I mean, the Richard Madsons, the Sal's, the Rebecca's, I mean, these people are textbook examples right not to give too much away but like one of my ambitions is to like convince rob that like we can write a follow-up to something like tower of babel that's about what we're experiencing because it's just the hallmarks of the stuff so it's you know to your point it's kind of like if we're not going to be, from my position at least, it's like if, if I'm not going to be outraged by the Richard Madsons of the world, then there's just, I might as well pack it up and go home now because, <laughs> you know, this is, this is, this is exactly what it looks like. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's really similar to the, to the fascism line. Like we, we know where the line's drawn on. Yeah. On pseudo um, and... Before I roll more tape, why don't you, um, explain that a little bit more? Cause I think he tried to dodge that. So do you want to maybe draw that out a little bit more of why? Yeah. I mean, I'm, I fascism? might be, be overusing that, that term and I've, I've received, you know, plenty of criticism about it being jargon and not, um, you know, having a, a consistency of definition. We have a powerful useful, cumulative case. I, I just throw in any ideologies that um, contain pseudoscience uh, due to the fact that that is a, a form of disdain for um, the the academic process for, for science. It's 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 an attack on science. Um, and people don't exactly see how that connects to fascist ideologies um but it, it is a, a an underlying tenet of, of fascism if you go to like if you go online you look up 14 points of fascism sure um it's it's one of the points so and it plays out anywhere you see fascism you always see um uh, an attempt to cover up some some truth about science, whether it's Aryan racism or Lysenkoism or all the shit that, that Kim Jong Il's done, his his hole in ones and uh, right, or you know, the shit, perfect, we, see with, the shit we see with Trump, perfect and... golf scores or whatever. Yeah, like, <laughs> um, yeah. So it's it's it might not be as uh, symptomatic in ideologies like native american spiritualism or, or stuff like this um especially systems that don't make it clear the line between poetry and and literal empirical claims about uh, reality so it, it's um it's just dangerous it's dangerous to be pushing these things it's dangerous to give them space in academic credibility um 
Yeah, I I, yeah. I actually really agree, and I think this is a really important point because they're trying to avoid that. They want to... It, it's really, I see it as a white boy problem, and, and I don't mean that as derogatorily as I'm sure it sounds, but what I really mean is that the same way we're... If we're going to say that, like, you know, rock and roll or whatever, or or, you know, fucking hip-hop and all these shit are examples of where people, you know, appropriated black culture for their own usage, right? Then, to me, we have to be honest about people who took academic... I, I, the term that comes to mind is paraphernalia. I used to call it the paraphernalia of academia, right? It's I've got the jacket, I've got the looks, I've got the background full of books, I've got the jargon, um, and turning that into a fucking billion dollar industry of commodification of anti-intellectual ideas. I don't, you know, uh, who did that? <laughs> like, come on. What was I mean, it Ga- Gaia? Has anyone gotten those uh, Gaia ads on, on yeah, YouTube? Yeah, yeah. I mean, so <laughs> so to me, like, yeah, y'all are y'all are. That's that's a that's a uniquely European older male thing. <laughs> I just that's just who I see it rise right. And and what I'm trying to reflect here is it's really become this problem where this sort of wordplay is normalized in a way that now doesn't allow us to see the the real harm it caused because once you trivialize something to word games, people think the solution to the problem is saying the correct words. So rather than someone like Richard Madsen having to really be, let's say, treated like someone who enables fascism, which would be really bad, right? Um, Instead, it's just seen as, well, he's a nice dude who, you know, we don't agree with some of the things he says, so then we continue to treat him like, you know, uh, you know, someone who deserves our attention and our platform and to be taken seriously. And he's such a great guy. And we're sort of, we're, 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 we're over, we're giving them too much social value. Right. And then again, it feels like as long as we're saying the correct things about it, we don't have to take it seriously. So it is a real problem to me. And what you're bringing out that's really important is sort of like the alt-right playbook. If we're going to comprehensively address, say, the problem of racism, we have to address all of the structural problems that enable it. We can't just say, well, we stop people from burning crosses, so racism is over. And if we want to address fascism we have to recognize that this sort of anti or pseudo intellectual pseudo scientific culture is always going to serve as fertilizer for fascism Obama. right yeah and so yeah. we've got to shut down the people selling the fertilizer and stop acting like they're not selling fascism fertilizer because they yeah, are. Yeah, you wonder why the moths show up when you have the, right. the flashlight going. And so it can be really hard for us because we want to say, well, I'll call out the fascism when they're goose-stepping in brown shirts and banging on our door and putting trans people on list. But we've really got to say there's a whole meal at the table here and that's just the cranberry sauce. Somebody's got to take the fucking, realize they got to take the turkey out the oven, right? And the pseudoscience, the pseudo-intellectual shit is a big problem because that's where somehow it's like easier, 
right? Like that's the problem here. The problem is if you if you're goose stepping and you're burning crosses and you're calling people the N word and you're you know the doxing people in their dead names, you're paying the price, right? And, and nobody's inviting you over for Thanksgiving dinner, but right now you can still do a lot of the dirty work on this pseudo intellectual bullshit. And we're not yet making those people pay the cost. Yeah. yeah and I, I can, <clears throat> we're going to get back to the, the yeah, tape, yeah, but sure, it's sure. going to, um, they're going to, it's going to come up to that perfect textbook example of, um, of the, the grift, which is, um, they're going to say something along the lines of, well, it's not logically impossible. And, and it's the same thing as telling a, a half truth. Are you always, you know, a good liar will always throw in a little truth with the lie. Right. So they, they throw yeah. in one of the four criteria of science, right. That, that it has to be rationally coherent and internally consistent, but then they, they use giving up one good thing to then sneak in, ignoring the other three, uh, criteria of science, right, and then and then claiming that they're being scientific. Absolutely. So I just, uh, yeah, it's the same sort of tactic of um, doing a little good so that people overlook the absolutely, the actual absolutely. Uh, I can get into absolutely. a whole thing about corporate social responsibility, but I yeah, no, I the... agree. I mean, we were having this <laughs> conversation. Um, it, would, it was once one way you'd probably be interested in talking about sports. Where so an NFL player basically like collapsed on the field. I mean, somebody came through the chat and actually said they died. I mean, so it was they didn't right, but it looked that serious I saw when that they collapsed. Post. It literally looks yeah, like they I died right. That. So they stopped that game, right? And so there was a bit of a discussion mm -hmm. about should they have actually stopped the game, right? Because injuries, very serious ones, concussions, people passing out, all this stuff sort of happens all the time in football. And you, and you go on with the game. Uh, now, this one just seems like people were particularly jarred. But it's a really interesting conversation because at the end of the day, they did make the decision to stop the game, and I think that's probably because of the severity of the situation and the the emotional response of the players and all that. But at the end of the day, I think it's because of PR, not because they care about the bodies, right? And so to your point, it's this almost sense where you get to play a little bit of corporate responsibility. Oh, look at us. If something really, really bad happens, we'll stop the game. Now let's overlook the fact that really, 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 really bad. That's not, you know, a hair's breadth away from fatal is not happening every single game. And I'm saying that as a football fan, but I think Uncle Bobby would say that as a football <laughs> fan. It's it's just it's but it's to your point, right? That's that's what we're used to. That's 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 our culture is we let them, you know, clean that one window real shiny and say, "Man, look at look how look how much look how nice they did cleaning up that window." <laughs> Um, yeah, it's crazy. I might take some hate for this, but I, I, I think if I were being honest with myself and with everyone, I don't think I would n not enjoy watching a gladiator fight. I mean, I would be grossed out by it, knowing it would be real, but like there'd be elements to it that would be exciting and thrilling, obviously. Does that mean I think that we should have gladiator fights? No, of course not. So, I mean, I... I, I Sure, sure. I remember I posted on the subreddit when people were talking about that, um, you know, just, just uh, stupid uh, barbary on every level from the the players to the to the fans, and it was a picture of them doing the 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 prayer. They were all praying at the end. Right, so like right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Religious yeah. stupidity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I got a bunch of I got a bunch of down votes, but um, yeah, it's just um. It's yeah, it, exactly. Them doing a little bit of of PR work so that they can continue to allow a sport that that's and that, that kind of reminds me of the movie they did. Didn't didn't Will uh, Smith do a movie uh, called Concussion? Oh, I and don't it know. Did really well. Know. Like made a ton of money. Did really well. Called out the the oh, issue of, of and and then uh, and then people just moved on. Football. Hey, I watched the movie. <laughs> 
Yeah, yeah they were yeah. always like, wow, that was such a great movie. Like, yeah, like now like, yeah. I want to go watch some more football yeah. or something. Like, I, <laughs> uh, low yeah. theater activism. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but you look, and look, uh, again, I'm a sports fan and I have a slightly different take on it, which is I think that's part of human nature, right? And it's just uh, we do our best to keep it organized. And I see that as a deeply deep thing, right? Like, it's almost like, I wouldn't outlaw religion, even if I would hope that people move away from it. I think, you know, I would hope that people move ever more towards safer forms of competition. But I recognize that almost every human society has had a what we consider like a brutal form of male to male competition. And it's deeper than that, right? It's really concerned, right? It's why giraffes have long necks, right? It's so men, the males can beat each other damn near to death with them. It's why elephant seals are so large, right? This is a this is a serious male problem throughout all of nature. Right. right? <laughs> like like blood bass and blood sport is 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 the, the rule of the day. But yeah, yeah, I don't I don't And that's I why we love it, because cause football's like a battle. Yeah, that's it. That's it. It literally is. Yeah, and so yeah, that's that's what they sign up for. But but yeah, it's it, we're definitely on the same page about the uh, the the little bit of good they do to go a long way. And and, and I only picked on them because I was giving churches a break. But that's obviously how we feel about churches with the soup kitchen and the backpack drive and you know, and even those they they typically won't do without. Um, evangelical undertones if not very mm-hmm. explicit evangelism so uh it's 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 almost like paying to play at that point right <laughs> um all right let's uh let's roll some more thanks for thanks for uh giving us the the, the fascism there when it comes to space jesus all i'm saying is i love how we it's an evident space claim jesus. in the text that <laughs> The uh, Elohim, or good angels, uh, have in the past made an earth and have made this earth in terraforming, not ex nihilo magic, blah, blah, blah. They only claim to terraform it, in my view. Um, and well, should and we, they should will we dive into again. the science there? Why? Why is it pseudoscience, I mean? Well, we, we, I mean, we know the earth was not terraformed. Really? Right. Yeah. Because, because we know how it formed. When you say no, so, the, so this is this is this is where a little bit of pseudoscience is getting into it. Okay. When you say no, what do you mean by no? I mean we have scientific knowledge about deep deep time. Positive about the formula, about how planets formed, or how our planet. All right. <laughs> that's 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 the every grifter's move. Well, how do you know that you know anything? It always goes, and this is something that Aaron Ra loves to point out every time, because it happens to him every time he's talking with a, an apologist. All of a sudden, it's well, I, how, what's your basis for knowledge? How do you know any? It always goes to this conversation of of epistemology, which is good because I mean they have bad epistemology and they don't understand good philosophies so it's it's something that, that that theists desperately need to get educated on right but i just love that it's it's the classic grifter move yeah no i think um you're completely right about that and it's um it's kind of infuriating because i i don't think we talk about the emotional abuse that we don't talk about it as gaslighting. Again, it's literally telling us we should not be confident in the most well-established scientific theories we have. I mean, it's like, yeah, we don't know if we have figured out plate tectonics or we don't know if we've like, again, like it's not, it sounds easy for those of us that are not specialists in these fields, but you don't have to be a specialist in these fields. Just understand what they're saying. If what they're saying is true, it just means that the basics of fields like geology, astrobiology, chemistry, fuck, physics, 
biology, like, like it's just saying that it, it, it's all a loosey goosey web, but maybe, <laughs> right? And what you're trying to establish is no, we actually have well documented and supported theories. Not in the, you know, there was somebody in the, there's always people in chat going, well, the theory is just an educated guess, not a scientific theory. And, um, you know, they're, they're just playing this very dangerous game and they're just basically trying to say, well, you know, well, we don't know that this other bullshit isn't impossible. And it's like, at a metaphysical level, maybe, but we do actually have alternatives that are supported, that do hold up, and they're fundamentally misrepresenting that. Um, and I and I think you were you hit it on the head to say no, we know these things, and these are known issues, these are settled questions, and they're shifting this to now be about the limitations of, you know, our knowledge, epistemology, blah, 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 gaslighting. It's, it's just fucking gaslighting. Um, uh, did you have anything you want to add about that, Lena? I'm, I have to think about that because, like, that's, I feel like that's an issue that, that's come up um, just like within the atheist community fairly recently where you started to use that word gaslighting yeah, and, and start too. to identify it all over the place. And I I don't think that that's a problem. I think that it's actually just all over the place. Yeah, me too. <laughs> at, least, at least within our spheres. Yeah, it is. The argument I make for it is is pretty straightforward. If we think about it in terms of, let's just say, a domestic abuse situation, what we get is a very limited set of facts, right? Our friend comes to us and basically tells us a story. This, and, and I'm just going to keep it simple and typical. I'm not trying to encompass all cases, but let's just say this is what he did to me, right? He hit me, you know, I'm having problems at home, whatever it is, right? We're very seldomly going to get more than this person's testimony, if we're lucky, and by lucky I mean from an evidence perspective, not from a moral perspective, maybe there's some marks, bumps and bruises, injuries, right? That's not good, but it certainly helps you say, yeah, there's, there's a there there, right? Um, maybe you've observed this couple together and you've, maybe you've seen some problematic behavior. But let's be real, a lot of times none of those things are happening. And a lot of times, you know, especially systematic abusers are really careful of that shit. So they've manipulated the social impression of this couple's relationship such that nobody suspects that this person is abusive, right? Um, and they you know, uh, only physically, you know, do things that are very, that don't leave bruises. It's not like they're punching the person in the face or whatever like that. And so all we're ever going to get is a story because we're not flies on the walls. We don't have cameras in the room when mm -hmm. these things happen. Nevertheless. So do you think both? Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, nevertheless, well, we consider a form of gaslighting to consider consider, you know, to challenge this person's reality or tell them maybe this isn't happening or, you know, the person loves them and they, they shouldn't, you know, all this type of stuff. And again, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that we wouldn't withhold legal or whatever judgment, but nevertheless, we recognize that when we talk about gaslighting, we're talking about having a person doubting their own reality when they're presenting a reasonable set of facts so that they can relay their experience. And if, it's gaslighting when we've only got a person's story, their ex lived experience, and a couple of facts, then it has to be gaslighting when you're telling me to doubt the most well-established scientific theories with, you know, literally every piece of experimental evidence and research consistently being 
consistent with these things. When you tell me to doubt that, it, I mean, it just has to be gaslighting at that point, like nuclear gaslighting. Almost gaslighting is a too, too much of an understatement at that point. Mm. The question I was going to ask was, do you think it, do you think in both situations it's stemming from the same underlying problem of um, like insecurity or um, cause, cause I mean, you know, abusers, I think in most cases themselves, you know, it's, it's a, as a result of some, um, faulty you know defense mechanism or it's, it's just it's like the learned behavior that yeah and a complete inability they were taught or yeah and and also a, a, a status you can't accept you know it's it's um just like uh, you, you know the cognitive dissonance is at some level a result of a person genuinely you know feeling like they can't possibly be wrong about this when in, when they when everything in fact, points to that they are. Um, I think it's it's the same thing where, you know, everybody knows victims of abuse, but very few people know someone who identifies as an abuser, and it's certainly difficult to identify an abuser in the mirror, right? Do you think it would contribute to a better outcome if we had a more tolerant space for abusers to, to come out. Okay. Uh, yeah, I thought so. I thought that, that would be, yeah, that because... seems to be consistent. it seems like if you wanted to deal with abusers, you want them to go to therapy. You want them to be, uh, you know, rehabilitated and, and have a clear path back to good social standing and, yeah. And, um, and also it's a yeah. sense of, um, it's really interesting. So like I was around, uh, you know, Penn State when we had the Sandusky scandal and Michigan State when we had the issue with the uh, women's uh, gymnastics coach, Nasser. So Nasser and Sandusky, uh, I guess I'm the common variable. I always joke. But uh, the, the thing with um, those things was I remember when the Sandusky happened, thing happened, we were in this, you know, I was doing research in an anthropology lab that studied the evolution of human sexuality. So we were in this uh, listserv called SexNet, which is a, it's like a, you know, listserv for sex researchers, basically. And, uh, and the one thing that's really interesting about sex researchers, especially with human, with regard to human sexuality is... Um, people tend to research, um, like kind of based on their identity, obviously that drives a lot of their interest, right? I was, when I was young and single, I was interested in courtship and, <laughs> you know, like making that my field of study and, uh, you know, a disproportionate amount of the people who research LGBT issues or LGBT and stuff like that. Right. And so some of the people who study pedophilia came out and, and talked about having that uh, identity, that they identified as pedophiles, but because they were able to, you know, get treatment and, and therapy and, and, and in some cases, you know, whatever else is, is part of that, uh, addressing that, that psych, those psychiatric needs, at least the claim is that they were not harming individuals, right? But that a big part of that was needing that treatment and acceptance because it's in some sense for them like an orientation, right? Certainly not a preference they would choose. Um, and and then of course the the you know the, the abuse and stuff like that being a separate issue. But yeah, you, you have to, and it's and it's a big part of two of like. Um, sort of uh, paths back to, you know, decrim uh, uh, like ex expungement, you know, like people have a record, they do their time, their record either needs to be expunged or people needs to be sealed so that they can get uh, jobs and education opportunities and stuff like that. Of course, that needs to be weighed against uh, the public safety, especially in the case of severe offenders and repeat offenders, 
but I think we've always been way too harsh with those things, and so people can't move forward with, with their lives, which we all know uh, leads to recidivism and, and worse problems. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tough deal. It's not a popular thing to talk about. But, yeah, I think, uh, and, and, I, and I tend to also err on the side of it's not my business. I know we live in a culture with a ton of fear-mongering. But, you know, with few exceptions, my neighbor's past is none of my business. Um, just like my past is none of my neighbor's business. Um, so... Uh, I, I support most of those efforts. And yeah, I have a record, so I kind of need to. But, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so it's a unique struggle, I feel like, for for our community and, um, you know, atheism. And, and Yeah, I think we bear both burdens. And by that, I mean, um, as secular people who are pushing back against the traditional conservative religious narratives that victimize so many of our people, right? They victimize people based on race and gender and LGBT and poor people and um, all of that stuff. So we're the, by definition, like the defenders of the victims, right? We're the people who like, no, we have to stand up for women. We have to stand up for LGBT. We have to stand up for kids. We have to stand up for poor people, right? All this stuff. Um, but then at the same time, we have the burden of, you know, bearing sort of the sociological realities of these things and, you know, not being able to cast people off as, you know, having committed unforgivable sins because we know that there's, there's systematic, you know, forces that produce these things. And we also feel the burden of, you know, pro making progress in, in the rehabilitative side of things. So that's, I think yeah. that's what we deal with. It's like, we've got to stick up for the victims. And then at the same time, we have to put checks and balances on how much we allow our empathy and sympathy for victims to um, become too much of a burden on offenders, right? So it's tough. Yeah. It's not easy. It's it somewhat ironically speaks to the, um, the the reason why the Jesus narrative is so, so popular is because he hangs out with the sinners, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, absolutely. And he's like got this un unconditional love vibe, um, right. and I think we need that in, in our arsenal. I think again that that should be part of the spectrum of approach. But that brings us, and, uh, and again, I don't know if you're on the one side, but you're you know wherever yeah, 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 we yeah, land on the spectrum, I think it's good to have both sure, sides. On, on sure, sure. But that's kind of what we were talking about earlier is that that then becomes a thing that gets weaponized. Matter of fact, that's what I was thinking in the shower earlier is I feel like a lot of the people we deal with, what they're really, what I really feel like they're taking advantage of is the members of our community who lean towards the kill them with kindness. And so, and that's kind of, again, a tough balance. Like, like with a Lupin or a Richard Madsen or something like that. It's like, I want to, I want to take a hard line with these people because I think they really need the pushback and the blowback. You can't keep, you know, yes, you get further with honey than with vinegar and yes, positive reinforcement is, uh, not only I think better than negative reinforcement morally, but I think it's more effective, but it's dot, 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 except when it isn't right. <laughs> and then, and, and when somebody is taking advantage of that, then you've got to take a different tack. Now where I'm going with this is as soon as somebody like a loop and switches up, let's just hypothetically say he would, if he switches up, holy crap, I realize maybe Ken Hovind isn't, um, you know, the, the best person to be a disciple of. I realize maybe insurrectionist ass Donald Trump isn't the greatest president ever. I can accept evolution and I'm a little disoriented right now. You know, I want us to be like, yo, man, we know this is hard. We've been there. 
bro, no harm done. We we know you're 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 trying to be a good guy. We've all been there. None of us is better than you are, bro. We're trying to be a community. Uh, Lena and Cameron love to play COD. If you need some new Call of Duty friends, you see what I'm saying? Like we're trying to hold people accountable, but at the same time, if they really do, I hate to say, repent. And by that I mean change your ways, not not beg for our forgiveness, but literally change your ways. Then I think we again we bear the burden of redemption and second chances and all of that. Yeah, this is something that I've heard Vosh talk about a lot, um, as part of why the right is doing better than the left in a lot of regards, which is that, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the left demands change. We demand. Uh, Ironically, more personal improvement than the than the conservatives who have Correct. their their Correct. motivational right kind of service level become a crypto bro, right, <laughs> or 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 get on your gig hustle right right. But um, oh, I, I lost my point. Yeah, but that's, that's oh yeah, the, just, the, just the struggle. We're losing the message right. to the incels. Yeah, and it, it's a um, it's a struggle with the left to be welcoming and forgiving. Um, yeah, and I, I'm not sure what the right approach is. A hundred percent. One thing I was just gonna um, add there is that because because I I agree with all that. The problem, as I see it, is that the way, even the way I just spit it, I really do demand change first. And that's the problem I see in our community is that we treat people to me. And I'm not saying we have to be mean. I'm not saying we have to be mean. But I think we have well, to I be bad. honest and fair. And then once we see the change, you reward the change, right? You don't, you don't say good boy yeah. or good dog until they sit. You sit first, then you get the treat, right? If you, if you give them a mm-hmm. treat and then say sit, they ain't never going to learn how to sit. They're going to take the treat and run off every single time. <laughs> so you yeah. learn, you sit first. Then you get the treat, right? And that's the thing I'm trying to say. Like, I am totally willing to show people grace, but I need the repentance first. Um, I've been in that own situation, y'all. Some of the some of the things I've been locked up for were not victimless crimes. Let's put it that way. Um, one of the things I'm most thankful for is the forgiveness of people I've hurt in the past, right? But I had to go through some shit. I had to deal with the consequences of, uh, let's just say, the maturing I needed to do at the time. Um, and then after dealt with some consequences, dealt with some real ass accountability, then had to genuinely try to make amends before a person can really receive that. Right. Um, so I think that this is fundamental to relationships and, and if we're not going to be in sort of manipulative, unhealthy social dynamics with our interlocutors, we have to be the same way because this is what happens is you have a person, let's just take it away from Richard Madsen for a second and say like a, a Rebecca Davis or, or even a bigger apologist like a William Lane Craig or a Jordan Peterson and what happens? They're fundamentally dishonest people. They fundamentally misrepresent things. They fundamentally misrepresent science and philosophy in their fields. And what is everybody saying to them? Oh, you're so brilliant. Oh, we're so glad you're here. We missed you. Thank you. We love you. You're the best. Oh, you're so smart. You're so much smarter than everybody. Like that, that is not sending them the right signal. So you're then allowing somebody like Rebecca to get away with championing science, literally flying. Like, I love science. I'm pro. All I, all I think about is science. And then get up here and say, but I don't believe in evolution, old earth, the big bang. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that, Lena? I hear you. Sorry, I started munching on my snacks. Real oh, quick. no, no. You're good. You're good. Uh, matter of fact, speaking of snacks, um, it's fight night, so I'm going to get into this Uncle Bobby fight with Ben Rothwell. 
Then um, after that fight, uh, so I'm gonna, it'll only take a few minutes, and then um, we're going to go back to Lena's uh, appearance on Richard Madsen, and when we do that, I'll step into the kitchen and uh, start cooking myself some dinner. Um, but yeah, all right, fight night, let's go. Sounds like a plan. Yeah, this is fun. It's fun. It's fun weekend. Oh, man. Although I don't hear it. Do I have it muted? No, I don't, it doesn't have any uh, sound right now. Well, in a second. Um, oh, gotcha. I think. Yeah, there you Did go. Did you see the chat? They're talking about McCarthy. Oh, he just got voted speaker. <laughs> yeah. Um, they said that's a few minutes. Look, let me do this real quick. Uh, I'm sure we can find something on it. Give me a sec. Uh, Get some Ackerman on it. Got some. Not in a rush today. We can. Uh, no, nah, he might not have already. Improvise uh, a little bit. Maybe Vosh is doing a live stream on it. Uh, looks like Midas Touch, maybe. Oh, yeah, Midas Touch is a great channel. I should put that in the, um, yeah, in the really Discord good. for everybody. You're out. We're taking you out. And then you would have this exact same process. Government would shut down and our economy will go into a free fall. There are so many positive things that have been taking place right. with our economy that have been announced. Uh, an epic jobs report, um, 223,000 jobs in December, beating expectations, 3.5% unemployment, the lowest rate in 50 years, 4.5 million jobs in 2022, one of the best years ever, only behind 2021. The Wall Street Journal of all places said inflation in the second half of the year has run vastly lower than in the first half, in fact, and this is astonishing, it's almost down to the Federal Reserve's 2% target. Even more astonishing, hardly anyone seems to have noticed. And so you have all of these positive developments that you're looking at with the economy. Things are actually going well. Could yeah, go McCarthy better? will yes. have almost no power Democrats for a speaker. Democrats actually working. I mean, for the literally, I don't know. Government. I don't you know what the deal got down to, but literally, at one point, it was like. They were trying to, now it was like five people. It takes five people to vote no confidence in him. It might be down the line now. That's what he was trying to get it down to. I mean, yeah. Absolutely no power whatsoever. Literally, by definition, the, the weakest speakership ever. And Lena, the other thing is they're not going to do anything like it's like, oh, now they can get to work, uh, you know, so we, we can expect to see the Hunter Biden's laptop investigation and, you know, all this other nonsense. All right, up next, it's a UFC uh, but all right, I'm going to mute real quick uh, while the fight's going on. Just because I think Lena's typing and stuff. All right. Ben Rothwell, baby, contender down. time. And then we'll get back to Lena's appearance on Richard Madsen's channel. I actually think this whole thing, uh, just quickly while this is happening, I think this whole thing's really important because, you know, like Rebecca, um, it, it, it really does take more of a community level approach not only to potentially have influence on these communities and other channels, but also even for the community to get a full perspective on it. Because sometimes, you know, we all have different breaking points with people. So it's really important that uh, we see different people go through it. So I'm actually loving that. All right, here we go. Uncle Bobby Town.
So much fun. For this heavyweight fight. Four years apart, and they both possess a similar height and reach. And with the official introductions, here is the veteran voice of the Octagon, Bruce Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is three rounds in the UFC heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting at the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist, holding a professional record of 43 wins, 19 losses. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 265 pounds. Fighting! Out of Kenosha, Wisconsin, Ben Lockwood! And now introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, a Muay Thai kickboxer and jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 27 wins, three losses. He stands six feet five inches tall, weighing in at 255 pounds, fighting out of Austin, Texas, Robert. <laughs> and when the action begins, our referee in charge of the octagon is Dan Mergliata. Dan Mergliata, your referee. You ready? All right, let's go. This man's gonna want to stand and bang. We'll see if we can make him regret it. Right, so here he is, ready for round one. This man is all the rage, given what he did his last time out. It was a win by plus knockout. Now he'll try to keep the momentum going as the challenges get more difficult. You win in the UFC, nine times out of 10, the next opponent is decidedly better. That is certainly the case here tonight. Close guard, left punch is true. Well, any time you are in a ground fighting situation. Right now, it looks like he may be trying to set up his arm triangle choke. He needs to secure the left arm, push it across, and secure it with his head. Watch triangle, watch triangle. He needs to push the arm to the side, get his head against the mat. Now watch, as he goes to the finish, watch his chest go to the mat. And this might just be a matter of time. Uncle Bobby does not get paid by the hour. Let's go. That's it. That's it. <laughs> it's over. He's done. He's done. <laughs> He's choked out. Arm triangle. To straight power. Look, look. Football. Texas does linebackers. That's all linebacker moves. His football instincts come in, takes him to the ground. The improved wrestling. No, we're not wasting any time. Just just choke him out. No, we're done. We're done. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. Good night. Good night. That gets you lost in it. Uncle and Bobby is this man's melatonin. Look at him. Look at so him. Just, just put a pillow under him. Tonight, and that is how you put the rest of the division on notice. A huge oh, that was impressive. That Ladies was impressive. The people just want to dance. The people just want to people just wanna dance. <laughs> He's angry, bro. It can't be good for you to get choked out like that. Nope. <laughs> That's got to do some brain damage. Not for me. <laughs> <laughs> No, actually, you know what? I think it's like, it's a good thing to look into it, actually. I'd actually be curious. But I certainly well, it's think a it safe, it's a safe way to bad. It's a safer way to take someone down than, you know, kicking or punching them, right? Yeah. Like, it's I mean, actually, if you're a skilled, um, I, I wouldn't recommend anyone doing it if you are skilled. And that's, like, self-defense, because you can get in trouble for that, even still. Right, right. Um, you shouldn't choke them out. You should just hold them down for, like, oh, two Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Yeah, just let them sit there and wait, and they'll calm down. Yeah, restraint, um, restraint, just restraint. Yeah, just yeah, hold yeah. them. Just hold them. But, um, but uh, from what my stepdad, I remember talking about it, I think in both cases, it's kind of like, it is like going to sleep. Like, it, it, you certainly can, you know, like, for instance, I think if somebody gets a concussion from getting a kick in the head, right, it's it's the the traumatic kick right it's the the impact it's like a traumatic brain injury but basically the human body is is meant to get your lights shut off without too much damage now you put a person sleep they're out they go to sleep they wake up they're they're all right but that's but yeah there's no safe way to do it because of the but yeah i just think there's a difference between the impact and the totally and the you know the the putting to sleep or whatever effect I'll take um, losing a, a few brain cells due to oxygen loss. Right, right. That's what, yeah, yeah. That's the that's the uh, thing. Yeah, it's like the temporary shot, oxygen yeah. deprivation, <laughs> and you're you know you're you you're relatively resilient to to that as long as it Versus isn't concussion. severe. Right. Um, right. Versus the concussion. But um, yeah, that's that's something I'd be really interested about, and I'm sure there's probably good YouTube videos because I'm sure there's there's like fight doctor people who like break that type of stuff down. Uh, yeah, I can recommend. It's got to be safer to uh, to go out uh, be a submission than a uh, separate. Yeah, yeah, it seems yeah, like it has to be. I mean, I don't well, know I that. Mean... I mean but it's got to be. I mean, my cell is, I love you all so much. I'm so appreciative and grateful for each and every Did y'all see one of you. McCarthy I can't tell you how much you all are. Yeah, yeah, you finally this work got the, each got and the votes. And the king got the and subscribe. Sure. Until next time, I'm Ben Micellis. He basically just got a gavel. All right, um, I'm going to be back in a few minutes. I need to just get my uh, dinner started, and what I'll do is I'll play... Uh, the video, it should be at a safe level where if Lena or Joel says anything, you should be able to hear them. But yeah, I'll let it play for a little bit and I'll be back in a few oh, minutes. Yeah, Lena, last time I, I, when I left this off, uh, Richard was saying that um, he, his prophecy about words, uh, Hebrew words that uh, didn't have a definition, I came into work laughing after I heard that. I mean, he said that there are Hebrew words in the Bible that had no definition. And that he defined them two thousand years later. That's so absurd. Yeah, I, I, there's a lot of moments where I just kind of let him. Yeah, there's so I and I just like, say his I mean, weird thing. That's, that's, <laughs> there's a word. There's a word that that has no definition. Yet they used it. They used a word that has no definition so that he can define it three thousand or four thousand years later. That's like me putting and so that, and he can define it in the context of the sentence. It's like me saying uh, Joel runs to X, and you can put anything in there. He can define it as anything. And so, you know, mm -hmm. it makes no sense whatsoever. I can literally walk into work laughing after I've heard that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, let's sure. play this. All right. Planet formed specifically about how the moon formed. Okay. So, no, when, when, did, I in that when did I mention the, When did I mention the formation of the planet? You said it was terraform. Right. What's terraforming? Usually it means like completely reshaping the landscapes. Changing the, right. the, Add, the topography. Yeah. Adding stuff to it to change an existent planet. So you can let go of the idea of um, me trying to say that this planet was created, the planet itself was created. I'm not trying to say that. No, no, no. you said it was terraformed, and, and I'm saying yes. That's that goes against our scientific understanding. I I don't think it does. That, that's like that's demonstrably false. I I don't think it is demonstrably false, uh, and here's why I don't think that's true. And at the very um, least, it's not demonstrably true. I'm talking about plausibility and consistence with reality without stretching physics. And, and I'm talking about science and pseudoscience. So what, 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 what you just said, it being plausible and, and within the limits of science, yeah, that's all pseudoscience. Uh, okay. Um, 
right? When I was a when I was a child, I was told there was Santa Claus. And there was evidence all around me once a year for about 2 weeks that there was Santa Claus. No, that's not evidence. And no, evidence is ex- is um exclusively concordant with and indicative of only one available explanation over all others. So there was never evidence of Santa. You just weren't, I mean, most kids aren't scientifically, you know, well, uh, you, you have to, you have to look at it from a child's perspective. I mean, as a child, you it go to bed, you, you, you don't think your parents are lying to you. you. You you go to bed. There's a certain amount of presence under the tree. You That's wake fine. up the next yeah. morning and there to you as a child, that is evidence of Santa's existence. Like when I told my, right. my daughter that Santa didn't exist, she was crushed. Oh, like, I get crushed. That. I, I get That's that, sweet. and I'm saying that scientifically there is no evidence of Santa Claus. Yeah, but if I could finish the idea, you might be able to critique it. Go ahead. Thank you. So, unless a person says something like, science is complete, then they can't say we know all things. Which is not an appeal to ignorance, it's just that our science is very young. Totally acceptable. It's okay. We're going to learn more later. I'm sure of it. Okay? Yes. But if you say something like, science shows that it's a fact that this planet was not terraformed, what you're saying simultaneously is someone, some society, which may have finished their science, it might be complete, couldn't make this environment and it wouldn't work naturally, and we have to be right. Huh? I don't think that's what I'm claiming. Did, did anyone yeah. follow you that? To, I, I got confused um, at this point. You have point. to assume that what we see was, evidentially was not intelligently interfered with. You have to assume that. And I don't think you could show that. It's not an assumption. It, it's, it's There is no evidence of, <laughs> of extraterrestrials terraforming the planet. Let me try to put this in perspective. It's like, do, the, do the ants know they're in an ant farm? No. The, the ones it. in an ant farm, no. Yeah, we're ants. Right, but you, but but if you want to claim that we're in an ant farm, you have to actually demonstrate it. You don't just get to say that. Oh, well, it could be possible. Th- Would this you is like what some hard evidence do. for that? Would you like some hard <laughs> evidence for that? Yeah. Go to Google. Go to Google Earth. And and get I don't know. This is where Jay would stop the immediately about that. For, I mean, this is for a providing Google Google Earth as evidence. Yeah, come on. Then look for rings of mountain range. Then look for ming- rings of mountain ranges. Okay, there are like, rings on, this is not of how mountain ranges. Science works. Just like pebbles dropped onto a pond. You can have wave interference and overlaps, and sometimes one wave destroys another. You're going to see these sometimes overlapping, sometimes not overlapping rings of mountains. Sometimes one wall of the ring is knocked out, or a lot of the wall of the ring is knocked out, but there's always some kind of a shape of a ring. Sometimes the rings are really long and extended, you know, like like a stretch circle. And sometimes they're really, really circular, but they're always some kind of ring. And what you'll find on the inside of that ring, every time, every time, I'm, I'm Googling some really hard rock face that sticks up. I'm rock, Googling mountain ring the Rocky Mountains formations like right now, and all I'm getting what is you're going like to find is there's a repeating triangular pattern on arches. the inside of the ring where you'll have like four, and then above that three, then above that two, and then above that one. In fact, our brains don't even like it when someone paints a mountain and it doesn't have that repeating triangular pattern. We really don't like it. We go, that's a crappy mountain. Why? Because it doesn't have the triangles. That's why. And then on the outside of the rings, you'll see a gradual slope. About? That gradual slope does not have that repeating triangle pattern. Now, if you could just explain to me. I don't know what he's talking about. Uh, since these are not 
all of them on uh, any kind of a fault line or, uh, uh, you know, between tectonic plates or anything like that. They're just friggin' everywhere. If you can explain to me why the inside of the ring consistently uh, has that repeating triangle pattern and then the outside of that ring doesn't, oh, when wow. they should have received pretty no, much the same the, weathering. If you can show me why that triangle pattern it, is not on this side, but it is on this side, and you can make sense of that, then I'll dismiss the evidence that says there was hypersonic wind on this planet, and mostly Again, it was going I don't know down what the hell and I'm outward. Talking about. <laughs> we can make hypersonic wind in a laboratory nice. repeat that triangular pattern every day of the week, anytime, no problem. In really hard stuff, what has he done that? if there's enough loose aggregates, it just naturally forms that. Um, but you need hypersonic air movement, and, and the size of these rings are such that there's no... There's absolutely no mechanism on this planet to kind to cause that kind of air movement. Now, this is going to sound crazy. All that was scientific. This is going to sound crazy to you. What if the air was dumped here on purpose? That would explain it. You know, we have no theory. None. It would explain it. Do, do you know that this is science? Or What's do that? you think that this actually is science? Do you think that you're engaging in, like, reasonable science right now? When you say okay. things like, well, we couldn't, we don't know how it happened. Well, we do know a way to cause so that's that. evidence. We Where do, it's not ignorance. We do know a way to cause that. The problem is the scale of it. We can do it on really small scales. Right? We can make it happen. It's easy to make it happen. And it's evidently what happens only with and with no other, no other materials other than extremely fast moving gases. Only extremely fast moving gases with aggregate pickup is going to cause that I, effect. I Nothing no else idea. does. And go to Google anyway, Earth and look. I'm not I'm not pulling your leg. It's all over the go planet. To Google. How am I supposed to, I, It's I so weird that I have to, to like I go have to a feeling that's not relevant to the to the <laughs> That's uh, convenient for you. contentious claim that you're making. No, I that's I mean it it, well, it is convenient. Yeah. Because it, here's why it's Well, not then don't relevant. look. I, I No, I, I'm saying I could grant you that. I could grant you the, that these these patterns exist. I could even grant you that the only plausible explanation is what did you call it? supersonic winds yes well it has to be some kind of that's, gas movement i wouldn't call them winds exactly yeah that's still not evidence of of terraforming that's that's not it's just not okay so is there something wrong here an incomplete uh, investigation we don't have all the facts we don't have all the evidence we don't we have, do have all the you we do have all the facts we do have all the evidence so where's your Nobel Prize? It, I mean, it's on the surface. Don't be sarcastic with me. Well, so I mean, but I'm I'm being it's a it's a sarcastic question that leads into a serious. Do you think uh, I'm a geologist? So so which geologists are pushing this? Who 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 in the pushing academic what? field? This theory of of uh, extraterrestrial or just of, of you, some sort of intelligent entities terraforming the planet. Right. None and, that I know of. That would be is, is outside there any of their. Research, that would what, be outside of their realm. Of, look into. That's fine. Is there research into uh, hypersonic winds and and yes and the is there evidence into these structures and what kind of what what yes. sorts of natural phenomenon could produce these structures? When, and, I just and told you all that. Through them all. And and who, I just I just told you all this. Right, and who's concluded that? that we've ruled out all these other explanations and it had to be an, uh, a, an intelligent species or something. Okay, first of all, it doesn't have to be an intelligent species. However, we see this in reality. We know how to repeat it in a laboratory on small scales. We, we do not know of a mechanism yeah, on this earth repeating in, it. in the history of this earth yeah, it's which could bizarre. cause that kind of air movement that consistently that that many times in that many pockets I mean, I guess without climate, destroying the planet. Maybe being a climate expert would be the relevant field of And there is no theory science. on it. 
uh, geologist. Is there like a, 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 a name that I could uh, Google search? There is no theory on, on it. Well, then why is he claiming sort of to know it was terrifying? Because <laughs> I like, have, have scary tales. I've never gone through this. He matches I've never heard of anyone he talking about him. this at, at the. Yeah, he's got his, pre, his pre concluded exactly. I, he already believes the Bible. Find there is no workable theory to explain it. And he and he's got to come up with with gaps in our scientific knowledge that that seem to indicate uh -huh. aliens. When, when you're ready, I, I don't know. No geologist. No geologist. Um, well, I, I just something that you said earlier. You know, which is, uh, which I, I, I just kind of almost. I'm, I'm kind of bummed Jay's missing this part because I feel like this sure is uh, correct. something that Jay would be able to easily saying, jump in on. Uh, just this idea of scientific certainty where evidence is only going to point to one theory. I, I don't I think, think that's a realistic view at all for any science. In fact, I think it's got a name. The definition. Evidence is you, exclusively you concordant with and uh, single theory, solely yeah. indicative of. You disagree that with that definition of evidence? I, I don't think that any scientific theory is going to meet that criteria. Well, I think theory is broader than... So theory contains the facts and evidence, right? So but theory right, is like that, a, a collection, a body of knowledge. You start you understand the critique that I'm making is when you made that claim right I don't think that that is realistic in science so you don't think that scientific evidence means that it's exclusive and coordinate with one available uh, explanation over any, any others well not over any others but exclusively only one is the claim you Jay, I hate to say, but Elena, think, read the read the, read the chat and gather. I'm not missing it. I can oh, hear. Okay. It. I just said I'm cooking. Oh, you hear? So, me? Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad, my bad. Just, and it, it, <laughs> and again, these guys do this shit for three hours, right? So I'm just being honest with you guys. Part of what I'm learning this year is they're doing a lot more long format format content, and you got to remember, we can go three hours on a ten minute video. So when they do three hours, we have to do this thing where we <laughs> let them go for long stretches of time or else there's just no way to get through it. Yeah. Just absolutely no way to get through it. Uh, but yeah, he's fundamentally misrepresenting the fact that we have these explanations and what he's arguing for isn't consistent with any of them. And it's not the same as, oh, we don't know. Like literally what he's suggesting isn't plausible with our current ideas and this idea of or with our current understanding of the world and this idea of well where the ants who don't again there's no reason to believe this um i'm wondering did he find someone that that was teaching him this niche idea or is this something he came up with that kind of already fits his his uh, preformed so theology, chat can, like, chat can you guys speculate <laughs> on where he gets this stuff from what is his source i haven't is? watched enough and i don't know T to me his stuff sounds like Rialian fucking nonsense um <laughs> i i don't know where that's a good question i would like to know this where where um if somebody I'm has honestly. another conversation with him they can maybe ask him um, yeah, it would have been a good question to ask. Missed but, but see, my thing is he doesn't... But listen, no academic is... He's not consistent in any field. And this is why... And this is what I mean about him being the epitome of the problem. When Rob talks about this, is why you have to understand the philosophy of academic fields. Hey, it's man. like there are constraints. This makes sense! And when you don't... You got to remember, he, he, he wants to say at one time, he wants to say, I'm not in any field. I have no credentials. I've accomplished nothing academically. He then wants to turn around and say, I'm at the top of my field. I'm the best in my field. I understand this shit so well, I've outsmarted everybody. And you can't have both. And, and this is the problem because 
he's speculating in philosophy. Well, he's he's taking. He's right. He's speculating about astrobiology, completely unrestrained, speculating about all of this stuff, and he has no credibility in any of these fields, and none of this stuff is credible. Like, yeah, so, it's total house of cards. There's ahead, no man. pushback from none. any peers. There's no pushback from any peers in those fields. So, yeah, exactly. Because exactly. they, they don't even, they, because the, the truth is, nobody in these fields even knows Richard Madsen exists. Or, or or aware of his theories, and again, if you mentioned it or summarized them to anybody, they they just laugh in out the room, and they would be like, "There's no way I'm even bothering." There's no because there's just no way anybody, nobody. They're literally going to tell it's you nobody well believes in space. Yeah, they're going to tell you nobody believes in space. Jesus, I'll see you later. And that's yeah, yeah, and that's why Lena, when he said where, uh, when you said um, where's your Nobel Prize, you weren't being a smart ass. You were like, you know. Right, Literally, you would you know, have earned you know, one. Where, if this where was true. Peers pushing back on this, yeah, you know, yes. where, where is the proof? Back? Where's, where's the, the, uh, yeah. the proof? Where you, you? And where trust you? me, you're getting a Nobel Prize, or or <laughs> he'd be like he'd be like, sorry, I don't have the Nobel yeah. Prize, but you'd have some top of your field award if you discovered that everybody has been misreading the Bible for thousands of years. Yeah, it's a red flag. My BS detector is going off. Absolutely. I don't see uh, credible scientific support. And again, I just want, I, I'm going to go back to cooking, but before I play, I want to I wanna make something really clear because I don't want people to think that as a scholar, I'm shitting on people who don't have PhDs. I could not care less. Again, I have one PhD or a dual PhD or whatever it is, but my point is I have one specialty in, in like everybody else does. The difference is when you want to critique all of these fields and you want to argue against the consensus of entire disciplines, yeah, then you need to have your, your, your ducks in a row, right? Um, I'm, I'm entitled to my opinion on football, and it's of no consequence. But if I'm going to start to tell people like Uncle Bobby, he doesn't know what a nine technique is, I'm going to have a problem. If I try to tell Coach Andy Reid, he doesn't know how to, how to run a, a run-and-gun offense, I better have my shit together. Um, and so you guys don't need specialty or expertise or to go read a fucking geology textbook because you don't have a YouTube channel where you're trying to convince people that these things aren't true. Um. So, again, he just deserves this. He's, he's asked for it. I'm sorry. Mate. All right, I'll be right back. He's over yeah, that's, numbers, that's what I believe the definition of scientific evidence means. What it means right. to be that's, evidence that's of something correct. is to be exclusively concordant with and um, indicative of one hypothesis over any other hypotheses. Right. Okay, I have to I, interrupt just real quickly. Lena... Simus Funk is extremely purposeful in every word that he uses. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so th I don't think that that's true. <laughs> Not even that guy again, it. I, I just I would just point you in this direction to look up um, mm -hmm. Quine uh, and scientific underdetermination. Okay, you say Which Quine basically says that any evidence, any scientific evidence for a theory, all right is not going to be exclusive to that particular theory. There are going to be a number of theories, given the chance that there could be further evidence uh, that um, it, con it concurs with. And that's not to dismiss scientific evidence, right? It's just literally a... I a, think a I can agree with you. ...logical point. Go ahead. That it's not going to... Yeah, maybe, maybe the word exclusive is really idealistic. Right, that we want yeah, it to be it. as exclusive. No, I stand by my definition. With one available explanation over all others. Obviously, there's yeah. going to be other hypotheses. Right, you could take a hypothesis and you could slightly change it, sure. and then there's the the same evidence will apply to both hypotheses. My right. my argument is that one of those hypotheses is going to the whole be point of science better than is to find the best one. The other. Well, that might the whole that point. according might to the that. according to the the. Right. Uh, 
the operational criteria of science, the, its applicability, its um, explanatory efficiency, uh, its coherence, right? Sure, we would generally prefer one, if at all possible. But, you know, the, the f basic philosophy of science is going to say it isn't possible just to have one. However, uh, given such things as, um, you know, eff efficacy, then... Uh, well, there always will be one best hypothesis. It's just impossible to no, know which one's the best. No, no. That, again, that's just a claim we can't... If we can't know it, we can't say that that's necessarily the case, can we? So th that's a self-refuting statement. No, no, no. I'm, no, I'm, not, it, I'm we, just... I'm just we, quite, no, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. I don't want to discuss it because it is a, an in-depth subject as it is. You're not far wrong, okay? Oddly but plausible. But it's just the way you actually said the statement to Richard, right, wasn't very, um, uh, just wasn't very accurate. Okay? I hear it's, that. It's broadly yeah. right, but just, you can't say that it's only going to work with one hypothesis. There are going to be many hypotheses for which that evidence works, right? And so when, when Richard is talking about things like Santa, right, it's logically possible, right? It's logically possible, not scientifically possible, but it's logically possible. There's no contradiction entailed. Let's in take the a real world example. Say again. Let, let's take let's take a real world example. Let's take evolution, sure. right? Okay. Um, yeah. So so uh, the evidence that we have of, of yeah. um, you know fossils, biology, right? All all these relevant fields. Sure. I would say that they're exclusively concordant with the theory of evolution by natural selection and other methods. You know, At this point, yes. Um, sure. Over, I over creationism yeah. or any of these other, you know, popular hypotheses, right? Yeah, it's now, we can know. say that within evolution, there's different mm -hmm. hypotheses. But w would exactly. you agree that for for this case, the there is a... The best hypothesis that is exclusively concordant with the give it facts. to me midnight no there isn't one i don't know of any other theory of biodiversity but, right it is exclusively concordant with evolution well i mean no science no, changes because, as well no because you're not defining what evolution is right that's that's a problem okay and, and all i'm saying is look we may have you know we have certain theories which are as good as given, right? To, they're to the nth degree. And it is well defined. Uh, perfect, right? They, they like uh, quantum mechanics, general relativity. These Very well defined. To the nth degree. And physics is amongst the most solid of the sciences, okay? Mm -hmm. But they're not mathematics, right? It's not like two and two is four, okay? So, yeah. we, you know, we know something is wrong, even in the most solid of our scientific theories. Okay, so what what does that say? It says that there's probably going to be another one further down the line that we don't know of right now, right? That is going to better <coughs> explain the data that's given. That's the hope. That's the hope. Okay. Yeah, that's the requirement. That's, that's the that's, no. That's the that's requirement. It has to. Of, hang on, hang on. And that is part of science. I'm saying, okay. And and therefore, when you say it's exclusive to this one theory, that that's. Scientist, scientist doesn't do that. Scientist hopes there is a better theory down the line. Well, I think when that I'm paradigm shift happens baby, Kristen, in the good. future, well, if it happens, fighting. it will be because all of a sudden the evidence will be exclusively concordant with one theory over the other, and then the paradigm shift will happen. When there's a situation right. in which and, two competing okay. hypothesis, hypotheses share the same evidential support, and um or sorry share the same factual support you can't say that the, that the there's evidence for one over the other right because the the both uh hypotheses are supported by the facts the the tiebreaker that the time at which one theory is going to be favored over the other mm -hmm. is going to be the point at which we've determined that one is exclusively concordant with uh, okay. the evidence overall. I think you guys are close enough to agree. Maybe, maybe that's the keyword I missed. No, no. Yeah, I think that was the keyword I missed, is over all others. You, I did not that, That's that. the keyword. It's not just that there's one theory. It's that it has to be better than all the other no. theories. No, no, no. Because, no, maybe over all others that are currently known. 
maybe yes. you could get away uh, yes. with that, right? Yes. Maybe. Yes. But that doesn't work in physics so well because we have a lot of theories which are just theories. They're not even to the point of... Uh, they're just hypotheses. You know, they're, just, they're just hypotheses at the moment, right? Right, right, right. So, right. therefore, we're not going so to... Know. evidence. And, and right, so the there's... Issue. Yeah. So, so the issue is there are going to be many scientific theories for which we do not know. Okay? We have no idea about them. We're hoping that we find more evidence in the future to either dissuade us from current theories, right? And it gets us to adopt new theories. That's just but part you of agree science. with me. And that's according why according to the current evidence. That's why when you said that is why when you said in order for it to be science, it's got to have this property of being exclusively evidence has to be exclusive to one hypothesis. Right? That's not the case. And I'm just pointing that out that the language that you used was too loose, just too loose, that's all. Not that I disagree that the scientific method isn't the best way we've come up with of finding information the, through induction, right? I'm sure most yeah. of us Yeah, I'll, I'll rephrase it. I'll rephrase it, and if you disagree with this, we'll just have to agree to disagree. Sure. Evidence is uh, exclusively concordant with and indicative of one available hypothesis over any others. And that's, yeah, I realize that that's I never changed I'm gonna, it. Yeah, I, thought, <laughs> oh, wow. I thought it was different, <laughs> no, but no, no that's, that's, completely that's wrong. what I originally okay. said. I, I no. don't see how that's wrong. I, I really uh, don't. Because to, to me, evidence is just something that makes uh, I, a hypothesis in terms of science, a hypothesis more likely uh, than not. Right? If it increases the likelihood of it being true, it's evidence. That, that's about as simple as I can make it. And these are the kinds of people I argue with on a regular basis. Seriously, Lena. Yeah, I mean that's that's like, fair. I, I, think I have just, to uh... be I have to be Simos Funk careful. <laughs> I'm just pointing that's it out. Fine, yeah. Okay, so uh, I, I'm not I'm not being casual yeah, and clumsy I, you... in most of in most of my statements. I'm really not. And, and if a person puts together things I didn't mean for them to be together that I did separate then it's not an accurate representation of what I'm trying to say. Yes, that's fair. Okay, I, Jay again, Bundy is actually doing that. Like a lot. Peace and respect, okay. Richard. Peace so and I respect. Would up, I'd look up someone called Quine, Q-U-I-N-E, and it's called Scientific Undetermined. Can you put that in the... In the, um... in the private chat. I'll try to, yeah. Okay, I'll look it up. Yeah, thank you. No problem, no problem. All right, I I'll still feel like my now. definition is more useful because um, it's incorrect. It's That's taking no problem. Well, I, I I think it's taking it a step farther, right? So you can have um, evidence as, as you define my, it, my which is going to be anything that's indicative of a certain hypothesis, right? But then that that's going to be less useful in in. Um, Richard Madsen is all about elevating the nothing burger into the high art of nothing burger, gourmet nothing burger. Um, first off, this whole thing about evidence is just a fucking distraction. Again, Lena was absolutely correct about what we mean when we say evidence. And again, imagine talking to a lawyer. When you use the word evidence, you will assume to be having the conversation based on what lawyers mean when lawyers say evidence. Um, so when you have a conversation with a scientist, you should be talking about, and this is all based on the conversation you had with me, you should be basing it on what scientists mean um, when scientists say evidence. And uh, I, I think Lena's absolutely identified that but this fool is just not being honest about it um and then also this misdefinition now evidence is anything that makes a particular hypothesis more likely to be true well then now of course they can slip inside and say that a particular argument is now evidence or a particular experience is now evidence which again is what they know we would not agree with so this all feels really really dishonest and um again like 
they're sitting here acting like the guy said, like he said in his own words, yeah, I agree that the scientific method is the best thing we have for finding the truth, right? Boom. Well, then why is he not confronting Richard Madsen about the fact that Richard Madsen isn't being scientific? These guys are such skeptics. They're such critical thinkers, but they never apply it to their own shit. Um, he's in his cult. That's why. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Lena, yeah, he's what, on that star semen shit, right? Oh, now. shit. Oh, shit. Wayne's in the house. Hi, Wayne. Hey, hey Wayne. Lena. I've missed you. Good to talk to you. You too. You too. I've been thinking a lot about you, Lena. For real. I've been like, where oh, is you. Lena with the logic? And then she comes in <laughs> like a like she was tractor beamed from, from whatever the fuck Richard Madsen's from. To just lay, lay down logic and reason. It, I heard a little bit today while I was at work. Uh, Madsen, you know I respect you, but bro, you gotta you gotta let that shit go. You gotta if you don't have good evidence, you gotta move on. That's just what it is, and that's it. Yeah, he just refuses to. You know, again, I think you're still. Uh, I think you're just too early. I think you're like in that Rebecca phase. You're still in that honeymoon phase with Richard Madsen. I think Richard Madsen's no good. Don't think he has any good intentions. Because if he did, he wouldn't be this way. So I, I, I think he's as weaponized or problematic as any apologist out there. But I know y'all not with me. Y'all still on the Richard Madsen, such a good guy. And I would love to have him babysit my kids. Picking out right between different evidence. All right, with it. But yeah, Lena was murdering people today. It's better. So, so having... Wayne, how you doing, man? Um, I'm, I'm, honestly, I'm doing okay. Um, I've had a fucking great 24 hours, really. I finished a painting that got, like, two nonprofits, like, to strengthen their bond. That was cool. And I had a great time at the gym. Like, that heavy bag don't want to see me no more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel <laughs> Good shit, man. Glad to hear it. For sure. How about you? The host. I'm good, man. Um, you know what? I'm honestly like, I feel like in a real way, I felt like I, I did for a while feel like picking on Richard Madsen was really punching down. I'm feeling a little bit less like that because, again, I feel like people are still not seeing through the nonsense quite yet. So that feels like it makes it more worth my time. But yeah, overall, man, I'm out here just feeling like I started the tip on like I started on the tip of like needing to defend against the pseudoscience and the anti-intellectual nonsense. Um, but I'm I'm having a bit more fun now and I think the difference is taking more of an offensive approach. Hey, Jay. Yeah. yeah. What I don't like about it is how he comes across like, you know, I don't have any credentials. I don't really know anything about this. But, hey, let me talk about some Ph.D. level geology. You know, it, that really yeah, bothers with, with that that, bothers Yeah, they, they're, they're all that way. And, again, honest, mm -hmm. decent people don't do that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, let me go check on my food. A stricter definition of evidence that says, okay, now we're only going to include things that are exclusively concordant with one available hypothesis over any other. Now you're able to actually um, pick a, a better hypothesis, right? Now, now you have a mechanism by which to evaluate different hypotheses and judge them. And that's, that's really true. What you, you can come out with a hypothesis that comes out on top in the standard that you're setting. That's absolutely true. Does that make that the only hypothesis or all possible hypotheses? No, it does not. Do we have, it makes all, it, do we have all possible hypotheses? Probably not. Can we conclusively it it, say that that confirms the hypothesis? No, we cannot. Correct. What it does is it makes it, uh, it, it, it makes it so that the standard for what we can properly call evidence 
is that it has to be exclusively concordant with one available hypothesis over any others provided. That that's like a, okay. a, a I'm imposing this extra demand on what we call evidence be, precisely because that's what what's useful. That's what's important. That's what that's what we need to do in order to figure out what's true. I agree with you that if we're going to move forward, we have to work with what we have until we have something better. And that science is always open to something better. And that's beautiful and, and honest. And that the and I answer, deeply appreciate it. Yes. And that the answer we go with, the, the thing that we're going to claim to be true tentatively, right, that we're going to, to operate with, um, it, it has to be the best hypothesis over any others. Right. Yes. And if okay, there's great. two competing hypotheses and they both. And this is the thing he keeps being fundamentally dishonest about. Number one, we have better alternatives than his bullshit. And he won't admit that. He keeps saying, oh, we got to go with the best one. We have a better one. Also, these motherfuckers don't want us to know anything. That's what I mean about gaslighting. We can't know anything. Can't know anything. Does the sun really revolve around? You don't know that, y'all. You don't know that. Because you could be living in a fucking... The firmament, just like the Bible said, but the, the firmament is high tech and reflective and it just makes it look like the, the it, well, it made it look like the, the sun was revolving around the earth, but then really we were able to do some more calculations to make it look like the earth was revolving around the sun, but in reality nothing's rotating around anything and it's all just a fucking projection from the Lord. They, these people are the worst. And I got to be honest with you, I fucking can't stand people like this. Y'all could be nice if you want, I won't be. Because you're showing up at my door, undermining my work. You're spitting in my face. Richard Madsen's a fucking joke and a coward. Peace and respect? Nigga, be at peace with the fact that you're wrong. And respect the people who are trying to tell you you're wrong. But he doesn't. I waste time. My time is valuable. Your time is valuable. And we go out of our way, spending hours upon hours explaining the basics to these motherfuckers. And every single time, they make another fucking marathon stream where they miss all the, po all the points. I'm done. That's the difference this year. I'm tired of playing defense. I want to go on offense. I'm scoring points. I'm calling people out. Nigga, bring your bullshit to the ring. Get fucked. Get bent. I don't care. I'm grown. You want to throw down? Let's throw down. I will hurt you and your feelings. Share the same... Uh, factual support, right? The, the evidence doesn't really indicate one way or the other, then we have to be on the fence. Oh, also, I want right. to talk about his bullshit about these fucking theories. Only fucking cowards talk like this about science. They, they have no idea what it takes to actually do scientific work. None. We are not looking to replace our theories. Are you fucking stupid? There is no scientist showing up to work tomorrow like, I'm about to make a discovery that's going to just make them throw out the entire theory of gravity. Not happening. Nobody is like, yo, when I show up tomorrow at work, woo, that germ theory of disease is in motherfucking trouble. Oh, yeah, wait till they see the results of my latest experiment. It is going to definitively show that that old earth, mm-mm, no, we do experiments to help us flesh out the theories, help us make better predictions on the theories, but the reasons these theories have stood the test of time is because they are the best theories. They, they, they are explanations that we no longer even expect to be able to find evidence inconsistent with them. These people are fundamentally misrepresented, again, because they don't want you to know everything. They don't want you to know anything because you can't know everything. That, that's their logic. You can't know everything, you don't know anything. It's the only way they keep their Dog foot shit. in the conversation, bro. The only way. Yeah. It's the only way. Right. He has no evidence, therefore he has to destroy the concept of evidence. Really? Honestly? Exactly what's okay. happening. Okay.
Good. I think that's settled enough. Really. Okay. Now let's now, let's take. I'm going to make an. I'm going to make a statement, Lena. I'm going to make a statement. I want you to pick it apart for me. Holy shit! I wanted to bring it to terraforming, but go ahead. Uh, there are okay. There there is also uh, like if you were looking at the globe and then the map of the United States, right? Um, there is bedrock uh, erosion. Uh, which we say things like, okay, that, that could have been uh, ice sliding or other things. The <laughs> problem with that is, is that you have it having actually gone in two different directions. You have it from the, oh my gosh, I have to do my hand backwards and can, say can I it interrupt? forward. Yeah, go ahead. Can I interrupt? I'm going to prefer, well, I'm going to prefer that you send me this stuff, like sources, right? So I don't need you to um, discuss We're on, talking on about air. logic here. We're talking about logic well, so here. Well, here's what I'm asking for. I'm asking for evidence, meaning um, in my definition, meaning exclusively concordant with the hypothesis that the the world was terraformed in the past, right? More, so more likely was. I don't, I don't need you to. I don't need you to give me the evidence now. I just need you to say whether or not you have that evidence. The the the, you, the hypothesis that the Earth was terraformed is the best available hypothesis that fits the data do, do you believe okay. that i'll just i'll just make the following statements then and, and try to comply with what i think is the spirit of your inquiry your well request. just a, yeah it's it's just like do you do you believe that you have that, that i'm going to mute um, you very soon can you stop let me answer you please i'd appreciate yeah, that thank you thank you okay um so the formations uh of the mountain ranges and that they all except for like huge yeah, juts this was exactly what i wanted to avoid this sort of getting thing, into that they all comply with that worldwide and they do you ask them a yes or no yeah go ahead lena no that's fine let him let him get through his oh okay his, okay uh, all, right, all right whatever this is i don't know um, what this is that do you have you ice movement no no is I, not I, I, no no <laughs> To to explain it's, uh, the deep trench in Uncle Bobby language, it's uh, pizza sleeps faster under the west, therefore the much. Exactly. This is Uncle Bobby. Says, pizza sleeps fast under the west, therefore the much. <laughs> 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 Therefore, the, the what was the, the, the end much. part? <laughs> the, the <laughs> much. <laughs> oh my goodness! Just word <laughs> salad. What the free shots? Wait, were you were gonna say something, Wayne? Oh, oh <laughs> yes, I they are. Please, like I'm just as confused as Lena. Like I don't know where he's going with this because. I, about where are you going? Wow. Nowhere. <laughs> Nowhere you going? Nowhere. <laughs> yeah, literally. Literally, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. The destination is lost, right? Like, that's where he wants this to end. He doesn't know where yeah. the, any of this is going, but he wins if everyone ends up lost. Yeah. God, we, we need a all new, the way um, around the world in... Who is the... Who's the the community member's name who made the the atheist fever dream compilation. Oh, Nano, yeah, Nano. Zoom, yeah, yeah Nano. We gotta find Nano. Oh, we need Nano. Nano clips. Me too. Uh, All right, I'll be right mm -hmm. back. Let me grab this food for it burns. Two different directions, and we don't really know how far apart those two time frames were. Um, but a, a gigantic deluge putting this amount of water onto the Earth could do that sort of thing um, that there are are gaps in every record um, of uh, of uh, uh, the crustal the crustal layers and I'm sorry to uh, interrupt plant, I don't know what plant to do and, with this information plant and well if you can't control yourself I'll help you um, and that there are gaps yeah, in me. what we see in the record, and those gaps make sense form, if only those form. objects were, were put there. For instance, 10,000 hydrosaur in one pile, no predecessor, 
nothing following it. Then a jump to the next thing that obviously I'm just came from the Hadrosaur, Titanic song. Ten thousand of those, <laughs> and then a jump, and ten thousand of the next thing. But there's always these jumps, uh, which is evident in the fossil record, and why uh, Stephen Jay Gould um, proposed punctuated equilibrium because we all see those jumps plainly. But it wouldn't make sense for a random fossilization to to produce a pattern. That means it's not random. That's that's those are like op opposing terms. Uh, so I think it has a lot of explanatory power. I think it's evident in reality, and I think the science all points toward this, and I mean several kinds of sciences. Please go ahead, unmute yourself. Do I have to unmute you, maybe? Uh, you're unmuted. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, can we you hear, hear you. Me? Yes, I said I was going to unmute you. Well, that was... Yeah, I, I mean, I I tried to say that that was specifically what I didn't need um, because I would prefer all of those different claims as actual links so that I can go check them out. I, I tried you just, to write you down just asked me not to give you links right now, but give you an overview. So I did. Then you said that's not what I asked for. I can give you links to all that later. That is I what you asked you're for. A little testy. Yeah. What? Well, so I asked for the links. Yeah, I just I'm not sure I what you're saying now is whether. You believe that um, the ex the hypotheses of the Earth being terraformed is the best available explanation over all others for the for the the laundry list of different observations that that you gave. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and send me the uh, the the links and yeah, I didn't know what to do with that at that point. Uh, sources right. from any. Did you, did you get the ones of academia that, that are promoting this? I should check my email now. Promoting what? I'd be happy to fact check it. I would like to, I would like to see the, that academics the, should be promoting. The terraforming hypothesis. If you got this link, there are there, like there are there are so there are some ideas. Yeah, I, 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 we can try to find Nano. I, I sometimes see them pop up on Steam. I honestly think sometimes people. Uh, with good reason, just go through phases with the community. Like I said, people are just like, maybe hopefully they're just tired of YouTube counter apologetics. Good for them. Um, but, <laughs> but, like, <sighs> there is really some stuff that I don't, I just think it's it's so off the deep end, it's almost not worth really breaking it down and so some of what i think you do is you just let them get it out like so part of the i think the best way to make richard Matson make the the errors in, of richard Matson's ways and thinking come out is to just let him talk you know and and he just keeps saying crazier and crazier and crazier shit now he does have his little echo chamber where you know Everybody keeps coming to well. What Richard said isn't. I don't see the problem because it isn't logically, metaphysically impossible. But uh, that's all he has. That's all he has. Um, word salad that he's rendered true by means of you can't prove it's not. Um, really shitty stuff. I had a thought. Hey, that is, God. Oh, sorry, Wayne. <laughs> And that's basically what a precept does. You exactly what a precept does. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He spaced Jesus' precept. Oh. Sorry, I just... Somebody just hit me. I'm, I lost the race. <laughs> oh, you... Oh, somebody hit you, and you lost the race. Oh, I feel so bad. Wayne, you play bumper cars, bro. I don't That's play a, bumper yes, cars. You. I want it's you to know personally. Boo, 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 boo. I want you to know personally right now, I found the option. I'm able to increase the race length, so I won't be playing bumper oh, cars. Oh, right? man. Uh, I just had to do work <laughs> in three laps. You I know. Understand? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I legit man. increased the length so I can be... Because I like to race clean. I do. It's just... With the format, it, is, it really doesn't allow for it, but now it will. I feel you. We got to get you on that. We gotta. I need people to help me with iRacing. Like, we got to go hardcore racing school together. 
I'll right. do iRacing just for the racing school. <laughs> is, is, is there like a need are you, for it? Are you being sarcastic on purpose or accidentally? I didn't think I was being sarcastic at all. Uh, so you're so not being sarcastic. You think that I'm claiming there are academics who agree with me. Where? When did I say that? I was hoping for that. Is, is So there's not? I don't know of any. <laughs> I already answered this. I don't know of any. Have you looked? Do, do you understand that? Does that make him feel smart? It, uh, I guess so. Gang, this is this is a big fight we got coming up. This Tom Aspinall is my is Uncle Bobby's UFC rival. First off, he beat me. He was my first loss when Uncle Bobby was just throwing bombs on people but couldn't wrestle. Motherfucker tapped me out. Then I fucking... Yeah, that's the guy last night. Yeah, then I came back yeah, and okay, I beat yeah. him. I tapped him out. He was my first submission win reverse. yeah with that awesome reversal but then last night he tapped me out at the end of the night at like five o'clock in the morning he tapped me out before in the last fight like he choked me out with some crazy fucking leg lock took yeah. the ufc heavyweight title from me in the prudential center in newark new jersey Oof. i don't care about the gold i don't care about the paycheck, I want to beat Tom Aspinall's ass in a back alleyway with no, I, this shit is per, I just want to fuck this, tap, nap, or snap, or, or die. This man is really dangerous, but I got to get him. That's out of, outside of their we field gotta get of him. study. We got to get him. This is serious, Wayne. Do you, do you think a geologist. But Wayne, Wayne, they can tell you, Wayne. Of- Wayne, I done got two submission wins since then. I've been working on Uncle two. Bobby's ground game. I've been choking. Uncle Bobby's been, Uncle Bobby's been becoming the complete fighter. We ain't, we ain't fucking around out here, Wayne. Okay. About the formations of mountains is going to go beyond we don't have a reason, although we see that this could be hypersonic air movement. And, and we even see in the sciences and laboratory testing that that hypersonic air movement will cause that pattern. They're not going to see they're not going to see that and keep their job and say something like, "I think it was aliens." Do you understand that they are never going to say that? And why do you think they would never say that? Because there's bullshit. no way to shit. Oh, but right. B.S. Lewis slid through with the. Right. Uh, because uh, somebody's name in the chat is Metabun, and B.S. Lewis slid through with I love my nothing burger on a Metabun. All this happened before I even came in the chat. When I came in the chat, y'all, I came in this chat raging. Um, but, um, but I will say something else I noticed that I mentioned in the chat when I came in. Richard Madsen gives his wrenches to all the crazies. Jody Byrne, St. Tommy, Odeon... Peter W. Right. So this is his he this is his den of denial. Right. Peter and w. So, comes through here. Of course. Uh, for spreadsheet Pete. Uh, but they're all in the same category of people that really are here to obstruct our journeys, but act like they're friendly. But you know what I'm saying? It's not a coincidence that if you come through my chat, all the rational people that know their shit have wrenches for the most part, right? And then you go to these weirdos channels and 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 just uh, what a kawinky dink! All the conspiracy theorists have fucking wrenches. Go that that is the absolute best answer to explain that one thing. It's not. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Harley's Quinn, let's get married. Um, she said, I saw Madsen on Muslim metaphysician saying he's a Muslim. What? But again, the nigga sitting here arguing about he's the truest of the true, true Christians, and he tries to be a good Christian for the sake of his Christianity. Okay. He's the truest of Christians. But again, he probably just has Thank some you. fucked up ass interpretation where Muhammad was not the last Israeli prophet in the Middle East. He was, Muhammad is a job description and is a role described by a prophet who split a moon on an earth. (sighs) That's the only way. Isn't it fun to like 
know things. He's bi-religious. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just saying, man. Like uh, he's I also just, Scientology curious. You know, like, <laughs> I don't want to say that in case they're listening. Oh, Scientologists. I'm not saying it was aliens, but it was aliens. <laughs> right. Just, just space uh, alien. What is it? Alien ghost from Jupiter. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh my goodness. God, fucking Scientologist. All right. Accepting yeah, it. Play, it. play that shit. <laughs> you think I should reject it because it's not the only plausible solution or it's not necessarily the best solution? I thought I was I doing an you internal critique. I, I think I'm doing an internal critique of the text and its claims and what I believe is true in reality and what I see in my actuality that would support what I think is true. That's what I'm doing. Uh, hey, real quick, I just want to jump in. Um, I, now, I don't, I don't believe it's the best possibility. I, I don't believe the Earth was terraformed, right? Like, and Richard knows this. Um, f I have a couple questions, though, because like, I, I don't really see the harm in Richard thinking it is. Um, f but, but outside of that, um, you know, like the whole reference to, to like, you asked, like, well, why, if, if some scientist or whatever th thought a thing why wouldn't they say a thing and i, I could say like you know for a yeah, long time a conspiracy theory. That, that claims Whoa. to have seen aliens or talks about aliens they get the stigmatized oh. i guess I, I would say it'd be like the same reason why historians that might think jesus was a myth wouldn't say jesus is a myth because tenureship would be on the line um your your career might be on the line now i, I don't subscribe to the the earth was terraformed but i just Get in I don't the think college it's a big deal. before you start talking about. <laughs> it's not like it's teachers. He's do. going against you know trying yeah. to like Tenure change this. science to match a <laughs> creationist <laughs> narrative. I, I I don't see what what the big deal with it is. Well, saying that scientists aren't pushing it out of fear of uh, uh, punishment is definitely bordering on conspiratorial. Yeah, yeah it would that's... be, but that's not exactly what he or I said. It, it's it's literally outside of their field. It's well, yeah, it's it, just it, like it's just like if I'm a singer, like. if I'm a singer and I start talking about politics, I'm no longer a singer. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, like terraforming the Earth is well within the purview what? of a whole bunch of relevant fields of geology. Wait, wait. So if you have, I, 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 you cease to be I personally find Richard's is? explanation a far better possibility, that, and I, I, you well, know, I, I, I'm using that word deliberately, possibility, than say I don't know uh, the yeah, the God theory that God made dribble. everything out of nothing seven, four years ago. I mean, four at four. least at least within what Richard thinks happens, there's there's a natural explanation for well, it. It's yeah, just, all, it's kind of how yeah. I find comfort in it. You well, know? yeah, you know, it, look, it, you know, alien. Aliens terraforming Earth, cool, I can get behind that, because if aliens exist, they still exist in the physical universe. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, they don't exist outside outside of it. I, mean, <laughs> yeah, I, the part of I, I do think you make a, a lot yeah, of good absolutely. points. Uh, I'm not trying to just be like, oh, pro-Richard here, because me and Richard are buddies. I think you make good points. Um, I, I think that, you know, like, with me, it, it's... How many conversations we had, Richard? 16, 17? I, More I still, than one. I still don't understand it. You know, <laughs> so, I, I don't think. I want to be clear though that think, I don't think you're meant to rage. <laughs> I'm kidding. So Go if ahead. the Earth was terraformed, uh, there yeah, would be scientists yeah. studying it. There yeah. would be relevant field like the, like the relevant fields are no. geology, plate tectonics. Uh, you know, no, there would not be. That's the whole point. There would not be. There could not be. And I'll show you why. There's people who do. Name one. Oh, you don't know their names. Wonder why. <laughs> but also, Come on. But also, also. All right, he's also, entering also, territory. Wait, what? Now. You're Sorry. saying there are there are. Okay, who there are, are theorists who theory uh, theorize put forward a theory of a terraformed Earth. Are they recognized as serious scientists? No, they're not. Why? Well, not because it's logically impossible. Not because the the, the universe isn't big enough to support the idea. For none of those reasons, it's just not geology. No, no, that's not why we reject 
It sounds like you don't understand science. He don't. Okay, no, show don't. me how I'm thinking this, about okay, it wrongly. Hang on, hang on there's, a, there's an accurate question to ask here. What is What's it that? about the geology, right, that prohibits the chance of it being uh, terraformed? <sighs> Come on, man. Is that a question for me? It is, yeah. Like I'm like you're you're expecting me to disprove his unsupported theory. You to oh, I'm saying theology. why is his his why I'm asking you to prove his theory false. That's yeah, so <laughs> what did I ask? So exactly what I asked. False. Right. right. So you shouldn't you shouldn't be asking that, and and, and the Am fact that you're asking that shows that you don't understand science either. So oh, maybe I can okay. explain to both of you how. Okay, so when you said just because it's not logically possible, Richard, right? is that that good. perfectly explained yeah. how yeah, you Richard don't understand the scientific knows. process? And when and, and who 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 is it that I'm talking with as well? I'm sorry, I should have gotten names oh, at the Simus. start. Hi, I'm Lena. Everybody, Simus, is, is that Chris? No, it's midnight. I just shit Midnight, my hand. Simon, so nice you guys. Thanks for joining me. been on Rebecca's <laughs> channel before. I thought so. Yeah, that's where what? I recognize your voice. Oh um, pretty sexy voice, but quite. <laughs> yeah, Sorry, or, or, or when you ask me to to disprove his claim, right? This, well, you're, these are you're not how we not do science. Scientific. You're saying it's not scientific, right? right? Okay. Yeah, the way so in which it gets scientific. About science says that his theory is not scientific. A, a number uh, of things. So <laughs> it's not just that it has to be logically possible, right? That's one of the bare minimum yes. requirements, right? Your theory That's has to be logically possible. That's usually what we call rational coherence. It has an internal consistency to it. Um, that the, Yeah, there's no contradictions. Then the other optional criteria of science are applicability, uh, how much you know, you, usefulness does it have? Does it does it push forward a novel, a, a, sorry, a novel no. prediction? Is it something that we mm -hmm. haven't already un uncovered? Um, it has claims. to be efficient in its explanatory capabilities. This refers to accuracy and precision. It has to be, um, basically you have to parameterize it so that it's as flexible as possible to incorporate new data and new information, but also as rigid as possible as to not uh, fall prey to ad hoc rationalizations, yeah. right? So there's a sort of an optimizing that happens with respect to how well it, it can <coughs> efficiently explain things. Um, there's another word that we kind of use to refer to this is called Occam's razor. Hey, uh, uh, we want a parsimonious shave every time yeah, yeah. we we critique our theories. We want to eliminate extremities. We want to have the simplest answer possible that explains the most possible. Sure. Four hundred years. Um, still so, so, so all of these yeah, go into why why terraforming isn't scientific, right? Yep. Because if it were, it would it would um, it would meet a higher burden when it comes to to the science scientific but, criteria it would sure. score better okay yeah okay so it's not the most efficacious scientific theory i There's think so we, much I there think, hang on i think you and i agree on that but if that's it's not, not even in academia that, no, hang on hang on that's not what i asked you that's a good indication what i asked you for what makes his theory non-scientific okay i didn't say whether it was the least efficable right I'm agreeing it's not the most efficable theory that, in fact, geology and naturalism itself provides a better explanation for the data given, given Ockham's razor. All right. But that's sure. not the point. That's not what I'm saying to you. What I'm okay, saying I, to you I is can, I can what see makes that it this non-scientific. Okay, yeah, sure. I, I can that's concede fine. that it is scientific. Okay, I would concede that, you, that folklore really and mythology. That. Yeah. Yeah. Folklore and mythology is equal and that it you know it attempts to explain the natural world it, it you know it has a, it has a score when it comes to the the big four operational criteria of science i'm sure. saying that it's it it scores very lowly <laughs> or at least it, it doesn't seem to score highly. there's not thank you, I do have no, a lower. Lower. Thank you. 
You're welcome. And, and the fact that and the fact that it's not represented in this in the scientific literature speaks to how uh, unsubstantiated it is. The, this okay. isn't a claim. This isn't an argument from authority. This is simply understanding. I, no, no, no. Um, how Again, large you, the. You're just the, repeating what I said. I, I didn't ask for well, you whether okay. it is efficable or I, not. I was. I asked yeah. you. Sorry, midnight. Let him go. And Let him go, agreed. midnight. I've asked you, okay. and you've agreed that it is, in fact, at least scientific, although presumably not agreed to by science for a reason. And I agree with the reasons that you've given. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Richard. Oh, I didn't have anything. Go ahead, Lena. Oh, in that case, we go ahead, midnight. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, you said you. Okay. You may have a little confused here. You. You. You know. You. Are you saying that uh, terraforming the way Richard, the way Richard believes it, <clears throat> can happen, or terraforming in general? Because you know, because you know, because because we 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 you know because. Human, you know, humans may be able to terraform other planets someday in the future. No, no, no not the process. Just the historical the claims. Okay, I just uh, the historical okay. claim just... appears to me to be pseudoscience. I mean, it may be, but you know, it's just it's a better ex it's better explanation than God did it. <laughs> yeah, that. I'll give it. But, right, but I do. Fair enough. You know, I, <laughs> But I do agree with Simus. I do agree with, I do agree with Simus. You know, you know that 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 the data, you know, the, 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 the data does show that naturalism is a better explanation. I, I forget the way you put it, Simus, but yeah, I I do agree with you. It's my preferred uh, my preferred epistemology. This question, Lena has yet to present an argument as to why Richard's view is not possible. Still waiting. And again, Lena's already presented that it's not consistent with all that we know about everything. But setting that aside, like Lena keeps repeating, that is missing the point. And it's like he's missing the point, his chat's missing the point, his mods are missing the point. And now he wants to big up these misunderstanding comments because he thinks this makes him look smart. And it just shows that he just doubling down on his, it's not logically impossible. It's not logically impossible. Yeah, because they've all bought into it. They've all bought into it. Absolutely. You're a fake smart person if you don't want to know what the other side is actually arguing, bro. I'm not you. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. 100%. I agree with you. It's my All right. preferred, uh, my, my comments are fire, though. So He acts like he wants. Um, he acts like he actually wants uh, scientific pushback. But he doesn't. He doesn't. He really doesn't. He really doesn't. So Jody Burns That's came through, and Jody Burns said, um, a theory is an educated guess, guesstimation, um, and I said, Jody Burns wrong. You don't I understand what a scientific theory is. Capiche? Get it right or go away. I'm sick of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, a fucking idiot. And then I said, Lena doesn't have a definition of science. Lena is defining science. There is only one scientific method, not Lena's interpretation. Um, and then I said, I see the ignorant get wrenches around here. A den of fools. <laughs> <laughs> Then I said, Odian, your comment yeah. reveals how little you understand. Sorry, that's not how this works. Lena has explained that multiple times. Were you not listening, or are you just that dumb? I told you, I, I'm, well, I'm, I'm on offense, yeah, Wayne. Yeah, I ain't playing defense no more, Wayne. I'm trying to score out here, baby. Okay, <laughs> guys, I'm going to get ready for yeah, this. Right, He's the only one. Lena, thank you I so much for coming you. in. <laughs> thank I, you. I, wanna, I, I apologize say... for any frustrations. What? No, no, no. There was no frustrations except. I, I apologize that for it. There was no frustration. Now, this part pisses me That's off. Bullshit. Watch this after the close. <laughs> I, I just, I just don't accept people like talking over each other. I'm, I'm never going to be rude to you unless you're abundantly rude to me. I'm just not going to do that. And I thank you for your time. Yeah, and thank make sure you, you look no, up no under determination. Me. Make sure you look up under determination, because uh, we'll do. There's, there's a big issue with science and philosophy and you need to be across again let me leave you with some homework sound like a fraud let me leave you with some homework wow that's true all right i'll check it out 
Thanks so much, guys. Have a great that. day. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to wrap it up so I want people's last thoughts. And I'm sorry, Midnight, you barely got to give any input at all. I apologize. So, Midnight, the floor is yours. Or if you want to collect your thoughts and let someone else go first, you have that option. Let someone else go first. Rage. Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd just like to say, I thought that would be a lot worse. When, when, when he told Simon he doesn't understand science, I'm like, war has been declared. <laughs> so, um, she, no, just I, F, Ray, FYI, she. Lena identifies she. Oh. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't know that. Sorry. Okay. Um, it's okay. So, yeah. Now, I know Lena's getting tired of this conversation. For the record, Lena identifies as Lena. Please correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Lena. That, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> it's fine. Um, I'm, I'm fine with any pronoun. Um, yeah, uh, I'm sorry, sorry. Lena. If I, I get it wrong, please correct me as well. I just uh, get uh, tired of the fact that every time I'm on one of these discussions with you, the pronoun things come up, and it's not Lena. It's any time in this community. Uh, an LGBT person, especially a trans person, is in a debate with a theist. Matter of fact, not a lot of people remember this backstory, but that is why I debated Kent Hovind. I debated Kent Hovind because um, I saw him do a debate against, um, I believe, a trans person, and as soon as they were concluding, all of a sudden, Ken Hoven was like, well, I'm not sure if I should call you he or she or what pronoun do you like? And, da, 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 da. and that shit triggered me. And when I saw one of Donnie's streams later looking for a 300th debate opponent for Ken Hoven, I was like, fuck it. I'm taking this man on. Cause, but that was the motivation. I wouldn't have otherwise cared, but that really did piss me off. And I've been in this situation with Lena a number of times, and it's just I, I just can't believe it's a coincidence anymore. Because Lupin did the same shit. Uh, the same shit came up on LPP. Why? First off, it has nothing to do with the conversation, and it just seems to conveniently come up at the end as though they have to conveniently wrap things up with a little taste of prejudice just as a last minute way to undermine their interlocutor. And I don't mean to put you on the spot, Lena, but I'm, I'm just sick of it. Like, I, I just noticed it is, I don't think it's a coincidence and it just, it pisses me off. Like, it, it, it's almost like if I ended all my conversations and somebody wanted to say, well, are you black, like African-American, or are you from Africa? I know there are parts of South America where men have very dark skin. Like, nigga, what? I'm about to come across this table upside your head, and you want to know exactly what type of black I am. Angry. Like, it, <laughs> but it just, <laughs> it just bothers me. Like, that shouldn't be the cost of doing business. It ain't got shit to, like, I, I really love Ed's rule. If, if it's not something a person could change in three seconds, don't bring it up and and I don't see why this conversation happens and I hate when it happens as their little wrapping up jab oh sorry I'm just having nigga you done talked to me for an hour not knowing what to call me has not been an issue all of a sudden I gotta go you got 10 seconds left in my presence and now you now you got now it's the burning question on your mind right or right afterwards like nigga you just talked to me for two hours this was not a problem now all of a sudden it just it just feels totally inappropriate and unnecessary and it always comes from the same camp and i just can't i just can't write it off as a coincidence anymore lena i want to give you a chance to speak on that before i, I roll the tape. yeah i mean i think um some of those examples are, are a bit different I, I i was gonna say earlier i felt bad about the lupin situation i was thinking about it in context with what Vosh was saying about the PR issue on the left and how we need to be more um, inclusive. And I just, I felt like I handled that situation wrong as like a first introduction to our community. Like I'd rather be a welcoming uh, space first and then like combative later. But I, I was just, I do, but I just feel like it's part of their the talking points, right? It's like, it's like they can't have, Right, so back to this. Yeah, yeah I mean, it is. It totally is. They can't help but bring it up. I think the whole thing of bringing it up at the end is because, well, it has to be brought up at some point. Um, it made sense in this conversation because, like, 
they were talking with me and then I left, so now they're talking about me and I need a pronoun. Um, but like, of course, they're they're, they're not going to be the progressives who think to ask for pronouns at the start. And that's just or um, start with they. Shit, we're all learning in 2023. If you don't know, start hey, with they. Hey, Lena. Uh, yeah, I missed mm-hmm. that most of what you had just said, Jay. I was on the phone. But if I mess up and do not call you by what you prefer to be called, please let me know because I'm not doing it on purpose. And no worries. No, I, I don't think you have, I, at least as far as I can recall. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I appreciate I, that, I, though. I would, would like to uh, honor people's wishes in that regard. Yeah, it's that. not something that... Um, it's not something that upsets me personally, but I am personally annoyed by the fact that the English language uses gendered pronouns. Yeah. I, and gendered I, I, words I, I, in general. Yeah, I think the other night we were talking about how we should just get rid of them. But, yeah, um, and that's what I mean when I say Lena prefers yeah. to be called Lena because we have actually had the yeah. conversation and he said I don't like pronouns at all. I said, okay, that makes sense actually. <laughs> and that's a conversation I'm happy to have with yeah. with these religious fruitcakes because I know that they they think that we're pushing this um, you know, <laughs> anti-traditional yeah. Uh, they're, you know, we're trying to destroy the traditional um family like roles right like this is something i've heard uh ben Shapiro whine about and to some extent it's true and i think um we should be like honest about that and that or at least for me like a, a, as a gender abolitionist like i just don't think that we should have roles in society that are um based on certain immutable characteristics like i think it would be healthier and happier to just Get rid of gendered bathrooms, get rid of gendered sports, get rid of gender language. Um, I think it would just help all of these situations. 100%, especially the sports shit, because it's never about some dude going into a women's sport and, like, breaking all the records. It's never about that. It's about all the fucking losers at the bottom of the barrel that would be replaced by better athletes of different... Yeah, well, I'm not gonna go... I wouldn't... I mean, I think in most areas of societies, I, you know, guys, I'm biological anthropologist, right? And I spent right. my all of our time studying sex differences, right? So, there are real areas where there's next to no overlap. I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, phones. For the most part... Uh, when you call on the phone, you are successfully able to identify the, 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 the birth sex of the person you're on the phone with almost by voice alone. Why is that? Because there's next to over, no overlap, meaning the highest pitched male voice is still lower pitched than the lowest female voice. It's just, just next to no overlap. And so you can't have a powerlifting competition where the males and females compete together. You just can't because it will never be fair to females. Um, so I think skill, skill, skill based matching shitty guys that can't lift as much as a strong woman. That's who we're protecting. Nope. The big guys. Nope. If you're we're, at the top of the competition, nope. You, Wayne, you it's, it's just, but Wayne, it's just, I, I just Bro, disagree. Uh, I just think there's hard data that's going to show you the biggest power lifters are going to be males all the time. So, and you... that's cool. But what I'm telling you is that the whole point of the patriarchy is to enable the weakest men, the most garbage. I don't men. disagree that's with that, but but the point it. is, if you get rid of all, I'm saying is, if you make sports co-ed, you get rid of females in sports. So I don't think that's the solution. It's, it feels good, it nah. sounds good, but it's not. We don't. don't wait, we people. I want to be clear. Having women in spaces. Sports. People won't even watch yeah. women's sports, Wayne. There's a huge difference. Mm-mm. No, I'm saying I, that I can I can weigh in. Go ahead. Go ahead, Wayne. Go well, I was just gonna say I, I think it's important to protect women's spaces in sports. I think we've seen this in chess, where um, if you don't create women's only competitions and certain things, then women just kind of get pushed out um, due to due to certain social norms. So it's it's. Um, it's not. I'm not trying to get rid of um, gendered sports. I'm just saying that having sports where it's co-ed and it is simply based on skill 
doesn't. What I'm what I'm, what I'm being trying to be clear about is anything. we got to be very clear about biology, and we cannot create a situation where we're overlooking our biology because of who we wish we were socially. No. Um, and it's just like there are certain like look at birds. Right. You find examples where they're one species. Let's take a cardinal or a blue jay or something. Right. The male is bright, showy, flashy, dances, sings. Right. The, 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 the female doesn't do any of those things. Right. They're brown and drab and they spend all their time protecting the nest. So these are hard differences. So those roles are hardwired into us. And I think so you're really confused by what I'm saying. I'm not saying let the women in so that they can win. I'm not saying that. I'm saying have it be an option for women to compete. And there will be there will be tears. Maybe not the top. There may not be any women in the NBA or whatever. But there would definitely be some women balling in high school. Possibly even balling on D2. Yeah, but I got to be honest. Teams. They do you that. Know what I'm they do that. Like I had a girlfriend in high school who was really good at basketball. They let her play on the guys' team. She played varsity. She was dope as shit. I mean, it does. The, kick, the kicker on one of my football teams. Yeah. So it, I mean, it, it happens when that exception needs to be made. But if, if if we're on the same page, then let's not argue about it. But I'm just trying to be clear, like because you know, Lena just said, let's just totally get rid of all the gender roles. I'm just saying, there's a reason we have some of these things. And male and female, we can be the same species. We can be valued equally and still be honest about our differences because that I think ultimately helps everybody like one of the things I'm always concerned about is the push to make more equity professionally and in terms of you know women can be the president the CEO and all of that that's great my mom was a corporate executive I wouldn't have the life I have now if it wasn't for a black woman be able to break through those glass ceilings at the same time my mom was a homemaker right and that was very important to her and so I don't want people to denigrate people who have maternal instincts or domestic drives or want it right so I, that's all I'm saying is is you, you know that's that's always our thing because we see that a lot and I know you guys aren't yeah. saying that but I see this a lot like when I was at Penn State we saw just everything was a social construct right and they tried to tell us stuff like rape isn't about sex it's about power and they're like okay but you're not looking at the data because the data very much suggests that it's about sex right and so we it, we have constructs that we have a similar conversation about race where we'll say race is a social construct yeah it may be but we have to deal with the racial the, the racial realities of people of color's lived experience so it's just I'm, I'm always just playing that dance of like I'm all for equality but I have been in positions where it gets too much to like, oh, we can just wish it to be human nature the way we want it to be, and everybody will be the same. And I don't want to live in that world either, uh, and I don't think most people do. But I think I think we're good on that. Um, yeah, I hear everything you're saying, yeah, and yeah. I think I agree with everything you said. I, I think. The, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, I think if we applied gen, um, if we applied skill based matchmaking <laughs> of sorts to to sports in general, it, it probably would divide pretty pretty nicely along gender lines because in general the the men are going to perform better um but then that that system would give room for outliers right and i think that, that would be healthier for competition yeah but it's it's not important too. none of this is none of this matters this is just sports i don't yeah I don't yeah yeah about sports <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um wayne go ahead before i play this Yeah, Carrie Ann's with me. I uh, thought Wayne was going to say like. something. She's saying, oh, I'm sorry. Did, I, go ahead, I, Wayne. I had to do something. No, I'm all for what you're saying, and I understand the data, but you also have to understand that there are so many garbage, garbage men that are in positions where they are only because it's men only. You know, motherfuckers who are just filling out the team. Motherfuckers who aren't that good or coordinated but they're just a body there because they're um, because they're men like these are the people that are absolutely the most invested in gender roles gender norms and all that stuff and anything that can be a blow to their ego i'm all about it you're saying they don't want to have 
to compete against girls, basically. Yeah, because they know they shit. They know they're garbage. <laughs> like, I had a roommate like that. I was like, he was like, no, men should never compete with women in anything. And I'm like, okay, so I have an aunt. Can you beat my aunt in um in a in a shooting contest at a shooting range? It's like, yeah, she's a woman. I'm like, my my aunt what? is my aunt is uh I believe US Army Ranger trained. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah she's a woman. You know what I mean? Like those motherfuckers I can't stand. And they're the reason I need like I want to get rid of a lot of barriers because they would they would just get smacked in the mouth by better competition. By by non-male competition you get what i'm saying yeah i get that yeah. but we also should have let my sister is like my sister is mad good at basketball and uh she could beat a lot of guys playing a basketball. lot of guys not everybody not lebron but a right. lot of people but here's the thing too like we have to do a couple things here one we shouldn't let these weak ass males who are really not part of the conversation anyway and they're not being reasonable right like you saying oh the you know, to be honest, there probably is differences in shooting, such that it wouldn't be fair if you had men and women compete against shooting again, because there's huge, huge evolutionary differences in the the pressure on the male brain to shoot shit out oh, of long range. You keep missing the point. I'm not. T- I'm saying a you, my U.S. Army Ranger, uh, aunt. I mean, uh, aunt. Right, but here's what I'm getting at. You're gonna let doesn't shoot. Right, I know, but here's what you're saying. You're gonna let that over represent. So, like Serena Williams will tell you. That in her estimations, not my words, her words, she wouldn't even be ranked if she was competing against the professional men. Okay. So, yeah. so yeah, what I'm saying is, the context of sports. You so want to in the context the, of the sports, majority. and yeah, there will be women, in that, but that's just, in other words, I'm just, that's just tough titty. Like that's just, that's just gonna have to be the case because if you opened it up too much, the truth is that last guy on the, in the NFL on a, on a basketball, he's still gonna be a guy because on average he's gonna be taller, he's gonna be faster. I'm not faster, saying open up be, the NFL. I'm saying yeah. open up all the other shit. Bro. Oh, like, we with you on the chess club in the shooting range. No, I mean high school basketball. There's no reason it should be mixed gender I, basketball. Yeah. Nobody's if you're good enough, you you would be, you know, already scouted. What you will end up with Everybody and else. I guess it's fine, but what you'll end up with is you'll end up with men's basketball, which is effectively called co ed basketball, and then women's basketball. So women will get to play on the women's team, and then if they're good enough, a couple, and again, I did that. We already, like, I literally had a girlfriend. Would, That's exactly oh, what she did. That, that paradigm would not be there. It would just be the NBA and then a women's league. It would still be just the NBA. <laughs> it's not the NBA co-ed. You're putting that label onto it. It wouldn't be that. I'm just saying that's what it would be. You're just not calling it that. What are you saying? No, it's not. No, I'm saying that it would just still be the NBA because the level of talent wouldn't change. If there is one person in there that's a woman or somebody who's trans in the NBA, it's still the NBA. It's no longer the NBA co-ed. It, it's not that. It's never that. It's still the standard. You've just opened it up so that more people can apply. I, 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 okay. I guess we're just disagreeing about the semantics. I think we're saying the same thing. I, and I, I don't, I don't all. disagree. Not I don't at think. all. Because you're minimizing it. You're lowering it. You're lowering How many women do you think I'm excluding from the NBA right now? Zero. Right now, maybe one in like five years. Maybe. So why? So then what? I don't understand what we're disagreeing about. No, I'm saying you're excluding it by. You're, it's not the NBA in your mind. I'm still saying it is the NBA. Just because another person is on the court, it's not. It's not co-ed. It's not a it's it's not a thing that needs to be lessened or have like training wheels added onto it. That's I don't say it's a lesson. I'm just saying it. it well, all I'm saying is if you do this, because this is already done. This is what happens, right? You create a situation where you say JV basketball, varsity basketball, anybody can play. All right. So you have a couple girls. They're good as shit. They're on the team. That now effectively makes that a co-ed team. You're not calling it that, but that's all I'm saying is that all it's you're doing a, is all I'm saying the is the goal Wayne. is not co-ed. The goal is not hey, let's have men and women play together. Well, that's not okay. the goal. The goal is to get the best person. Okay, but you're still going to need it will be co-ed. Uh, yeah. exactly, yeah. and you're yeah. still going to need another co-ed. exclusive league. Yeah, there's yeah. no requirements girls. on it's how many girls co-ed, need to be which is different from actual co-ed. And then you're like, still going to have to have a girls league. Sure. Where yeah. boys are not allowed to play. So why is it? Can you explain the differences? 
There's no rule now. I, I think Wayne thinks for now. I guess I, I don't. I, I guess he thinks there's a law against a man, a woman playing in the NBA or something. They almost put Cheryl. Well, here's an example on the on the, on the NBA. There was talk oh. about it. I wanted to play in women's lacrosse in high school. Right. I ended up playing in guys lacrosse, uh, which I didn't enjoy as much. Um, it was and a I woman sucked at, and I ended up quitting. She wasn't allowed to play. I'm sorry. I just thought of that. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So like, I mean, there are these examples. Um, where like I think it would have been nice if I could have played on on the girls lacrosse team. I don't think that that would have, mm-hmm. or maybe that would have been unfair. Maybe um, like I I should have tried to find like a guys league that plays women's sports or I, I don't know. Like I don't know how to make that fair. But like I I was not very good at lacrosse. And if you look if you compared me to college girls lacrosse players they would you know crush me so it's um is that is that somewhere where like it would be better to just have skill based and then let i mean there's like like, there's always examples so like in my own experience like when i was in high school my best friend who was two years older than me played on the field hockey team he mostly did it to get in shape for basketball he was actually really good became faster than everybody else on the basketball team Decent field hockey player. Now, Title IX law, which I think are literally already takes care of this, literally says by law, if you don't have a separate team for a particular gender, you have to let them play on the other team. So that's why you have those girls who are kickers and are on the offensive line on the football team because there's no girls football team. You have to let them try out for the football team. They make the football team. They make the football team. So my school basically came to me and said, because I, I decided the year after he graduated that I wanted to play on the field hockey team. And they came to me and they said, by law, you can sue the school and we'd have to let you play on Title IX. But we're trying to join something called the Patriot League. And the Patriot League is a private league. And our school needed to join that league because we were getting our ass handed to us by public schools all the goddamn time. Um, and the Patriot League only allows girls to play field hockey so i was basically like put in that situation like what do you how do you want to play this right and so we came up with the compromise of me being the manager of the field hockey team and one of the assistant coaches and so that got me in with the team and practice and traveling and all that stuff but i just had to accept that this is the direction my school wanted to go ultimately i don't even think sports should be a part of this conversation because it's literally an area of about physical excellence. And I think it's, it's all about extreme performance anyway. And I think it totally distorts the really meaningful strides we can be making towards um, equity because we're constantly getting hung up about stuff that I just think, you know, I, I don't even have anything against Wayne's solution. I effectively think that's the situation we find ourselves in. But there, there's a couple other things to it. We've got to be reasonable about our social norms. And there is a level of distaste for men competing against women. And I don't think that's going anywhere. And I don't think it's wrong. Because, again, it comes from this thing where, for the most part, a man beats a woman's ass in a fight. Nobody's fucking impressed, nor should they be. Now... That does mean for a lot of men, there's a lot at stake when you, there, there's, there's very, you have nothing to win competing against women. Now, people don't like to hear this, and I, and I totally get Wayne, like, yeah, there's a lot of really weak ass men who are insecure by women. It's fine, that's always going to be the case, but emasculation is still. I'm not being too general. Emasculation no, is a you, real thing. And so if you're, if you're going to say, like, let's just open it all up. There's, that's true. There's no doubt that that's not a, that there's a real thing. There's a distaste in people's mouth where you lose to a girl. You got beat by a girl. But that male what it ego, is. bro. It's that male ego. It's not male ego. Man. Let me tell you why. Because you keep saying, like, a man, if a man beats a woman in something, people aren't supposed to be impressed. They're You're not. talking in general terms. You're not talking about... Wayne, I'm, associate, like, I'm an anthropologist. I'm always going to talk in general terms because no, we're talking about I'm, populations. 
But yeah, right, you're talking about populations, but then we're talking about sports. We're talking about exceptional individuals. All right. All right. As soon as you, you remake the so human psyche, telling, I'll be good. No, but what I'm telling you is that motherfuckers like Muhammad Ali's daughter, Leah Ali, is a better fighter than probably forty to fifty percent of of fighters. Right. And if she was fighting lower. men, she would not have a career. Bullshit. Because people men wouldn't Bull. want to get in the ring with her. Bull. Oh. But she can still throw hands and fight a lot of the men at her. Level. I don't disagree with that, you, Wayne. All I'm that's all my, I'm saying that's a difficult is, sport. All to I'm compare saying is that's the worst sport. sport. You're going again. You're yeah. picking no, really bro. bad examples, but that's not a I bad example. It, it is a bad example, example is because it's a fight. It's, it's a top. fight. It's, it's literally not the top versus the top. You I, you keep missing right. my point. It's 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 example aside. aside. Wayne, it's just the theory. Mediocre motherfuckers versus. Okay, but versus you're, other non men who are exceptional still, at their you're sport. You're still bro. missing what I'm saying, Wayne. What I'm saying is setting the male ego aside because I hate when people do this. I'm you want to you want to get strong. I got there's, there's I, I don't even think this is arguable. It's a cultural phenomenon. It, a, a person's response is not just a person. I, I've told women this all the time. You cannot drag me around a dog in a dog collar as my girlfriend, have the community laughing at me, and then go, oh, well, Jay, it's your male ego. No, there is a, there is a social, cultural context to all behavior and all responses to behavior. So, yes, it would be great if we had a human psyche where men were just like I don't really care and I'm gonna go again but we don't and so the reality oh, is is we live in a culture where that is considered emasculating and it's for good reasons it's for deeply psychological evolutionary reasons it's not just some simple thing like people like I, look I just think this male ego I get it but I'm gonna be honest with you people are a bit too quick to throw the male ego under the bus. They're not quite, at least from my perspective, serious about the evolved psychology behind the male ego and the social consequences of it. So yes, it would be great if men just woke up tomorrow or took a get the fuck over it pill and all of a sudden everybody, uh, a woman crossed up a dude and dunked on him on the basketball court, everybody just said, he was just a better basketball player today. But human psychology is not there yet. And I do think it's an unreasonable expectation to put pressure on people to work a way that the human brain just doesn't work. I feel the same thing about jealousy in relationships. Anybody that dates me has to accept I have jealousy in my brain and really good reasons. I have really traumatic experiences coming up where my relationships were constantly under attack from parents, from older brothers, from other guys. So yeah, it's something I'm on high alert about. Now, can a woman sit here and go, Jay, the world would be so much better if men didn't feel sexual jealousy and I could just go wherever I want and you didn't care? Of course, it would be great if I could just set my ego aside and not feel tormented by the possibility of, but guess what? I'm not there yet. And so I'm not going to put myself in a situation with somebody who can't Meet me where I'm at. And so I'm, I'm with people about creating a better future. But as a biological anthropologist who sees people as animals, I'm, I'm always going to temper who I think we can be with who I understand us to be. We got to start with where we're at to get where we're going. And I just think baby steps. Um, and, and, and my main point is, yes, there is an issue with the male ego, but it's such a bigger societal level thing that it's it, it becomes a bit too easy to me to just say, well, insecure dude to small dick shouldn't be so jealous about getting embarrassed by women. It, sure, but we're just nowhere near that state of play. You know what, Jay? Sure, bro. I just think that you're terrified of getting hit by a woman, but sure, I understand you and where you're coming Wayne, from. I, I dated powerlifters. I mean, I've possible, dated Jay. girls that are bigger and stronger than me and can pick me up and toss me around. I'm just no. I'm talking about getting embarrassed in a competition like that. When you talk, when I say male ego, I don't mean just. 
I keep talking about the individual. The individual man is not at the top. The individual man is garbage. He needs competition. He needs to be put in his place. I need those motherfuckers. So things can change. I don't need a men's league and then an everybody else league. I need a league. I need people to compete and understand at a lower level that, hey, we can all kind of do this shit. So you just want to, you just think you're going to get in a ring, you get beat up by a girl in the ring, and and, and you're just going to shake her hand, and everybody's just going to clap at the end. I don't give a fuck about everybody else, man. Well, Most that's you. Trash. That's you. Why does everybody else have to have your psychology? They don't have to, but they could be. Be better. I'm telling them be better. They I don't think they can. World. I think I think you're I think you're doing what religious people do. You're just wishing. Nah, bro. Wishing if people, away the no, if, if people competed more, if it's like it's like co-ed sports. You bet you're gonna have better relationships if you're around the opposite gender, especially at a young age. Like, come on. Uh, okay, but then there's but then our bodies get different, and there's a reason. All right, well, cool. You keep saying our bodies get different, okay. but you keep talking I, about the I, top. I I'm talking about all the fat I mean, I motherfuckers it was an down here who, who, who do uh, the minor league shit. But Wayne, the you know, the high you know, kids, you know the what they do? You know kids, what they're really doing? They're playing co-ed up until it becomes pretty reasonable. You know what then they're then doing when they're not at the highest level? They're playing at the YMCA. There's nothing stop. There's no nothing stopping you from. You woman, you could ball out at the wife. You want to go to your local gym, and 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 if there's a girl at your boxing gym right now that could throw hands and spar with you, and she's at your level, there's literally nothing stopping her from getting in the ring with you. I'm literally only saying at the highest levels where there's cleared. And again, Wayne, I worked in a lab where it was our job to measure these different. It was literally my job to measure populations of males and females in things like muscle mass and hand strength and hormone levels. I've seen this data. It's so clear. And again, I'm as liberal and progressive as I want to be, but I'm trying to be reasonable and saying like, there are these, and, and, there, and we don't talk about them as much, but there, there are other areas where there's cognitive tasks or physical tasks that women are much better at. And it's unfair to ask men to compete with women in those things. And it's not that women are, it's just, it's just there's huge differences in the brain. We really know that women are far better at this task than men are. And if we ask, if we're going to create the best of the best situation, the women are going to outperform the men. It's not even interesting anymore. That's why you want to do it that way, so that you're actually competing against People that, I, I don't know. So it's just, I think we're arguing semantics here about really rare cases. But no, I, I, I don't know. I, like, I, I was just putting in the side chats, You know, right. I love science. And, and I think I, I, I think science is great. But I think, I, I don't think it's, can, I, 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 science changes to me. Like evolution science today isn't what evolution science was when Darwin first came up with it. Mm. Um, we're going to know a lot more uh a hundred years from now, a thousand years from now, I, I think that that argumentation, while like Lena, she sounds very intelligent, probably smarter than me. Um, I, I do find that like that line of argumentation can can some sometimes do more harm than good. It, it feeds the it, it feeds what theists say when they're talking mm -hmm. about the religion of science. Yeah, um, I'm not saying you don't use scientific arguments, but like like Simus was po pointing out. Um, intertwine it with some philosophy, but also intertwine it with some things that just normal people are going to like understand and know. Like most people don't go through life thinking along the terms of the scientific method. Um, so, so I don't know. I, I, I think that they're smart and they made good points, but at the same time, I just, I was like, I was kind of like cringing the whole time. So, yeah. Yeah, I know. I mean, you make the, the point I was, I was going to kind of make there, which is that one of the labels that gets thrown at atheists in general is uh that of scientism right and we take yeah. science to be our god right uh, and absolute claims are going to always uh call that criticism onto us uh, which is why I, I i try like richard not to make any absolute claims whatsoever and when i say i know something uh i have a particular definition of knowledge which is um very um what's the word i'm looking for here uh, which is, if, which is called. Uh, I have a particular claims whatsoever.
I said, this stream proves you're an absolute moron. Those are my closing thoughts. Pocket Locker 86 time. I never plug my channel. I don't give a fuck about Richard. Oh, Lord, I got to go before they start talking evolution. <laughs> Because they were about to do that shit, y'all, where they start talking evolution. They start talking about science. Um, you know, they've been misrepresenting this shit the whole time. But again, he acts like he's just so pleased by all of this. And then when Lena's comment Lena, comes, uh, when I say I know something, uh, I have and, uh, a particular uh, definition of evolution. No, because he says that... He, <sighs> Well, I don't know, Lena, what's your impression? He's told me that it, he, he's not because he says that all of his stuff is consistent with science. So Richard Madsen isn't a person who, like, will deny our current scientific understanding. He just basically argues that his okay. notion of God subsumes all of the scientific facts. Is that your understanding, Lena? He does. He does do that. YouTube Punk says, I think some co-ed distinctions were made so girls wouldn't be beating boys. Yeah, I mean, that's, I, don't, I don't think that's unreasonable. Which is um, very, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, which, is, which is called fallibility. So there is no such thing as any absolute truth, as far as I'm concerned, that could be known. Right? Uh, and that's just the relationship that uh, we have as uh, imperfect human beings to our to our world and the fact that we are trapped in this vat called a brain in my opinion uh, and the best way we can get to knowledge of course is through the scientific method because that is uh, what is 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 because um, that process utilizes induction and induction i tend to feel is far more powerful for finding things about the world which are unknown uh, than any kind of uh, a priori um, argumentation and that's just my personal viewpoint on it. Um, Hard so. to argue with, guys. All right, thank okay. you all very much for coming in and for your input and to Hunter Biden's laptop. I want to say <laughs> to your statement, <laughs> at Demolished Doctrine, at Richard Madsen, this stream proves you're an absolute moron. Those are my closing thoughts. Pocket Locker 86 time, oh Lord, I got to go before they start talking evolution. I'd like to say thank you for that comment. Everything was either harsh. abbreviated. It was either abbreviated or spelled correctly, and I appreciate that. Yeah. Wow, I, that I hate harsh. it. I do hate it when scientists make absolute claims, though. Yeah. But you love it when Midnight Sparkle, doing, huh? uh, <laughs> meet Holy Spackle. Holy Spackle, welcome to coming in All just... Right. Uh, Lean is out. I'm out. That was it. I cannot listen to any more Richard Madsen. Are we done, Lena? Did, did, we, did we miss anything else? Lord knows. I, oh, God, Richard Madsen's just the worst. Just the worst. The worst. Y'all, is it really three o'clock in the morning already? Why does time hate me? What did, I, what did I do? What did I do wrong? What did I do to deserve this? All right, let's check out this. Uh, oh, I wanted to do this reacting to cringe fundamentalist. I guess we'll do that tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be fun, too. If you were to ask me to give you just one reason why I'm an atheist, I could probably condense it down to a lack of sufficient evidence for the existence of a god or gods. But if you were to ask me why I'm not a Christian, it would be a lot harder for me to give you just one answer because the Bible and most Christian interpretations come All right, I got Wayne. I just wanted to shout out the Gallagher. I got Wayne and Carrie Ann and Punk and Lena and Joel with me. Wayne, what are you working on? Oh, I'm the only person streaming right now, I guess. Never mind.
All right, here we go. I'm here. With a plethora Joel's of here. fatal problems, any one of them is enough to bring the entire house of cards crashing down, but one of them stands above the rest as the most damning catastrophe for the Christian faith. And you don't need a PhD in history or extensive knowledge about science, religion, or philosophy to see why. And no, it's not the problem of evil or suffering. This is the problem of instruction. Christianity's fatal error. The God of the Christian faith is often referred to as an omni-god, because he's believed by most Christians to be omnipotent or all-powerful, omniscient or all-knowing, omnibenevolent or all-loving, and omnipresent. He's basically everywhere at once. Some apologists prefer the term maximally great. God can be defined as a maximally great being. And in order to be maximally great, a maximally great being would have to be all-powerful, all-knowing, and morally perfect in every possible world. If you assume that this kind of God exists, then you're left with a major problem. The problem of instruction. To understand this conundrum, we first need to start with a hypothetical, a thought experiment. Forget everything that you know about the Bible for just a moment and pretend that you're in a hypothetical alternative universe with a different omni-god. If this deity is all-loving, all-knowing, omnipresent, and all-powerful and is trying to communicate the most important message in the universe to his or her children, how would they communicate this vital message? And conversely, if this god either didn't exist at all or turned out to be limited in knowledge, love, power, or locality, what would you expect to see instead? In the first scenario with the Omnigod, you would expect perfect communication. Any decent newspaper editor knows that the average person reads at or below the 8th grade level, and they tailor their paper accordingly, so as to be widely accessible and easily understood. They avoid technical jargon and ambiguous words as much as they possibly can, and they provide clarification and define and explain what they mean when they need to. We should expect that an all-knowing god of the universe who created the brains of their target audience would know this, would know our cognitive and linguistic shortcomings and would craft this critical message with similar precision. Now, there's a number of reliable ways that this message could be perfectly transmitted. At first I thought maybe God could place enormous, divinely protected plaques all over the world with very literal, extremely <laughs> clear instructions on He could literally write it in them. the These sky! Uh, cheers, Yang. I want to take a shot. Appreciate everybody. Plaques would be indestructible and tamper-proof, since what good is a divinely inspired message without divine preservation? As society and language change, the messages could update to ensure maximal clarity, keep up with current events, and meet the needs and answer the questions of God's children, sort of like God's message board. Or he could write a message for all of us to see in the sky, or even on the moon. But then I thought, not everyone's literate, or speaks the same language. Some people are blind, etc. But remember, no challenge is too big for an all-powerful God, and an all-loving God would care enough to overcome this challenge. If God is everywhere at once, he could just tell us his message in person and coach us directly. But some people might argue that his presence would overwhelm us, and while I think that's kind of a cop-out, I do acknowledge the objection. So what if instead each person received God's message in their own language, hand-tailored for them such that it's perfectly communicated in a way that everyone would understand and reach the same conclusion. A message preloaded into everyone's brains, mental firmware that we're all born with. It would come straight from God, not through human authors. It would be directed to all mankind from the get-go, not just to a <coughs> tiny handful of self-proclaimed chosen people. And there would be no internal inconsistencies in the message, no historical contradictions or scientific inaccuracies. And unlike with a conscience, what we deem as right and wrong wouldn't change from culture to culture, and you wouldn't have psychopaths who lack one altogether. This would be a ubiquitous, accessible, clear, and perfect message. Because the communication of a perfect God should be perfect. But what if the alternative was true? What if there's no God at all, or the God slash gods who do exist aren't omni-gods like the God of the Bible? Well, we'd expect to see a very, very different result. We would expect to find wildly different religions popping up all over the world, written by scientifically ignorant ancient authors desperately trying to make sense of their tiny, myopic view of the universe around them. You wouldn't expect to find any supernatural insights about 
germs, <coughs> neurochemistry and mental health, heliocentrism, <coughs> DNA, any knowledge of other galaxies, or any information not already available to their primitive cultures. At best, you might occasionally just get a few lucky guesses here and there. Many, if not most, of these holy books would place humanity at the center and contain stories about human experiences, of violent warlords, superstitions, wild legends, human heroes, and of unseen monsters lurking in the dark. Morality would vary from culture to culture, with some even sacrificing animals or even fellow humans to the gods. But strangely, no gods would step in to correct these gross misconceptions about their bloodlusts or mentor humanity on right and wrong. Is he asleep? No, no. I'm pretty sure he's dead. Instead, cultures would have to progress morally on their own, because these holy books would be chained to the morality of their time, justifying yeah, barbaric practices good. like slavery, witch burning, because yes, they would still believe in witches, One of my homophobia, favorites, really. sexism, genocide, etc. Matter of fact, I think channels like Holy Kool-Aid is kind of like why I got into longer format stuff and like why I got into streaming, because like i couldn't find enough of this stuff right like he makes these dope videos and then i think i started to find more of like this community because like he just doesn't <laughs> don't make stuff fast enough you know what i mean like him and rationality yeah. rules and genetically modified skeptic like their shit so their shit's so dope but have you ever had that feeling before where you're like waiting for them to like drop another video you know <laughs> and <laughs> I yeah. just subbed to this guy last night, man. I think he's awesome. Oh yeah, man. You gotta see you're in that you're in that sweet spot now where you can like uh marathon a bunch of his stuff. But yeah, he's really good. Really good religions springing up everywhere, some would fizzle out, while others might be more relatable and would spread more rapidly. They may contain more contagious ideas with stronger sticking power. If you haven't realized already, Christianity is described perfectly by the latter scenario, in direct conflict with its insistence on the existence of an omnigod, a claim on which the truth of the Bible is entirely contingent. But it gets even worse for Christianity. For those who don't know the history of the Bible, it was concocted millennia before the printing press, video cameras, or the internet in a small, rural, mostly illiterate backwater by otherwise insignificant goat herders searching for spiritual significance. Its contents were compiled and molded over time like a patchwork of stories with centuries between the events described and when they were actually written down, a multi-generational game of telephone, and centuries more passed before they were finally copied onto our oldest surviving manuscripts. None of our original documents have been divinely preserved. For example, the story of the Exodus, if it did occur, would have happened sometime between the 15th and 13th century BCE. But most scholars don't think it was actually compiled oh, into its current head, written form body, until centuries head, later, sometime head, between the late body, 6th and 4th head, centuries BCE. Head, and our oldest surviving, body, albeit fragmentary, oh, manuscript of the Exodus box. dates to no earlier than 250 BCE, about a thousand years after the events described. And it's even worse for the older stories in the Bible contained in, say, the book of Genesis, like Sodom and Gomorrah, or the flood and creation myths. And even the various later manuscripts that have survived are riddled with copying errors, mistakes, and changes between them. Passages have been added and removed. For example, Matthew 18 jumps straight from verse 10 to verse 12. That's weird. And just one chapter earlier, Matthew 17 skips from verse 20 to verse 22. These missing verses weren't in our earliest manuscripts, but were added later and were considered part of the Bible for centuries before we discovered these older manuscripts and edited these verses back out. The same is true for the ending of the Lord's Prayer, although some translations like the King James Version still <laughs> leave this later edition in, while others don't. By contrast, Matthew 12, 47 also isn't in our earliest New Testament manuscripts and was added later, but unlike with these other examples, this one was never removed. The same is true for the story of the woman caught in adultery. These are just a few of the many known examples of how the Bible has changed over time, and we'll never know the exact number of edits that have occurred since we don't and probably never will have any of the original texts. The Bible is riddled with scientific inaccuracies, internal contradictions, 
patterns and mistakes where it deviates from the historical record. I've done in-depth videos on all of these things. And that's not to mention the addition of all of the horrifically immoral sanctions contained in its pages. Sure, it's easy for apologists to say that these are all misinterpretations of God's intended message, but doesn't that speak to God's failure as a communicator? Does God not understand the minds of his creation or the importance of clarity? Or is he not capable of clear communication? Unless he doesn't exist, isn't present, or doesn't care. No matter how you look at it, this is strong evidence against the God of the Bible. But imagine for a moment that the Bible is true, but all of the verses on, say, slavery in the Bible aren't meant to be taken literally. After all, a benevolent God would never condone something so utterly atrocious. But it's written literally, it's taken literally, <coughs> and for thousands of years, God sits back and watches, arms folded, as millions of people are enslaved, with his words used as the primary justification for it. And he offers not so much as as an amendment or a clarifier. During this time, it would take centuries of Old Testament laws before this perfect, inerrant message would finally get an update, a New Testament. But even with the New Testament, after a thousand years of beta testing his laws, when God could have patched the system with some type of a clarifier about not owning another human being, we would instead get slaves obey your masters, leading to centuries more of religiously sanctioned atrocities. And even if none of that was the case, and this message- Joel, how do you, how strong of a factor do you think slavery is in like the deconversion of people? He had to deal with something that worked. Oh. Oh, yeah, he said be right back. What do you think, Aaron? Ask again. Do you think, uh, like, the slavery, like, the fact that God never really addresses slavery is a big deal in the deconversion of people? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the fact that God has a separation of people based on gender, based on where they were born, it's ridiculous. It creates a separation. It's imposing absolute us, them thinking. Yeah. So they're taught us, them thinking. Do you think and that's um, part of the biggest problem in our society? Do you think people think about that like, um, like before they leave, or do you think it becomes a bigger pro like after you leave, it's more noticeable? Since I haven't really been a full into it believer, oh, I, I yeah, yeah. really couldn't. Yeah, yeah. Chat, what do, what do you what do y'all think? I feel like um Man, I don't know. I feel like it wasn't it wasn't for me. Like, I don't know. I feel like now that I'm not a Christian, it's a huge problem with Christianity, but when I wasn't when I was a Christian, you didn't notice it. Yeah, but I don't even know what yeah, that I've means. What do you mean? Like it doesn't notice? Like how do you, how do you not well, notice? In chat, the Christians I talk to, they don't understand how I see it that way, and I'm just like, how can you not? If you're telling me you're a responsible human being in this world who cares about other people, how can you look at that and not see it for what it is? That is, I mean, that to me is just baffling. I cannot understand. It, it, I don't know. Maybe it's because I've seen such, uh, I guess, bad human behavior in my existence. I'm not shocked by it. I'm not thrown off by it. I'm not offended. Right. Unfortunately, it exists. We, I know it exists. But... I also see how it exists, why it exists, you know. Bible addresses some of those things, though. What, the Bible? Um, yeah, um, it, the greed, you know, the greed and the be humble, those kind of things. You know, Jesus, the Jesus part, I right. guess, is where it was trying to address them. But it really didn't do a good job. <laughs> Really didn't. Because yeah, I mean, they were still they were still uh, trying to mold their old religion into something new that was going to work back then, but they still had the old ideas to deal with. So 
you got to find that middle ground. It's always about the middle ground. Yeah, and for me, I, um, man, I feel like I wasn't noticing or, or wasn't paying it. I guess overlooked is probably the best way to put it. Well, all examples are put into hero stories, you know? It's the stories that the winners tell. You've got, they were oppressed, they were being beat down, and they finally got theirs and got, you know, justice. Who cares that they enslaved 5,000 people in the process? <laughs> They're the winners, yes! Good saw its way through. So it's hidden. It's hidden within it. Unless you're looking for, you know, possible enslavement and everything. Yeah, if Ozzy said they're under the gods, what could they possibly see? Slavery alone is not enough to wake them up. Also, I think people, um, now that I'm thinking about it, I think they overemphasize Exodus. Like, I think they treat it as though, like, there's all this slavery shit, but then Exodus and God brought his people out of slavery. And so I think I somehow, you, I think I, I rationalize it as somehow like God was all about freedom. And so, yeah, there's like this yeah. slavery in biblical times. And I think you, well, and you even, like, like um, who was it? Jericho. Was it Jericho? The walls of Jericho? Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, they were, they were being liberators. You know, they were being, they're the good guys. It's all about the good guys. So you don't see the negatives within the stories with that good guy narrative. Yeah, I think, uh, like Fati said, deconverse de leave because of their intellectual inconsistencies, then they realize the totality of the social sickness after. Yeah, because you know the Jews weren't the only slaves over there. They had Egyptian slaves, too. You know, they had Roman. They had people People who got conquered became their workers. That's kind of how it worked. You didn't pay a workforce. You just conquered them. So, I don't know. And it's, it's almost that disassociation where we're talking about cultures from the Middle East and assuming it covers us. Sorry, yeah. my dogs might be. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right, well, uh, oh, we dis that, but they're fine. They're fine. Yeah, that, I think, yeah, I, I totally think that's what happens is you dissociate and don't, Imp. we don't, we don't, uh, we're not, we're just not, uh, yeah, we're just under the spell. I think that's the perfect way to put it. Yeah. It it's is completely mad, perfect, and had been communicated perfectly. Much of the world still doesn't have access to it. Human translators have painstakingly tried to yeah, translate Muhammad the Bible used into Islam every to stop language slavery, on exactly. Earth, and after thousands of years, their job's still not done. And all the while, linguistic metaphors and figures of speech have inevitably been lost in the process, unintentionally changing the meaning of the text. Which is why, in English alone, there are dozens of different versions of God's inerrant message. A message so so nebulous that countless interpretations have emerged from those versions, splintering Christianity into tens of thousands of denominations, with entire wars being fought over who's reading it correctly. With all the clarity and precision of a Jackson Pollock painting, core doctrines had to be voted on by people interpreting a loose collection of translations of copies of copies of copies, which happened hundreds of years after the stories allegedly took place. And even after all the books in the Bible were finally finished, for centuries there would be no consensus on which of these books were even canonical and should be included in the Bible, and which shouldn't. And even today, there's still some disagreement over this. Theologians, pastors, and apologists have dedicated decades of their lives to desperately yeah, attempting to somehow mm. salvage this wreck, crafting mm. books, sermons, mm. and lectures filled with mental gymnastics and riddled with logical fallacies. Although, one thing that most of them agree on is that we don't actually know who wrote most of the books of the Bible. They're anonymous! Now you might be wondering, 
With a communication problem this massive, how has this disaster spread so far and wide? Well, one way is through emotional trauma and fear, instilling in people the fear of eternal damnation, teaching them that they have a problem before attempting to sell them the cure. It's also been spread at the tip of the sword, forced upon the conquered, on natives and slaves. Generation after generation has indoctrinated their children, teaching them to believe baseless assertions on faith, teaching them that faith is a virtue. Virtue. Entire countries have adopted Christianity as part of their culture making it a part of a collective identity, fearing that the alternative was divine wrath here on earth in addition to the eternal torturous hellfire of the hereafter. Fear is an extremely powerful tool. And as for the skeptics who dared to doubt, well, for centuries, non-believers have been denigrated from pulpits everywhere, shunned, demonized, ostracized, and sometimes even killed, all for simply being honest enough to point out a few of these glaring problems. To the atheist watching this telecast, if our belief in God offends you, move. Damn. Their planes Damn. leaving every hour on the, on the hour, going every place on planet Earth. Get on one. We don't want you, and we won't miss you. I promise you. Damn. Tell and us the how you cherry really feel. on top of all of this is that the Bible is so long, so convoluted, Tell archaic, us how you and cryptic really that feel. most believers have never even read it through cover to cover. Bam, because boom. if they did, they would see for themselves exactly what I'm talking about. If this idea is new or interesting to you, or you find some value in the videos that I make and the way that I present them, you can support my work with a per video pledge on patreon.com slash holy kool-aid, a monthly pledge on Subscribestar, or a one-time donation on PayPal. Your support is what allows me to do this full time, to pay my editor, to cover all my equipment costs, my travel costs, research, and all of the time that it takes to make these videos. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. Thank you guys so much for your ongoing support of the show, and as always, Man. Dare to be so curious, good. but don't drink the Kool-Aid. So good. Um, I, so I think that's another one that's really shareable. I think I'll make a stream at some point where I go through some of these ones that I'm, sh I'm sharing. Sorry, that I'm saving as far as being super shareable. Um... I want to get into that Derek stream, but if I do, uh, I think I'll probably pour that over to tomorrow. So maybe I'll just start that one tomorrow. Um, cool. Let's do this. I don't know. Let's see. There's an option. We could do something from nothing. I'm not tired. I've been eating too much, drinking too much caffeine. Lately. Now I'm all up. Determined to be skeptical of free will. Here we go. 9 p.m. tomorrow. Another bread of life nonsense. Oh, hell yeah. I'm about this life. In the New Testament, we find this expectation for the kingdom of God, the end of the ages, an apocalyptic fervor. We find this in the book of Revelation. We find this in Paul's letters. And the Jesus Seminar wants to wrestle over whether Jesus actually thought this way or not. I think he did. But today, I have a conversation with Paula Fredrickson asking, are the things that were expected in the New Testament literature actually fail? Did they get fulfilled? Or what was expected? Did it get reinterpreted? Tell me what you think of this episode. This is another one of 12. Thank you to those who made this trip possible. I truly appreciate your help. Paula, I uh, really appreciate this again. I want to ask you about apocalypticism and I'll paint a picture because I was a Christian who had dreams. I didn't tell you this till now. We're doing it on video. I had dreams of the end. Um, I woke up crying multiple times when I believed this back really? in the kid thinking that I was, it was going to happen in my life. The end of the world, some of my loved ones who didn't take Jesus serious enough were going to punished or at least be killed when this happened. Oh. You know, it was real, like in my mind. Yeah. Um, years later, I started to study my Bible and I started realizing Jesus says some things. 
right? Just taking it like what the gospels say, I accept it. That's what Jesus said, because mm-hmm. I was a fundamentalist who believed the Bible was also inerrant, infallible, or at least mostly inerrant and mostly infallible. And um, he says some things that were supposed to happen. And they're supposed to happen soon. But the way I understood them as a Christian, I was like, there's no way any of that already happened. So I ran into like this wall where it was like, either Jesus lied was wrong. You know, the liar, lunatic, or whatever. Right. Uh, C.S. Lewis. Mad, bad, or God. Right. And I said, well, he can't be wrong. Cognitive dissonance, right? Mm-hmm. I had a presupposition there. So he must have been right, but we got it wrong. What does uh, Gilberto Fry say about this stuff? I'm not familiar. Wrong. We, we, we misinterpreted. Mis- yep. Right. And I think this is where realized eschatology comes in. But I would, before we get to realized eschatology, that is something I think we'll do later in another episode. What was expected? The kingdom of God, prepare the way of the kingdom of, you know, prepare the way of the Lord. The kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. And Paul talks about this. We who are alive and remain. What were they expecting to happen? And did it happen? Apocalyptic thought is a very minor theme in Second Temple Judaism. People were not waiting at it like Paul Revere's ride, you know, waiting for, you know, the kingdom is coming, the kingdom is coming. That's a very specific, so it's like a river in the ocean. If the ocean is Jewishness, apocalyptic eschatology is a river within it. When you look at those texts, they're multivocal. You have different combinations of different things. Some of them have a rebuilt temple or an enlarged and improved temple, which you need if all humanity is going to go there. Um, Some of them have um, the defeat of the nations. Some of them have the incorporation of the nations. Some of them have uh, a resurrection of the dead. A lot of them do. A lot of them have uh, a restoration of uh, the tribes of Israel. Um, some of them have a Messiah, others don't have a Messiah. Sometimes God is the one doing the fighting. Sometimes it's an archangel who's been delegated to do it. So you have, it's not a univocal tradition. What is um, hardwired into the vision, if we want to put all of that together in in one ball, um, is that normal history will end. And the day that the kingdom arrives will be different from the day before. There'll be travails before the kingdom, but then ultimately it's a divine comedy. God is going to put history right. And, and it's going to happen if you're an apocalyptic eschatologist. It's going to happen imminently. So the difference between Isaiah, which is a, a kind of restoration theology, on that day all the nations will come and gather in Jerusalem. Um, and then you get... Um, something like um, Tobit, which is a little bit more cranked up. And um, the, na- the nations will destroy their idols and there'll be a new temple and everything else. And it's, it's going to happen within a medium range or Daniel. And then you have the Gospels where the time frame is what intensifies. It goes from on that day to soon mm-hmm. to now. And that's what we seem to hear an echo of in the Gospel of Mark. And that's what we hear directly in Paul's letters. It's, this is going to happen now. So what's going to happen? The fact that Jesus' followers, as far as I can tell, or some of them at least, were persuaded that he was raised from the dead, says to me that the resurrection of the dead was one of the elements in Jesus' apocalyptic proclamation. Uh, When he talked about the kingdom, he was talking about the punishment of sinners, he was talking, of course, part of his call about sinners is to, it's the hard sell, right? You better repent now before the kingdom comes or else this will happen. Mm. Um, John the Baptist, you know, the winnowing fork will come and you'll be burned or you won't be burned. So um, there's that kind of punitive language. In Paul, as in Isaiah, you have both idolaters are going to be punished and the wrath that is coming is going to go to them. And then you have these visions of universal redemption. In the, in the same authors. The transition is in Romans, where you have most of humanity, which is worshiping idols, condemned in Romans 1, and you have the fullness of the nations in all Israel in Romans 11. So it's not, it's a very um, elastic tradition as well. But the, the main point is that normal time and normal social experience will end. And specifically with the resurrection of the dead, 
neighborhood's going to look different. So it didn't happen? As far as I can tell. Of course, zombie apocalypse, maybe it happened in a way. That's <laughs> where I wanted to ask you, Matthew, Matthew 28, where the... The dead, saints rise. Right. right. It makes me think Christians, this Christian author, is trying to somehow reconcile as late in the game as this is there's got to be something going on he, the heartbeat has to keep going he can't quite he's not as apocalyptic right as maybe paul or what well he uh, delays it a little right. which is what's his choice i mean he's he's a third or fourth generation author but um i think his um his allegiance to literary tropes ran away with him because where do the saints go what happens to them i mean they're, they're just dangling in the narrative they're just sort of hanging around. I mean, what's going on? They, right. You never hear from them again. So, but that lets you know how hardwired the resurrection of the dead is as an apocalyptic trope. Mm. I, this, that, quite, that whole pericope always made me wonder, what is this here? It's only in Matthew. Why is this not, like, is the author trying to save something? The trope got out in front of him. Yeah, because it isn't, wasn't also the trope something that when Jesus rose, so were the saints supposed to rise? Because th it wasn't supposed to be an individual, from what I understand in Jewish thought. Jewish thought expects a, a resurrection of all the dead. There's, I don't know any tradition that says that the dead are supposed to rise when Jesus rose. Um, Jesus rises, and it's obviously something that reconfigures some of the timeline uh, because usually it was the redemption of Israel and then the nations. Mm -hmm. And now it's going to be, according to Paul, well, it started with Israel and now it's going to the nations and then it'll ricochet back to Israel. So there's this back and forth because he thinks he's living in this gap, this wrinkle in time between the resurrection and the imminent second coming. And so he's, he's in that pressurized zone. And, um, but he talks about basically an astral transformation that this body of flesh is going to transmute into a body of pneuma, a body of spirit, 1 Corinthians 15. And then that's, once you have a spirit body rather than a flesh body, um, you're able to go into the upper air, which is where the moon is, and then ascend to where your, where your commonwealth is in heaven. The heavens are above Jesus. the lunar realm. So he's, he's not just <laughs> throwing out metaphors. He's talking, well, you know, he's so talking the, the architecture of the cosmos. He's talking elementary physics, only pneuma. I mean, stars are made of pneuma too. And we all get star bodies. And that didn't happen in Paul's lifetime. I get lonely sometimes. And I just like to have somebody to bounce things off of once in a while. <laughs> I'm always lonely, Jay. <laughs> Appreciate it. Fucking space Jesus everywhere, huh? Um, what is your do? You, do you lean historicist or mythicist or where are you at with all that? Oh, mythicist. Really? Sure. Oh yeah. Um. Oh yeah. There's too much. <clears throat> Again, I um. Like, I see a lot of the, um, like, kind of hallmark Im impression of psychedelic influence in a lot of these religious... Uh, oh, you mean, like, the appearance narratives and stuff? And, or? Well, I, I just think that um, that aspect of the human experience has influenced a lot of the... Oh, kind of like a general religion. psychedelia of thought, like because it's all in the idea sphere, kind of. I wonder, like, yeah, like you don't have to do drugs to, like, you know. Well, I think that probably the high up priests were doing drugs, like, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah, yes, I think that's but then been even but then confirmed in a number of cases, sure, right. And then if that spreads through like congregational experience, right, then like they exactly. can just be lifting their hands to the music, just right? a cultural thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I hear a lot of these concepts of you know, God is this perfect, infinite love, and it's like that just sounds like a someone's high on drugs 
So that's exactly what that sounds but like. But I think with um, particular regards to Christianity, you you think it's more likely that there wasn't even a dude? Um, there's no reason to think that there was, and there's a, there, there seems to be some good reason to think that there wasn't. Okay. Um... As far, at least from what I, maybe I've listened to too much Richard Carrier. Yeah, that's kind of um, what I'm wondering. Is like, so I've read uh, the book Historicity of Jesus, and I took the class the same time Derek took it. I felt like I was a really convinced mythicist, and then I've started to not feel as strongly about it, and I'm still a bit bothered by the lack of academic effort to substantiate mythicism. Like, like I always try to say this as a, you know, get my ass out of jail free card, but I don't want to start a beef with Carrier because I'm a fan and I really like the dude, right? But it bothers mm-hmm. me that he doesn't seem motivated to push the academic case for, his, for, his, for mythicism. And then I kind of feel like, well... It's almost like the Richard Madsen stuff. Like when you start to say, yeah. well, it's so fringe that I'm not even going to try. It's type of deal. And I don't think he say that. I mean, like he got his historicity of Jesus book through peer review, um, which let's just say is not the same in history as it is in science. Um, Cause it's not like he submitted to an editorial board at a journal. It's like he was, People, some people read it, um, but yeah, the deck's more stacked, isn't it? There's just more theists and, like, specifically Christians in the academia. Yeah, yeah, it's, so it's, it's like I don't know. It's very questionable. But um, yeah. So, but then again, I feel like the the case for historicity certain hasn't hasn't been made, and 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 then I feel like it should be the norm to withhold belief until. You know, it can be established. So it it's it's one I'm definitely agnostic, but I like to hear where people are at with it. Yeah, I'm not taking any hard position on it, I guess, even though I said like I'm definitely a mythicist. Um that's just because I, I I haven't heard any compelling argument to think and, and I get some people say like, oh well the historical position is to assume that the person exists. I don't think that's the. <clears throat> I don't think that's the case at all for this for this character in the Bible. No, I I don't think that I mean, should maybe be the I'm default getting position. Wrong. And and I also don't think you can treat it well, like a mundane Australia thing because traditional lands because <laughs> sorry uh, because of all the extra stuff. Right, it's not like accepting the historicity of Socrates or something. Yeah, it, yeah, it's um, and it, it just it doesn't um, help at all to say that. Like I, I don't know what it means to say that there was a real Jesus, considering there's not a consistency of character. Like the the whole argument that it's probably a compilation of different mythical figures seems to be more accurate. Yeah. Right. The, like, and I don't know if that's just from the. I don't think that's necessarily just from the the different um, gospel accounts. And right. The, so then, I, I guess, I guess where I'm going with this, because um, I'm with you, is I'm just wondering, like, what perspective that then should bring to our takes of historical Jesus ideas. So, like, what does it mean to me to say? You know, I get if 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 we start to lean historicist, then we say, okay, well, then who was the dude historically? But if you lean mythicist, then are you saying, are you essentially trying to figure out Hercules' true profession, right? Like you're like you're trying to figure out the essence of the character, right? Like like who is the right? Because one is saying there's a this the lord figure jesus christ is based on a dude and dude was a uh 
a failed apocalyptic prophet, right? But then if you're a mm-hmm. mythicist, then it's like you're saying the character is a failed apocalyptic prophet. Yeah, that's all. I mean, yeah, it's not beyond that. Really. I mean, that's kind of just why I asked because I wanted to see. You know what I mean? To see like that because that informs then how you think about who he was. You got to say if he was first. Yeah, if you're gonna say that he was a real person, um, you're not gonna really be able to say anything about him other than the stories that have been made about him. Right. So it's not doing anything at yeah, all. Yeah, right? that's the whole the, debate's mm, meaningless. Yeah, that's another thing too, <laughs> right? Because and I feel like even Bart Ehrman, I don't know if I want to say he doesn't add do an adequate job of this, or maybe it just doesn't come out strongly enough. But I feel like that does go missing in this whole debate, right? Because I feel like this is what Bart Ehrman does. This is the sense that pissed me off about it, Bart Ehrman, is he's always going, we got to believe there was a dude because the case is so strong that there's a dude because of all this stuff about the dude. But then he turns around in every other seminar, basically says, you cannot believe shit they say about this dude. So I'm like... If you tear down all the pieces of evidence, <laughs> but you still say there's a case here, it's it's just tough for me. But what I'm saying now is that what we should be really getting at is even if there's this, there's the question of is there a dude or not, but then there's the entirely separate question of even if there was a dude, how much can we know about the dude based on what we actually have? And then that gets you into a whole nother can of worms because, again, if enough of those stories are woo-woo or legend or whatever, then uh, we, 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 like you said, it, it renders the whole thing, I think, essentially fucking useless. Which may just be the I case. disconnected for a little bit there, but I heard most of that. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, and then Cameron said, it's just easier to grant that there's a guy. That's what I fear. That's what I fear, is that we're all just doing the, let them have this one. We can't technically prove that there wasn't, and... Uh, you know, we the just claim is so insignificant. Yeah, that we shouldn't be picky. Yeah, it. but I, I, I don't necessarily agree with that. And the reason I say that is because it seems it's so important to Christians. Obviously, you know they'll they'll stand on that even more than they stand on evolution, right? Um, or anti-evolution or whatever. The yeah, fuck. it's almost like I'm not willing. I'm not willing to degrade Jesus to just a guy, for the sake of giving them this win, right? Because it, because they're not the whole thing about Jesus is that it's God, right? And then yes. right, that's, that's, so we're rejecting the whole package. Yeah, <laughs> um, we're just rejecting all of that. And, and 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 here's the thing. I know a lot of people go, well, why do that? Because we can't prove that there was no guy, right? But I think we're missing the opportunity. The opportunity is to get somebody to think better about epistemology. How do we know what we know? And then that can lead them to a genuine understanding of the reasons we doubt his historicity. And I actually think that's incredibly important, right? Because there's a difference with, between convincing a Christian Jesus probably didn't exist. Good luck. And yeah, if that's the case, then probably leave it alone. But to me, it's very useful to get them to genuinely understand and accept why people doubt it. Because then you've opened that door, right? And then now once they realize that there's actual uncertainty about whether or not there was a guy, I think it leads to broader questioning. So I'm almost on the historicity as a wedge strategy, and it's more about the epistemology and just, you know, how would we know? You know, almost like yeah. those comparisons that they use, we could use them against them. Like when they say the bullshit about, uh, well, we have the same similar evidence compared to Socrates or, um, 
you know, George right. Washington. That's what I was gonna say. Then we could be like, fuck, fuck no, context. like we got, we got, we got, we got George Washington's grave, his bedroom, his writings, his pistols, his wife's letter, his family seal, his grandfather's house, his, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> Socrates. Even though, and again, back to it. Man, Socrates ain't 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 gonna come back to judge the living and the dead. But I did hear the motherfucker attended a play about him, right? So there's a, there's stories, of, right? There's 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 even more meat on those bones, right? Where we do have these, you know, stories that be pretty hard to have otherwise, right? Where there's a play written about Socrates and, and allegedly a story based on him, his attendance of a play mocking him or something. We ain't got sh- like that for Jesus. Um, that's reliable, yeah, right? Yeah, just the, the, the pure lack of... Just uh, the pure lack of any of that. And then getting them to really think through that. Getting a Christian to then think through... Okay, we'll give you Peter and Paul, but like when Paul says he has a vision and 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 the two people with him didn't see it, what you call that? And 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 yeah, Richard points out it's all unreliable. Yeah, and Peter's 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 claim to have a vision don't seem to be too much more reliably given that we what we know about brief hallucinations and all these other things, but not even that. It's like, do you really want to rely on your faith on Peter, who seems to have everything to gain here, <laughs> right? <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, like it's just a little. And then again, like you know, it just it just opens the door to other questions. Anyway, all right, um, we're gonna do a quick fight, and then uh, we'll get back into. I actually like this uh, video. Um, Let's do it. But yeah, this 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 that one we gotta. I gotta get some sleep soon. It's late. I yeah, it's late. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna try to go to bed a little bit early and have the last couple nights. But fortunately, I don't have to work. in the UFC at present and when you get some praise from Daniel Cormier when it comes to your offensive takedown game you know you're doing something right. And you talk about wrestlers and judo players and grapplers but this guy just combines all of that. He is able to use foot sweeps from the grappling game. He is able to use I don't think they copied and pasted the Jesus stories. I think they Judaized them and I think it's just complicated. And honestly, I think a lot of it is apologetics. Like they were responding to critiques of earlier versions of the story. Nobody was bitching about post hoc rationalization. Oh yeah. More than five years apart, with the same height and a similar reach. All right, just about ready to go. Oh now man. The All right, this guy clearly has spot. some five-star submission holds that there's literally like damn near no chance to get out of. Like his bar took up the whole circle there was like no it was like overlapping my like there was literally no way to escape so oops that was an accident got between my legs we got to just make sure dude does not get us in a submission hold which is exactly what he's going to try to do if we start fucking him up Yeah, we'll make him 
Oh, and there's a takedown attempt, DC. Not a great one. Might as well Ooh. tell you what the shooting, huh? Yeah, he's your best friend. Tell him that you want to take him to his back and watch him defend. All right, so there it is, the God only takedown. He told everyone here during fight week within earshot that he was going to try to wrestle, try to get this fight to the ground, and had no problem doing so just there. During their fight camp, they made a checklist. They checked off the most important part of the fight, getting an early takedown. Right into side control. He's gonna try to control him, then find a submission. Got it. There he goes. To try to change the position. And we are done. Oh no. We cannot. No, 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 no. Literally <laughs> no <laughs> fucking way to change that shit. You can't even move. What the fuck? What the oh my this guy. Mission beautifully executed there on the ground. What, what, what are you supposed? What are you supposed? Good fight. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> not get grabbed. <laughs> you gotta not get caught. He gets it done by submission tonight, champ. What? Yeah, you, know, you had a chance because you got back up. When you got back up, you had to take your opportunity, but he had you on the wall. Yeah. And I don't know if you had somebody get out of that, but like that was the opportunity to take all risks. Oh my goodness. Because uh, once he had that throw on you, I, mean, I was trying to get away from the wall, and then he just fucking tackled me. Yeah, I mean, instead of trying to get away, the best thing would have just been to go full offense on him. That's his fucking. That's his choke. He's got yeah, some fucking magic fucking leg choke. <laughs> no way out of it. all smiles and rightfully so after he gets the job done by submission tonight. You told me off the air before the fight that Hopefully he's back to knocking people out before. I need like five warm-up fights so I can work up the damn submission defense to... Yeah. Not get choked yeah. out by this guy. Your uh, cakes are looking pretty good. Um, is that not working on that guy? Uh, yeah. I mean, he was checking the leg kicks, but yeah, that was the goal was try to keep some distance on him so I could hit him with some kicks. I got him with a couple, but there you guys with the leg. Yeah. Oh my uh, goodness, that dude is. Delicious. All right, let me switch back. There we go. I'm having the worst night up here at work. I'm sorry, Joel. It's all right. It happens from time to time. Hospitality, baby. That's the same thing Dr. Tabor told me. He's like, it's a cosmic transformation, pretty much. It's like, it's, it's sucks to hear Bro, I used to work at a couple of homes. Hospitality, hospitality via the police. That's oh, man. Yeah. Dude, I used to work at a couple of zones. One of those places with the, you know, the heart shape uh, and champagne yeah. and yeah. hot tubs and shit. Yeah. Oh, God, I could not do that. Yeah, it was a dining room. Sir. Have a good night, places. AR. Good night, AR. Oh, I'm gonna have uh, sleep yeah. too. I gotta get some bed. All right, good night, Lena. Everybody, we'll see you later. Yeah. He has flesh, Thanks. even stars have flesh, as Paul's describing it and stuff. And but it's a different type Lina. of flesh. Different type, yeah, because it's in a different area. So it's yeah. a different neighborhood in the cosmos, absolutely. And also, again, Paul is swimming in pagan water. It's the idea of the ad astra. The ascent of the um, of the soul to the stars, of the, or of Ooh, the dead to the stars, is a good Mediterranean idea. Wow! So we also have in the Book of Revelation, which is, wouldn't you say that's quite apocalypse on steroids, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, the expectation seems to be imminent, and uh, Rome is supposed to get their butts kicked. It seems that's awkward after three twelve when Constantine signs on. Mm. So th that's when gets Athanasius, I think, doesn't Athanasius like go? Well, this is an allegory. Like they really want to. Eusebius, in particular, says uh, it says, "Well, no, it's actually it's a realized eschatology now that Rome Rome is the I'd say is peace from sea to sea." Okay. 
um, yeah, you can reinterpret anything if you have to. Yeah, that's exactly. I, I had Bart Ehrman on for about an hour, right? And we went through pericope after pericope to try and point out contradictions. Like, did Jesus ride one donkey or two donkeys? Christians are trying to do this to make it not a contradiction. Depends on which text you're reading. Right. And he's like, at the end of it, he, the, the hair he has left, he was ready to pull out. And he's like, Derek, you know, I should have said this up front. If you don't want there to be a contradiction, you can make something, no matter what, become something that doesn't have a contradiction. Humans are good at it. Really good at it. Yeah. I do want to mention. I feel so like that's what this Richard Madsen has to be doing at some mention, level. Like, yes, expectations were there. Expectations failed. But what I happens agree. when failure in apocalyptic expectations occurs? And there's a book I have on my shelf at home called "When Prophecy Fails." Mm-hmm. It's not the one about the alien abductees or the alien cult. It's the other one that's Old Testament prophetic traditions mm-hmm. by Robert Carroll and Robert P. Carroll. And like just pretty much points out when they fail, it gets rewritten or things either the date gets stretched or somehow like that we- happens all throughout Roman antiquity. The, the prophecy of the imminent end of the world is one of the most long lived prophecies in Christian tradition. There are people right now who are expecting the imminent end of the world by God, not by environmental disaster, right? Um, It's what you do is you recalculate the end time. It's empirically disconfirmed. This is how the Millerites become the Seventh-day Adventists. You, You say, well, we were wrong about the date, but the prophecy itself is right. And then you just fill in the slots differently. In antiquity, um, because they're reading um, Peter, right? A day, uh, uh, a thousand years is, is a day in the sight of the Lord. They're reading Genesis with the six days of creation, and they're reading Revelation with the thousand year reign of the saints. Just feels so dishonest. And they put all of that in a pile, and then they calculate that um, the world is going to end when it's 6,000 years old, when there's been this millennium week, and it ends up falling in what. Uh, um, equates with our year, around the year between 400 and 500 is a hot zone of apocalyptic expectation. But that prophecy was recalculated in the third century. So there was a comfortable two centuries off when they were doing it scientifically. Um, wow. Julius Africanus well, the yes um, so did the chronology more? for this and figured out that it was going to be around Liz said, I mean, the angels are not yeah, depicted as anthropomorphic thought, originally. This, this it's epoch, trippy. 60, 60. He said that uh, 1,000 is actually 10 times 10 times 10, which is irrefutable. <laughs> which is years a old, symbolic number, end. meaning plentitude and fullness. It's not oh, a quantity. Lord. Oh, my it's goodness. Equality. Yeah, that's that Richard Matheson shit so right there, Carrie. So what that means is that we don't know, but when <laughs> right? times are fulfilled, that's when it's going to happen. It's a way oh, of not. Nice. Yeah. It's the accordion, right? Yeah, this is interesting <laughs> that you bring that up because I was thinking if that isn't the problem solver, the other one is to create, oh no, it did happen. Like I mentioned, there are groups out there called full preterist or partial preterist where they'll say some of this prophecy was fulfilled, some of it's still yet future. But the preterist think all of the prophecies were fulfilled and they just, you'd look at the words and go, but that word says this. And they go, oh yeah, yeah, but you misunderstand that word. Or like, for example, the sun, moon, and stars won't give their light. They go, that's just apocalyptic literature, genre, right? And um, they'll say it's realized. What about the resurrection of the dead? Right. So in their mind, I'm trying to go and give it back for what they might say. They might go, well, Ezekiel talks about the resurrection, the sinew and the bones. But it's all about Israel. And it's really a metaphor for Israel's resurrection. The way they would try to understand this is not literal resurrection, but that it's Israel's. It's 1948. (laughs) Well, they don't think that. They think that it happened in 70 AD somehow. The resurrection of Israel happened in 70? Yeah, the resurrection of Israel, because they think it's a remnant. They'll take a remnant approach, like it's only a 10%. Well, it, it, it's the remnant. I mean, more Jews survived the war than didn't. Right. Right. I mean, Jews were from Spain to Babylon, right? And I think north that and they south. might be doing a little bit of like the only ones that were really chosen were those who were Christ following ones. And like they, it, 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 well, that's not fair to everybody in the diaspora. <laughs> that's just not fair. I know we could do anything, right? But my no. point is, is like realize eschatology. Maybe we'll put a cliffhanger into this, and because we'll dive deeper into it, being critical uh, later on. If that's okay, fine. that's fine. But yeah, is there anything else that we could say about apocalypticism other than 
it has like a hundred percent so far, a hundred percent failure rate. <laughs> um, for some reason, it's eternally appealing to people. I think because it it ends up with redeeming history. Mm. I mean, God wipes away every tear. Wrongs are righted now, depending on who the author is, which wrongs and which right. You have the gratifying feeling of seeing your enemies fry forever. That's that's going to be great. Tertullian looked forward to that. Um, Augustine has an entire disquisition on how flesh is going to be special at the resurrection because it has to feel pain eternally. He's thinking about fleshly resurrection and hell and insisting that torments are eternal. So we'll have this whole scientific explanation of what kind of flies. So it's, there are all sorts of attractions to this type of, of thinking and it, um, it, it doesn't appeal to me. Oh, man. Everybody's Today's turning the on Trump. So, yeah, McCarthy's the speaker. Fine, the give him his Kevin three McCarthy minutes. Of the state of California, having received Boo. a majority of the votes cast, is duly elected speaker of the House of Representatives. And just, a speaker. And just as a gavel. And just yeah. and so just like that, the best soap opera in recent Republican history comes to an end. Coming after four <laughs> days of chaotic defeats, finally winning on the 15th yeah. ballot, the most ballots since before the Civil War. Eyewitness News reporter Michelle Fisher joining us live now with some of the amazing moments from tonight. Well, Mark, this is a process that isn't necessarily supposed to be entertaining, but at times tonight, it certainly right now on the East Coast just after 2 a.m. and House God damn. just adjourned and we'll finally get to go home. Oh, they just did this. And drama filled night. The Honorable Kevin McCarthy of the state of yeah, California, called, having received uh, a majority of the oh, votes yeah. cast, is duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives. After 15th and final vote. Carter of Georgia. Kevin McCarthy. McCarthy. Representative Kevin McCarthy is finally the new House Speaker. My ultimate responsibility is not to my party, my conference, or even our Congress. My responsibility, our responsibility, is to our country. The hard-fought victory bringing an end to a sure. long week and long night, with House Representatives first assembling for a 14th yeah, around 10 Eastern tonight. <laughs> exactly. No member elect. Having received a majority of the votes cast, a speaker has not been elected. McCarthy coming up just one vote short and not taking it lightly. Things on the floor then turned tense after Florida Republican Matt Gates voted present. He and McCarthy exchanged words, and as McCarthy walks back to his seat, a heated Mike Rogers of Alabama approached Gates and had to be physically restrained. Richard Hudson of North Carolina covering his mouth and pulling him away. I move the House do now adjourn until noon Monday. House members then took a yay and nay vote on whether to call it a night. Then at the last second, and McCarthy and his colleagues rushing to change their votes, opting not to adjourn, signaling a change in support and for the final vote just before midnight. I advance the name of Kevin McCarthy as the next Speaker of the House. The unprecedented drama ironically coming on the second anniversary of another unprecedented day in D.C., 2020's deadly Capitol insurrection, also on January the 6th. Tonight may be a preview of what exactly is to come for the new House Speaker. All of this drama is an indication of just how difficult it could be for McCarthy to lead in the House, even with some members of his own party. Mark. Hello, I'm Mark. He's not going to get anything done. His power so limited. It's such a slim majority. That's true. It is. How, how, what is the majority? It's tight as hell. Uh, I think it's uh, 220 is the uh, number. Of I might be rough around the edges, maybe yes. I keep it happy and I do what make me happy and nobody can deny me. That's oh, me. this is sexual. I might be rough around the edges. Oh. This is sexual right here. I happy and I do what make me happy. Uh. Can't deny me that I'm blessed. Self 
self-preservation, self-elevation. These kind of these days, they deserve Uh-oh. celebration. No hesitation, no reservation. Go for the big leagues, no relegation. Let's celebrate life, kick back and take five, and give thanks to the source that create life. We see a sunset, we see a sunrise, and see my son born with these same eyes. To see my son smile bright in every gray sky. He's growing so fast, that's why every day I keep it one day. This is the modern day of the they got a 10 person they got a 10 person majority it's uh 222 to 210. today is the anniversary of the january 6th oh, yeah, insurrection a solemn day yeah, the president marking it with a ceremony even as congress's troubled start continues to dominate washington the DOJ has its own accountability going for the attack, announcing over... <laughs> we talked about it earlier, but that shouldn't got deleted. <laughs> the new Congress, of course, is taking over from the first Congress to probe those horrific attacks, fresh off the new extensive report that identifies Trump as the central cause of January 6th, the probe exposing many parts of the plot that were not initially widely known, including the lengths Trump went to demand illegal actions by state officials, many of whom defied him including Arizona Republican Rusty Bowers, who refused to abuse his power as the state House Speaker. Bati, I don't know how the ancients depict the gods. Said, Look, they seem not to very human. That is counter to my oath when I swore to the Constitution to uphold it. Anything that would say to me, you have a doubt, deny your oath. I will not do that. Today, the president honoring Bauer's courage and approach with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. Rusty put his obligation to the Constitution and his country ahead of everything when he refused intense political pressure to decertify the 2020 election results. His courage is probably the reason why he's lost his primary last year. Rusty, you're an example. is a demonstration to every young man and woman thinking about anti politics, about what integrity, what integrity is all about. I'm Fresh from the White House and that honor, former Speaker Rusty Bowers joins us now. Welcome to the broadcast, sir. Thanks, Sorry. Good to be here. What does receiving this medal today mean to you? Oh, it's, I'm hoping the ride is now over. <laughs> <laughs> But I, the, uh, the antics down the street show that there's still some challenges ahead. But I, I think generally the, the people, it's not that they don't want to continue something bad. They want to continue something solid. They want to be able to depend on government. They, want to de- they can differ. These, these sides can differ greatly. But you have to maintain the institutional ability right to differ. All right, bro. And if you don't do it right, you don't have an institution. And, and I'm hoping that they will respect the marvel that's just down the street from where I'm sitting right now. Yeah, well, that makes sense when you put it like that. Uh, we have been tracking so much of the evidence. You lived through it, and then there's a process by which it's under investigation. Um, I want to ask you about this since I have the benefit of interviewing you for the first time. Um, John Eastman, who was really one of the most extreme or fringe figures uh, trying to overthrow the election, um, according to, to your testimony, the evidence in the report, uh, as late as January 4th, was still calling you, urging you to, quote, hold a vote to decertify Arizona's presidential electors. Eastman allegedly saying, quote, just do it and let the court sort it out. Um, based on your experience, was it your understanding that Mr. Eastman thought these were unlawful, unconstitutional requests, um, and he was sort of secretly urging you to do them? Uh, give us your view of it uh, at that time. I remember the conversations. Um, John wasn't trying, he didn't, the, the impetus was, is this legal? What is the legal benefit or the opportunity or the structure that allows you to do such a thing? And because he was respected by counsel and they, they wanted to find out from him. And, and as we walked through the conversation, I kept parrying. He would thrust and I would parry. And in the end, we just said, John, 
has there any ever, ever been anybody tried to do this? And he said, no. And I said, then you want me to put my state through this? And he said, just do it and let the courts figure it out. It was that kind of a, it wasn't like, just do it, Rusty, let the courts do it. He, he just was like, it didn't mean that much to have the courts do it. And I just that said, means, uh, oh. just do it and ask for uh, Every one of us it. along the way, yep. I'll, Ari, every one of us has a I'll responsibility. I'm not going to put it down the road. If it's mine, I got to face it. Yeah. And I haven't always been perfect. But so when he said that, we said, I, you know, my counsel and I, no, we're not. Thank you for your time. We're not going to do that. <laughs> Do you think that, do you think, based on everything we've seen, that someone like Mr. Eastman, Mr. Clark, the aforementioned, uh, Mr. Giuliani, that there should be legal accountability for them based on your vantage point? I'm not asking you to, to be a judge, um, but, you know, if you're a witness and you see a mugging in the street, you say, well, I hope, I hope they look into it. I hope they arrest that guy. He's still entitled to process. And other times you say, well, they bumped into each other. I don't think it was that. Uh, you have a, a, a real front row seat. Do you think there should be accountability for, for say, any of those people I mentioned? Every, everybody is accountable, one way or the other. You might be accountable for bad advice. You might be accountable for fraud. There's a difference. And, and I'm not the prosecutor, and as you said, I'm not the judge. Mm -hmm. But we put a lot of stock in John Eastman because he has a great history. He well, yeah, a brilliant he guy. And all that. Yeah, I don't and know what it, he was using it, it floored, for, but yeah. It floored me. It floored me that he would take this position. It, it's all, it's, and since that time, it's floored me that he would take these positions. So, but as they, as they see fit, I, I can only testify to what he said to me. I know that others have talked to him as well on the subject, or I should say, I'm led to believe that others have. It wasn't, I wasn't part of the conversation. But everybody has to be accountable. Yeah. I am. Yeah. You are. Sure. He well, is. So, so the president alluded to your campaign today while honoring you. Uh, a lot of people, including President Biden, hold you in high regard. I do want to ask you um, about the, the political history here, partly because I was just so personally interested. One of the parts about this job, sometimes you keep reading about Rusty Bowers. I watched your, your, your testimony, which was quite impressive. And then I saw, and I'll, I'll remind viewers, that around June, after everything you said, you publicly said if Trump were the nominee against Biden, you would vote for him again. By July, you said actually you'd never vote for him. Um, I bring this up only in a, obviously you could take it, you're a, you're a solid guy yourself, to use your word of the day. I bring it up only to get you on the record of when you said that the first time. Is that because even after all this in the Republican Party, that's the level of pressure? Um, or, or what do you say about all of that? No. No, I, I think everybody has a defensive mechanism. A, my vote is sacred to me. Yours is to you. And, and so typically when people for the last 30 years say, so how are you going to vote on this issue? When they know that I may not be the most happy with my party guy. But I, I usually just default to the position, hey, if, if he makes it through the primary, I vote for him. And it was kind of that thing. I got off the plane. I turned a corner. There's the lady with the microphone here. Mm -hmm. Are you going to vote for me? It, was a, it wasn't a lot of thought going into that thing. And as I thought afterwards, you know, I, shouldn't, I should just say, look, don't ask me because I have an opinion. But just don't ask me right now. But on this, I mean, when I sat there by the Secretary of State of Georgia and I heard what he said, and I put it with what I said, and put it with what other people said. And since that time, seeing how he acted, this being the former president, I just said, you know, I don't have to, I don't have to try to hide behind some, some, in Mexico they call it a dicho. I don't have to hide behind that. I can just say it. Yeah. I'm okay. not going to vote for that guy. Okay. Well, that's interesting. That's, that's why how it I, is. That's and why I we ask. Him. I wanted to know. I'm running over on time. I'll give you 30 seconds. The last question I have for you, a lot of people watched you. Like I said, a lot of people took a lot uh, from how you comported yourself, your testimony, the president honoring you today. My last question for you is simple. Um, are you optimistic about this American experiment right now or, or, or less so? What's my alternative? Anywhere on earth, anywhere else, it's not we the people. And as long as the people 
Yeah, there is a lot of God references in reggae Honestly, songs. That's a really good remember point. Remember where we came from and what we've been through. Go have a legislature. Man, that's what Lena was talking about, the association between psychedelia and, and religious experience. I don't want to be there. And so I have to be optimistic. And I am. There is so much good in America. We are a strong country if we choose to be. And and I'm choosing that way. Joining us now is Congressman Jamie Raskin, Democrat of Maryland. He was a member of the January 6th committee and will be the ranking member on the Oversight Committee should the 118th Congress ever get to work. Congressman, well, gonna do that, thank you so. for joining us tonight. I, I wonder how you look upon uh, the events that have unfolded in the course of the last few days and the fact that here we sit on January 6th, 2023. Boy, it's hard for me not to view it in the context of what happened two years ago today. Um, <clears throat> Kevin McCarthy, who originally, um, you know, cried about what was taking place uh, and rightfully so attacking Donald Trump, um, quickly withdrew his criticism and then pandered to the pro-insurrectionist part of the Republican Party and helped to whitewash and cover up what had taken place. And that was a signal to the extremist elements within the Republican Party that there was nothing that Kevin McCarthy wouldn't do in order to achieve power within the GOP caucus. And so he has moved steadily to the right and he has capitulated at every turn to. Facts, facts. I love Raskin. We'll be right back. Oh, see the Tucker Bobby. This is a true mixed martial artist of the highest order. You've watched the film. Hard for me to see. So much better. Oh, when the Saints want you need. Oh, when the Saints You got to dance like you're in Home Alone. I want to be in the number. Oh, that's that good shit. You gotta shake it out, gang. Shake it off. Shake it, shake it. Isn't that a Taylor Swift song or something? Well, he's got almost Sometimes you just gotta shake it out, gang. Chokes. Here is the heavyweight hopeful, Alexi Olenek. This guy's more than 40 fights over 500 in a pro career that dates all the way back to 1996. It's unbelievable when you watch Alexi Olenek compete. He goes there and he seems as disinterested as anyone that I've right. ever seen step into an octagon. But 70 fights, damn. No one's nickname is more fitting. Yeah. The boa constrictor. You feel like you're wrapped within his limbs. And yeah. You cannot find an escape. So, Some of the submissions he has are truly unbelievable. When he hit that Ezekiel took from the bottom. God, they keep, the now they keep lining up these submission line, guys. Yeah, that was they the figured out I'm knocking out. dudes <laughs> in the next <laughs> Wednesday. Now they keep lining up these boa constrictors. Go ahead, Joel. Well, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. He, yeah, the ball can trick you. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, this is good for you. You can get some practice against it. You know? oh, yeah, man. It's, it's, this heavyweight division is freaking murderers, bro. <laughs> they either tie you up or they can blow your face off. Hopefully we can watch that uh, boxing match tomorrow. Oh, yeah. But after, I know it's pay-per-view. Maybe they'll show it after on something on YouTube. Nah, I think we'll probably just stream it and gather. Okay, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. 
He stands 62 inches tall, weighing in at 240 pounds, fighting out of Moscow, Russia. And when the action begins, our referee in charge, Herb Dean. Herb Dean draws the assignment right. here in the heavyweight division. He lost his last fight by submission in somewhat stunning fashion. So now the question is back. Oh, there you go. Can he regain the momentum and put what was the most oh, devastating loss his career behind? I'm trying to shit. God, he stunned me already. I was trying to get him with the uh Back to the knee. These guys like to get you in the corner. Oof. Nice. I don't want to follow up too much because he's really good on his back. He's a jujitsu yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. Most people wanna jump up. Yep, yeah, they nope. You don't wanna. Yeah. I'm just trying to make sure he doesn't know where to block. Yeah. Go low. Yeah, you got this. Then go high. <laughs> you got this. You got this. <laughs> I just kept you switching. I just kept switching. You should have jumped on him to get some practice on the ground, though. Bro, <laughs> yeah, but then you go grab my arm. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, because if they have those, you know, there's like levels to your moves. Yeah. And I think that guy has those moves like either five star or like what they call prestige, which is where they finish people with them. Yeah. And so it's like, I don't know if there's a way to get out of that thing yeah. where it's like takes up the whole bar. <laughs> I think that's just an L. <laughs> But yeah, your fucking margin of error down there, those guys is scary. That worked out though, kept the distance and mixing levels. He did it in an even more impressive fashion than he ever could have imagined. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, you really got the kicks down really well. Yeah, the kicks are great for range, man. And Uncle Bobby's can stop people with those leg kicks. Did that Tom? Sure. Yeah, that was that was fun. All right, we'll go back to these extremist elements within the GOP, and that's what makes this uh, such a scary moment in terms of the precipice of the 118th Congress, because there are a lot of things where he has just completely given the keys of power away to uh, the most fanatical parts of his caucus and, yeah, you know, essentially giving a one member veto to the most extreme Crazy. members uh, of the caucus means that we are going to have a series of uh, drag down battles on things like uh, the debt limit, shutting down the government and so on. But to my mind, this is all part of the implosion of the Republican Party as they continue to cater to these fanatical forces that we saw on full display two years ago tonight. Uh, it only takes you know, two there's years. There's a Fox House quality mind. to all of this. It was one thing to have election deniers in Congress. Now we're talking about election deniers chairing committees or subcommittees, really That's at the crazy. upper echelons of power in Congress. I mean, what are the implications for the 2024 presidential election it's to so have, crazy. as you, you point out, election, election deniers election. one step away? From I don't the understand, the House. dude. Like fool around with election certification I mean, come 2024. I mean, what practically are the implications they don't of the concessions the that, that, that Kevin McCarthy has made to this group of people? Well, look, they've shown on January 6, 2021 and January 6, 2023, there's nothing that they won't do. They are a rule or ruin faction. And the way that the radical Republicans, who are obviously a very different breed than these Republicans. Damn, I've never gotten fight of the night. I've had some good fights. Built into the Constitution up. in Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, a statement that if you swear an oath of uh, office to uphold the Constitution and you betray the oath by engaging in insurrection or rebellion, you can never hold office again. And the, the history of that uh, provision is fascinating because the Republicans wanted to go further and just disenfranchise anybody who participated in the Confederacy. And when it got over to the Senate, 
the Senate said, well, that goes too far. Let's just focus on the most hardcore element, those people who had sworn an oath to the Constitution but violated it. And we'll make sure they can still vote, but they can never serve in office again. And so I think that's a provision that the country has got to be taking seriously in the days ahead, as the January 6th committee urged in our final recommendations. When you talk about the January 6th committee, I mean, there is they have shown this group of folks, these incoming Republicans who are taking the majority, have shown every in the in indication and inclination that they want to have their own kind of bizarro version of the January 6th committee, an investigation yeah. to weaponize the federal government. They th seem to have the funding locked down for that. They have their sights set on people who worked on the committee, who may have been sources to the committee. How concerned are you about the security of those who, in many ways, risk their careers, if not their lives, testifying against the former president and his allies who tried to steal the election? Well, the first point about that, Alex, is that they will not revisit the findings of the January 6th committee because the people that they would call as witnesses, i.e., the members of the Trump administration, the Trump White House, the Trump the family, they all testified, if they and they all told the same story, seats? which was uh, Donald Trump simply refused to take no for an answer. Who, oh, the uh, Republicans? Set about oh, to Republicans. overturn oh, the presidential right. election, yeah, all yeah, the way to the point of inciting a violent mob to storm the Congress of the United States and attack his own vice president. So they're not going down that road. But you're right that they will try to cook something up about the Department of Justice. And already there are completely failed allegations uh, about Russiagate, which uh, they think people are listening to, but they're not. Everybody understands that Vladimir Putin and Donald Trump are aligned as an axis of autocratic and plutocratic power on earth. And they're all trying to overthrow democracy. So uh, if that's what they want to do, if they want to have that conversation, great, because we'd love to talk about Vladimir Putin's filthy imperial invasion of Ukraine, his attack on democracy in Ukraine, and indeed his attack on democracy all over the world as he tries to undermine democratic parties, democratic movements, and democratic constitutions. Um, Congressman Raskin, I think of you as the poet laureate of the House. And as such, I wonder if you could put into context this moment as compared to Election Day uh, 2022, when Democrats were feeling very good about the American public offering a fairly resounding uh, vote in, in favor of democracy and staving off this slide that seemed at one point inexorable towards anti-democratic forces, if not outright autocracy. Couple that with the events of the last four days, where the Republican uh, would-be Speaker of the House is catering to a radical fringe that seems intent, indeed, on, on cementing anti-democratic forces inside the lower chamber. Well, look, the Democrats, um, we have a tough job because we've got to do two things. One is we have to refute and debunk all of the lies, the disinformation, the propaganda, the conspiracy theories, the scandals du jour, um, and honor the facts. And so we have to be a truth squad for America. But then even more importantly, we have to keep America moving forward. We've got to stay on track in terms of investment in infrastructure, in lowering uh, health care and prescription drug costs. We've got to be meeting the needs of the American people. But the great news is that the Democrats. I should have made Party Uncle Bobby Donald younger. Trump I think they're going to make me retire him. Than before Donald Trump. We are battle hardened. Really? We are veterans. Yeah, because he's old and see his like longevity. I think that big bar going from red to like mostly to green to mostly red. And the people yeah, in the Democratic caucus who've hung together 212 to zero ballot after ballot for Hakeem Jeffries from our most conservative conservative elements to our most progressive elements, the people have hung together. Uh, we are blood brothers and sisters in this struggle to defend American democracy and American freedom. And we are backed by the vast majority of the American people all over the country. And we know that what we're up against is a minority party, a shrinking minority party, increasingly uh, shrill. Uh, increasingly cultish in their ways, but they do have control over certain anti-democratic practices like voter suppression, and they manipulate the Electoral College, and they use gerrymandering to their advantage, and so on. So it's a race between the democratic will of the vast majority of the people and these anti-democratic practices that are just barely keeping the GOP alive today. To be fair, well, I think a lot of people watch what is happening, well. and uh, you have... 
You have the enthusiasm, the support, yeah. the admiration. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm pissed when they don't I because I don't know how you're going to counter that. Like, because I always think of it as this way. It's like, if you don't counter gerrymander, it's like they gerrymandered map gets a little bit more their favor. Well, then you yeah. take office and you're like, well, that's not good, so let's not do anything. All right, well, then they're about yeah. control. They gerrymandered a little bit more. Now you take control. You don't do shit. They take Point. control. They gerrymandered a little bit more. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? And eventually yeah, exactly. it just... It just just end up way in their favor. It, it's like so yeah. many of these other things where eventually I got to start supporting shit I don't want to support. I know, right? Just uh, to counter my, it. My, my district at one point, it literally went down I-85 from Greensboro to Charlotte. It just looked, it was, I mean, it's named after a salamander. You would have thought this was some kind of weird snake creature, you know? Right, right. It, it was just uh, I mean, it did, and we did it. Democrats did it, you know, to keep uh, Democrat in it. And, uh, you know, I think they should take it away from the uh, 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 the uh, uh, from the partisan uh, powers and give it to uh, give it to a, a court to decide. I mean, well, the courts do decide ultimately because they did decide that that was too much, that it was gerrymandering, but. I mean, you're right, yeah. I mean, they do it all the time, so we should do it, too. Uh, well, yeah, I, I mean, it just it just feels like it's a dirty game. But, no, it I is. agree. It's a problem. It's a problem. And I don't know. There there obviously needs to be a different solution, right? It's like. But you're, yeah, you're, but you're, you're right, though, that, uh, you know, Democrats will be the first ones to, to take our foot off the pedal and ease up and say, hey, look, this is a bad thing that we're doing. Well, they'll just slam their foot down and keep going with it. Oh, we, you know what, Liz, Liz makes a kind of a good point. Like, if it's correcting a wrong, we maybe should be talking about it as redistricting. Like, that's kind of actually probably a useful framework, right? So the idea is that if it's gerrymandered when it's clearly, like, drawn yeah. to favor a political party or to be not reflective of, like, say, a voting district. But if we correct that, then do you know what I'm saying? Like that's a good yeah, point. Yeah. That's a good that's a good point, Liz Allen. Yeah, it is. But but I mean both sides have done it. Yeah, you know, absolutely. <laughs> true. True. It's like yeah, that weaponize yeah. any word. And you know, a lot of it it's like I feel with the conversations we have about politics in general or religion, they always telling our side to be less divisive, less tribalistic, yeah. more reasonable, meet them in the middle. You won't say that to the other side because you know they don't buy that shit. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know I mean, they'll, you know, we'll, we'll kind of ease off the film because full throttle at it. Exactly. We'll, we'll, sell, we'll correct ourselves, but they will just go, you know, just no, no, no bar, no halts bar, just completely just go crazy with it and no one stops them you know it, it's uh. oh this should be fun a little late night fun Why just not? stop the nonsense Jonah is with some random fun game. Swallowed some by a giant fish for three days and three third nights sisters like Joel. And spit up and goes into the heart of the Assyrian Empire Nineveh preaching repentance and then all of a sudden they repented <laughs> And this somehow is historically evident in the fact that the power of the world at the time, the Assyrians, their power waned. They were a cruel nation and that somehow, well, how did they stop ruling? They repented. Now, I don't know if this is some joke because technically it looks bad. Repenting causes you to lose the power. But Dr. Joshua Bowen answers this question, diving deep from a questionnaire of our Patreon here at Myth Vision and shows you no, what they're really doing is. Dr. Joshua Bowen, we've got a question from WM Law on my Patreon. Derek, I'm only on page 124 of his book. Being ex-Mormon, ex-Reformed Christian who's read the entire Old Testament, chapter one was a recap of the biblical story that I'm familiar with. My question relates to the Assyrian kingdom. Hmm. As a Christian, we would be told that the Assyrian kingdom was a brutal kingdom that terrorized its neighbors and gave no quarter, but that there was a period of time when it, wa when it waned. The Christians would say that, that that is evidence of Jonah having preached to the Ninevites and them repenting. Is there any evidence of such a period in the archeological record? 
a period of them repenting? Well, it's, the Ninevites? it seems like they waned from being such cruel overlords, if that makes sense. And, and so Christians will say, see, Jonah did preach repentance from their wicked cruelty. You so, see? So, I mean, no. Um, <laughs> um, so, you know, taking the book of Jonah like that, trying to look for historical, um, you know, seeing this as some sort of a historically uh, reliable account of Jonah's life, probably not a good way to go about engaging with the text. One of the things that's clear about um, ancient Near Eastern history, and you can see it with the, the Assyrians uh, quite clearly, is there is, th there is this... Um, pattern of expansion when a nation is strong and contraction when a nation is weak. And normally it hinges upon the ruler himself. So if you have a strong, sort of aggressive, uh, clever ruler, you'll see expansion, you'll see annual campaigning, particularly out to the west um, from Assyria, and this, this you know, growth of Assyria proper. Uh, and, and, you know, taking over, uh, creating vassals and getting tribute and those sorts of things. Um, so one of the kings that sort of epitomizes this big expansion after a period of contraction is Tiglath Pleaser III. And he comes to the throne in 745. So, you know, 8th century, this is something that would be important to, um, you know, the history of the nation of Israel. And we see this reflected in the biblical text. So the Neo-Syrian Empire. All right, quick question, Joel, are you still there? What do you think this is like for Josh? Because I feel like I've got to get more used to this. Like he's in a sense, like I think of him, he's almost like a very friendly executioner, right? Like. He's just kind of laid back. He's chilling in his office. But, like, he literally just spends every day being like, listen, you're wrong about the Bible. I'm sorry. Listen, listen, listen. None of that happened. Listen, listen. I'm sorry. Listen. None of that. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it's a... It's got to be kind of interesting, especially because I'm sure when people first meet him, they're, like, so excited to talk about their ideas with him and ask him about stuff, and then he's just constantly having Joel, to shut that shit down. Joel put in chat that he agrees. He'll be right back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Thanks, Karen. Yeah, he's got work. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know he's got periods work. Yeah, of, you know, real strength. But I talk about in the book how uh, toward the end, the new Assyrian Empire s starts to wane. Um... And there are probably a lot of different reasons why it happened. Uh, not because Jonah went and preached to them and they decided to give up their, I don't know, um, militaristic ways, you know. First of all, the, the picture that's, you know, painted of the Assyrians or the Canaanites or the Amalekites or any of these people, of course, is that they're, grossly immoral and wicked. They do everything horribly and they're just terrible. And um, of course, hopefully we all recognize this a bit of propaganda going on here. And of course, the Neo-Assyrian Empire did this as well, right? So if you read through Mario Liberani's book, for example, on Assyria, which is actually right here, um, you know, you'll see him talking about how the Assyrians portrayed themselves and justified their holy war, right? And when they did that, what they did is, much as the uh, Israelites did, and much as every ancient people would have done in this position, you, you create an other, right? That you, you have to bring into subjection, bring into control. And the way that you justify doing that is, you, you know, you don't say... Uh, I just want to go conquer those people, right? Because, sorry, that's my three-year-old up there. Um, you know, because that doesn't look good, right? It doesn't reflect well. Because there's still this idea that 
you have to have justification for doing what it is that you're doing. Uh, and the gods don't, the gods don't look kindly in, in, in the ancient Near East uh, upon people doing oppressive things, much to everyone's surprise. You know, uh, maybe that's in uh, fundamentalist evangelical uh, circles. You know, the idea that the ancient Mesopotamian gods would have been against oppression. Right? They were. Right? You don't oppress the poor. You don't oppress the weak. So the, the king still needed justification for doing these types of campaigns. And so one of the ways that they do it is the same way that you see in the Hebrew Bible. And that is they like vilify the other side. Go figure, right? It's how we all do this. You know, you, 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 you think about the way that the Germans are portrayed when you watch, um, you know, like, uh, like Captain America or something. You know, the Germans are always the, the, the super bad, right? Um, and I, that's, that's not to say that the Nazis weren't bad. Of course they were bad, right? But, like, it can spread to all Germans, for example. Anyway, the point is that uh, that might, have, might not have been a good example. Um, I want to be clear that the Nazis were horrible, right? Just be clear. Right. Um, but that vilification, that type of vilification, is something that you see in the ancient world all the time. And... Uh, so because of that, the Assyrians would say those people out to the west, the god Asher, our god Asher, extended his benevolent arm to them to bring them in and to care for them. And blah, 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 right. And of course, right. they, and of course, they rebelled. They rebelled against his arm. And so uh, I, I have to go out and conquer mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Same thing seems to wow. like take place kind of in the Canaan. Um, oh, yeah, it's all about the good guys. Uh, or even another example, biblically, Play the hero. Uh, would be when the vilification. Yeah, I mean of all that the that the was North like the the thing the, the lady writers. in the sure. the gaslighting video said that uh you know uh Solomon or David or whoever was gaslighting God yeah. because they didn't. You know, they didn't destroy everyone. When God yeah. said everyone, he meant everybody. And they were gaslighting God to not kill everyone. It's just crazy. I mean, yep. are they really I, that bad I and that horrible it. of a king in the North? Or is this... Good. I was going to say, I just saw it. That's why I never could buy into it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. It, it just went against what I believed was right. Sorry, guys. You're good, Joe. No worries. Yeah, you getting the ground game going now? Yeah, I'm trying to get the hell up so I can get back and give him some more hooks. Uh, 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 there we go. Uh, God damn it! This guy's a pain in my ass. Yeah, this guy I kicked Punch out. It's just won't leave me alone. You said you kicked him out? Yeah, well, he was fighting with his girlfriend. Oh and we yeah. Had to out. So, yeah. But he he, he calls he called up here and said that he left four hundred dollars in the room. Well, that's yeah. unfortunate. Yeah, that's what I told him. I said, you know, I can't go right now. To wait till somebody else gets up here and can go with me. I'm not going to go into a room where you claim four hundred dollars is and by myself. I'm gonna go with somebody so they can be a witness so they can say that I didn't take four hundred dollars that may or may not be in the room. Absolutely. Uh, I just want this night to end. I feel you, brother. Mm. What time are you on? Until 7? Yeah. It gets better after 4 o'clock. It always does. Yeah, even though it's after 4 o'clock. Yeah, it gets better now. All right. Well, I'll be up for a little bit. I don't have to get up early tomorrow. Oh, cool. Cool, man. Hey anachronistic explanation saying well the reason why yeah. this happened all these bad kings happened to be there or why did why in this i'm leading into the assyrian thing is like why did they stop being so well maybe they lost power like when yes. egypt the reason why the exodus you know if we have yeah. this story as ronald hendel saw well what happened was they kind of went bankrupt and yeah. they collapsed and yeah. now boom yeah I mean, this is what happened at the, in the tw you know right around twelve hundred, right? So if, if people are interested in that sort of thing, Eric Klein has a phenomenal book. It's right there, uh, called Eleven Seventy Seven, and uh, we'll have him on the show here, I think, pretty soon. But it talks about this, you know, 
a, a regional collapse, a international collapse. Um, but you know, like a, a, a good example, maybe maybe the German one wasn't all that all that good. It was, but you see this in the vilification of um, uh, people from Arabic countries after 9-11, yeah. right? Everybody from the Middle East was then vilified, right? And you saw it horribly here in the United States, right? Now, certainly these terrorists were terrible, terrible people. They did terrible, terrible things. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I was on active duty when that happened in the Air Force. Um, but that doesn't mean that all Arabic people are bad, right? And so they, they get vilified, they become the other, they become the other. And that justifies, you know, the, 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 the sort of... Um, well, then we get the same thing with racial tensions, too. Yes. Blacks are all bad in, in some people's eyes. Or you look at these, uh, you know, these cross-burning Ku Klux Klan members, and yeah. now all, we, all whites sure. are the same way. You know, you can get the same thing happen sure. in almost any situation. And, and so, so then if, if you're... But the, the, I think for me, the material point is if you're trying to justify... Uh, just like somebody in the Ku Klux Klan was to justify their hatred, just like um, you know people that were incredibly anti-Semitic against uh, the Jews during uh, World War II, um, anybody that wants to look at all Arabs and justify that bigotry uh, as, as as being again as being justified as okay to do, they're going to construct this narrative of the other, and they're going to say that the other side. Um, is doing things oftentimes that they would never do, right? What do they call that? Um, um, uh, oh, virtue signaling, I think, is what they call that. But that, so, so what we see then in uh, the biblical text is this sort of othering, and we see it um, with the new Assyrians as well. A, a really good example of this, I, and I, I feel like I want to clarify this because. Uh, this came up recently in my book uh, on the chapter on the uh, on archaeology talking about the Canaanites. There is this sort of vilification that you see uh, of the Canaanites when it comes to child sacrifice. You see it all over the place in the Hebrew Bible. Oh, they're they're sacrificing their children to Molech, right? They're doing all these horrible, horrible things. And so I asked the question uh, that Heath Durrell asked. And, and that is like what, let's let's get to the bottom of what evidence do we have for uh, child sacrifice among the Canaanites, and as it turns out, there isn't much, right? So then the question that we have to ask is, all right, sure, um, you, you know, it, it, do we expect to have a lot of evidence for child sacrifice, like physical evidence in the archaeological record? Probably not. Um, but what evidence do we have you know that, that, that people are using to justify their the position, others, to justify the, the position others, that the biblical yeah. text is, is historically that reliable? Really strikes home and the me evidence that they're using I, is like plain evidence, it's from Carthage, it's that's not from Canaan. And so what evidence do we actually have I mean, that's what happened from in the 30s you know, Canaan proper? Nothing really solid, right? And so then if that's... Hate your own brother. You know, that's how you get someone to hate. Yeah, but being. absolutely. And to me, even modern uh, Christianity really tells that. I mean, like the the part where Jesus is all like, you know, leave your family to follow me and all this. That's not like some hidden part of the text. That's some part that's like celebrated as, you know, part of the gospel message. And then mm -hmm. like you talked about the othering. To me, there's no more othering than the way the book treats heathens and people it explicitly yeah. identifies as the enemies of God or the wicked that reject him and all of this other type of nonsense. Yeah, and uh, I just I just look out look out for it for today, you know, because it's a slippery slope. It's it's so easy to uh, for people to demonize another group. And before you know it, you know, we've got stormtroopers going around. Absolutely. I mean, January the 6th was a year ago. I mean, or two, two years ago. Yeah. Good night, Foddy. Yeah. Good night. Uh, what's up, nerdy? Nerdy. Yeah, um, but that hits home for me. I've been talking about that for a long time. Uh, 
just the dehumanizing of other human just other humans groups in, in general it, it's just it's it's pathetic it's it's just i don't know it's just it's just a, a terrible way to treat your brother and it's a way to get other people to hate their own brother and it's the easiest way mm, absolutely uh hang on let me hit this one data point that's all right we don't have this positive evidence so then what other evidence do we have well we, we seem to have evidence in the narrative of the hebrew bible that the israelites were also practicing child sacrifice so with those two things combined we don't have any positive evidence uh, from the period to say that yes in the second millennium you've got child sacrifice and that's why the israelites had to come in and do this conquest and we have seemingly positive evidence that the Israelites are doing this in the first millennium, which is the time that we probably think this Exodus story came to its, you know, its, its form. Um, those two things combined, what's more reasonable to conclude? It's this othering. It's this othering that we see. And so, again, uh, the, the, the neo Syrian Empire is othering and doing these campaigns. But when they don't have the strength to do it anymore, sort of bringing this back, when they don't have the strength to do it anymore, they're, they're having to deal with problems, financial problems, with local issues, and all of those things make a, a, an administration, a king, you know, kingdom focus in on itself in the same way that if you're having problems at home, it's difficult to go, you know, be successful doing something outside of the house because you have to deal with your own problems internally. And when you have internal problems, the empire tends to shrink back in on itself. And so it's a really convenient thing to say, ah, well, in 586, yeah, I mean, not in 586, sorry, in, um, in uh, seven, I was thinking of the fall of Jerusalem, um, but in, uh, you know, 712, 710, when the neo Assyrian Empire falls to the Neo-Babylonian Empire, Neo-Babylonian Empire, uh, you know, this is sort of the culmination of all these things contracting the neo Assyrian Empire in. And um, I think it would be foolish to say, well, it's, you know, leading up to that, the, the contraction that we see, that must be because, you know, we see repentance from Nineveh uh, because solely because we have that in the biblical text. I don't think that's good historiography. Thank you. So that debate at the Creation Museum, uh, there was a second part to it? Yeah, we're going to have to watch it in Gather because oh, they're, they yeah. Mm, YouTube, man. They're just like so into that. Damn, Nitty, was, they said BS was out here late. Biddy was yeah, out here late and he did a four hour stream. Go ahead, get it, boy. Over the Mar-a-Lago documents scandal. Yes, it's when he had stole, uh, stole uh, plenty of documents from Mar uh, from the White House and brought him to Mar-a-Lago. So they had, of course, uh, later on, the FBI had found uh, massive dumps. Dumps, big massive dumps. <laughs> yeah, of, uh, Everybody, I need to get that one. Mar-a-Lago that he should have had, that he should have returned, uh, and that he had plenty of chances to return, decided not to. So now the latest update to this is uh, from the New York Times, and they report that Judge Beryl A. Howell, chief judge of the Federal District Court in Washington, had ruled that the former president's lawyers now have to hand over the names of the private investigators, whom they had claimed conducted searches of Trump's properties for additional classified documents. So, yes, they said, look, give this names. So, so here's the, the interesting thing. They allowed Trump, instead mm -hmm. of having the FBI go in and search his different properties, not just Mar-a-Lago, but different properties. They said, well, you know, we, look, we know that's going to be embarrassing if we send in the feds and then you're going to complain, you're going to bitch, you're going to uh, cry, uh, whine, moan, whatever. Okay, let's avoid that. Let's let you hire somebody. All right, just go ahead and hire some people to poke around your property, see if you, you know, if they can scare up anything that you 
forgot any of these documents that really don't belong to you. Yeah, now, I think that's another way, of course, of being super, super friendly and cordial to the former president who has been nothing more than, well, other than obstinate and just a general jackass about the whole situation. Seriously. Uh, but anyway, they are allowed this, you know, leeway to hire them. Uh, and then, lo and behold, these investigators find two additional documents that were classified and immediately return them. So now Jack Smith, who has taken over this investigation, uh, you know, on, on behalf of the Justice Department. Trump's documents was counsel, crazy, man. I'm so glad like, we, we, we uh, did that. That was fun. Now we yeah. would like to know who those investigators are. Please give us the names. So now. Um, the hell is he thinking? Trump's lawyers don't want to do it, <laughs> obviously. And they come up with a bunch of different reasons. Why I'll, I'll probably say names. that every day of his presidency. So now, the Times the Department of Justice just wants the names so they can question them personally on their findings. It's crazy, though, because it's almost like he thinks that? really hard well, about paper, how uh, to notes do that everything the wrong. Justice like, Department <laughs> sought a formal order for the investigator's names suggests an increasing yeah. breakdown in trust <laughs> between the prosecutors investigating all, the documents case and strong decision. Mr. Trump's legal team. <laughs> Yeah, you figured he'd be, you'd be okay. better just by random so, chance by now or something. Yeah, I wonder why there's a breakdown of trust. What the coin? No trust here. You know, he would have a better record. Seriously. All right. Uh, get this damn fight going. Fast, All right, they're finally starting to filter in some more generic fighters, which I'm excited yes. about, actually. Yeah, he looks, that looks, yeah, he looks smart. But that's good, you know, because it's like they should be retiring and having, like, new fighters step up. Because some of these fighters now, like, when we come out, we're, like, literally 50 now. He doesn't look heavyweight. Yeah, but I started Bobby's career like 35 and shit, so like, and they only fight a couple times a year, so now he's like fucking like 50 and shit, it's crazy. But we've been watching people fight at 40 and... Yeah, MMA, they've been going a little bit high with the ages. I think, um, I hope the Davis starts a trend, though, of uh, boxers retiring younger. I feel like if you're going to play one of these crazy, dangerous sports, get out young. Yeah. Maybe that's smart move by uh, uh, Davis. I'm getting out now. Yeah. Like, it's very young. I mean, at some point, the extra money's not worth the change in your quality of life yeah. over the long term. They've made so much money. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's true. With similar height, but big differences in reach. All right, now to get us started with the introductions, here's Bruce Buffer. Wow, that's a big reach difference. What was his reach? I didn't even look at it. 80 inches with 73. Oh, yeah. That's reach difference. That's, that's the game plan. Yep. I might try to work on my boxing a little bit, even though he's got a... He's a I think he's a striker. A Muay Thai kickboxer and jiu-jitsu fighter holding a professional record of... 29 wins, four losses. He stands six feet five inches tall, weighing in at 255 pounds, fighting out of Austin, Texas, Robert. Oh, I can barely make out the tattoo. Oh, yeah, you see it though? It's just an A with a circle around it. I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> Right in the perfect place, too. Right. Yeah. 
Well, his last fight will be a tough act to follow as we get ready for round yeah. one here. He didn't, he didn't want to uh, touch gloves. Really? So, can he keep the momentum going? If the challenges get stiffer, keep the winning streak intact, and of course try to get another win by knockout. There you go. Take his popularity soaring to another level. Want our hands. Exploiting his reach advantage as he landed the jab there, DC. I kid you. There's no give on that leg kick. Big punch land on hmm. the top. How's he gonna follow this? There you go. Edge of your oh. seat action as expected so far. Trading blows. Well, perhaps a sign of things to come as he lands a kick there. Did he block that? Uh, did he block that kick? Yeah. Well, he continues there you to go. handle him here on the ground. Looks like maybe he's trying to get there him up underneath the chin. He side to Weird side, trait. trying to get a bulldog choke. Oh, wow, oh! You don't see this very often. Most times it happens at a family barbecue. The only time you see it is a family barbecue. <laughs> it, is, it doesn't seem very orthodox. There it goes. Uh, and now he taps. The last there you time go. I saw a bulldog took was at a family barbecue. Yes, yeah, right, baby. He go practice that ground game. Side to side and choke yeah. You don't do this in a high level martial arts fight, but this man just did it. And it's going to help him get towards his uh, GOAT status. That's one of the things is getting more of these submissions. He's got so many damn knockouts. I mean, you know, this guy has such a great. There's like all these benchmarks that you're trying to hit to like. So get goat yeah, status before you retire. So I can barely and read it on my screen. That uh, lost it's so it small, that but I saw that, uh, got uh, Oh, yeah, yeah. I could, I'll pull it up on the bigger at some point. So there he is, but yeah, that was sweet. Submission, and that's exactly how you put the rest of this division yeah, like on that. notice. Looks like this guy could be a factor moving forward in this division. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Gaines called a stop to this contest at two minutes, 12 seconds of the very first round. I got to look up a racing wheel, man. I want to get a racing wheel. I've been playing that trucking simulator, man. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It is. I didn't think it would be that fun, but it is. Man. Yeah, it's nice and relaxing, too. It is. I'm like, well, I'm driving down the interstate in that 18-wheeler. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delivering pallets, but I'm, you know, it's cool. I like it, man. Yeah, I love that game, actually. It, it is. It's relaxing. It's a it's, it's good thing to, if you got some time to kill and you don't have to do it, you know. Or you, you, you want to go to sleep, you know? Yes, exactly. Something to do before you go to sleep. It's perfect for that. Yeah, and I think for these streams where we're, like, watching stuff and everything, yeah, I think it'll be good. Uh, yeah. Could it be the fact that his legal team's consistently right, lied about returning the documents? Damn, over that's over true too. Again? Like all these people around him, right? That were involved in this oh, yeah. process with these documents. I didn't think about that. Like yeah, it's not just Trump. True. Like there's a lot of people who like. They're like, nope, they're not there. Yeah, this is crazy. It's yeah. like he really Trump wanted them really badly to return the stolen documents. And they failed again. There's got to be something going again, on with them documents, again, Joel. Again, again, yeah, again. I know. There's I mean, some some serious is yes, going I mean, on with them documents. Where he, where he kept and them? Maybe this is also an escalation. What, that room Smith's 45. Uh, into trouble. Of that, course, that, that oh my goodness, yeah. Uh, still end up at the desk, and, uh, of, or I should say, the decision should exactly end up. We don't know exactly what he could, will but end up, it has to be significant. Uh, being Merrick Garland, he just didn't walk out with today, too many documents. They're actually going to the wrong documents. Exactly, yeah. He, there's something significant to it, and uh, we're we'll find out. I mean, we're going to find out. He's this is hopefully this will be the the, the straw that. Oh shit, dude! This is Thank huge. You, we got a, a title fight. Oh, cool, cool. Yeah, with see Nganu that. coming up. This could be Uncle Bobby's third title reign. Now, I'm not declining that. Oh. Yeah, I mean, he's. You're right, nerdy. It's like he was going to do something with it. Yes, he had to be doing. T it's either that, or it there's just some, or or the, he just didn't want them in the. What I think is there's something he didn't want in the records. 
yeah that's a good that see that's like good. when it was that's when smart. it was the mayor like the former mayor nork before Corey, it wasn't that the the documents had any financial value or anything it was that they were evidence of crime they were they yeah, were, they were that. paper trail yeah. i talked for blackmail purposes See, yeah, these thinking, are all, they're all really, with Trump, you never know, right? There could be, it could be anything. It could be financially yeah. fucked up documents. It could be paper trail, like I'm thinking. It could definitely be something he's selling to some sort of corrupt fucking shady yeah, ass you know, deal he, or, he or blackmail. These China are all, all legit possibilities. Yeah, I never thought about that one, yeah, because, you know, because of his, uh, his his tendency to uh, flush documents down the toilet, or you know, uh, who was it? Other guy that was burning them, someone. Oh, uh, Meadows, yeah, in the fireplace. Yeah, Meadows, yeah, yeah. Meadows was flushing them. I mean, uh, burning them, but he likes to flush them. But uh, yeah, it could definitely just be a paper trail of uh, his crimes. But I was like Carrie said, I thought he was going to use them to. Uh, Somebody was blackmailing him, China, you know, because he owes China money. He owes North Korea money. Um, He's got uh, loans from both those countries. And they may be uh, like, hey, look, you know, instead of that 200 million you owe us, how about this? No, I was thinking it was to blackmail somebody else in politics. It could be. So he had leverage. It could be. To use against them later to get policies he wanted. Could be. That really wouldn't surprise me. I have such a devious mind, you guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think the absolute worst. I mean, not wrong, though. Uh, yeah, that's definitely a possibility. Unfortunately, a lot of the time I am right. Oh, damn it, I forget that yeah. was. Indict Trump. But there is, uh, I mean, seemingly Smith has been. Very Joel, efficient. this is good because it's uh, a um, escalating and, and working very quickly. Striker, to too. Gather as much evidence as he can. Oh, yeah. As quickly as Great. he can. Uh, and so that is interesting. Very, very interesting indeed. Uh, and so, yes, this latest thing, having these investigators question, I think is interesting. Now, why would they want to find out? Well, maybe they want to ask them if there are places that are instructed maybe not to look. Or places where they just didn't look. So you get that information out. And if there is something that suggests that they were <laughs> hoping to uh, steer up, these Jerome? investigators away from certain areas where other hidden documents or possibly hidden documents could be, well, then that would be a tip-off to do maybe even more of a or, – or just add in a, another raid by the FBI. It is incredibly possible. I don't know. But yeah. if that ends up to be the case, honestly, well then, Jack if Smith, I were the FBI, I would have been raiding. I'd be raiding every single property with right? Trump's name on them. I know there's yeah. a lot of them, but I mean, what more do you need? Like his whole organization Ooh, was convicted of fraud. Mm -hmm. You've got all this January 6th insurrection stuff. You've got all this document stuff. You've got Letitia James in New York. I mean, at this point. You've got to just, there's got to be they enough be, to just make a search warrant for all this person down. stuff. They should be booting doors down. Yeah, any Stop normal the person, thing. they'd go to all your offices, all your yep. vacation homes. At they'd the be raiding time. your fucking family, bro. Yeah, exactly. At the same time. Four o'clock in the morning. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, same time, flashbangs, kick the door down, and, you know, we're going through everything. Yeah, but you know, because he's an ex-president, they got to walk on eggshells. A lot of eggshells. <laughs> yeah. His job is going to be real easy in finding evidence of obstruction, because again, they are trying to find and prove that Trump had willfully retained these documents, these records, as well as or 
in, uh, obstructed the government's efforts to try to retreat right, them. I guess this other thing is going to And I think there is a... Uh, old party? <laughs> yeah, there was another story about that guy. I was going to see if it pops up here. No, I'm sure it'll come up. But yeah, it's one of the, it's one of the oh, Herschel Walker Molly. campaign people. I didn't know that yet until yesterday that other people when uh, the other people said um, if evolution is true, uh, if or if we came from monkeys, why are there still monkeys? I didn't know that was a, a like a tagline, you know. I, really? I, no, I honestly I didn't. Uh, when I when Herschel Walker thought it, I said it. Uh, I thought you know this guy's incredibly stupid. Why would he think something like that? You know, I didn't know that other people had actually, you know, thought that that was uh, something that would be a smart thing to say or ask. Uh, that really threw me. Yeah. All right. I'll put this on the list for oh, today's the seven. That'll be fun. Derek just came out with the video. Dude, Derek, Derek makes so much stuff. Oh, I watched a movie about that guy, the real Rocky. Um, the guy who plays Ray Donovan played the character. Really? Yeah, they really stole his story. I would play it, but I'm I don't know if I can. Cause I don't, <laughs> yeah, I got um, you. Yeah, because we're on uh This is interesting. Yeah, like uh, when you, I had Uncle Bobby on the other day, um, or uh, I don't know, a few days, maybe a week ago. Um, like he wouldn't uh, use the name. Uh, well, let's just call him uh, Benny Shapino. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He called him uh, what was it? The young people's philosopher or something like that. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, come on, seriously. Oh, Lord, let's do this, guys. This is going to get this stream canceled. Fuck it. <laughs> I hate Barack Obama. You, you say, well, you just mean, oh. you don't like what he says. <laughs> no, Why not? Oh, hey, you Why not? Oh, yeah. This yeah. is yeah. craziness. Now, I'm going to prove this from the Bible tonight. Why I oh. should hate Barack Obama. Why God wants me to hate Barack Obama. Why God hates Barack Obama. This is oh, YouTube Steve Anderson. YouTube has got to make a clip of that. He's the leader of the, <laughs> the NIFB, the New Independent Fundamentalist Baptist Church. He is about as extreme as it gets. Hate? He hates pretty much yeah. every group out there that is not white. <laughs> I think he gets man. us in he's trouble. He's a hate monger through Obama. and through. Can't on, stand Barack on, Obama. On, Obama. Like stand he's Jewish the worst. Nerdy. People from the Jewish community can't stand all kinds of like, people. I'm, I'm, I'm to about to disconnect this stream from Kanye Twitch. Recently. Because so I wanted to <laughs> take a look at Kanye as well as Kanye's comments personally. Because he hates me. Oh, really? They both had some deeply disturbing things to say about the Jewish community. This stuff's Ooh, that bad. I'm talk about that. Let me just give you, you a little bit of an introduction. Hey, look, if you're, if you're on, if you're on Twitch, watch you. on YouTube. Bye. <laughs> hating members of the LGBT community. I mean, Not his full of blown it's awareness. hating them. He's even been on like famous TV got, shows to talk about this. Of I check before. this out. This yeah, is that's why I don't, that's why I don't play as many nano clips. <laughs> I've always hated gay people. Is it something your father taught you, <laughs> or is it something we say like, we should just round up all the homosexuals <laughs> and put them on a boat and send them to the other? <laughs> <laughs> he says it's so awful. It's actually, I, it's like, I know we shouldn't laugh, but it's like, it's so bad. If you don't laugh, you'll, it'll crush you because you can't it believe will. people are saying shit like this. I know. It, it is. It, oh, it, it, man. It, black in your heart. It will. Oh, man. That you came to on your own. Now, some people would hear this question and no, say to themselves, I, wow, this I is a loaded question. I don't hate gay people. I just don't think they should be allowed to exist in society. 
they want to keep it as veiled as possible and dog whistle to the people who really do hate gay people. So let's see how yeah. Steven Anderson of the NIFB myself, like, responds. No, I haven't name. always. You know, I grew up in a Christian home, but it wasn't until I read the Bible cover to cover at age Their 17 that I discovered the truth of what the Bible form. really says. So he very obviously is embracing who don't like the claim them are the that ones he hates gay society. people. Like he's, he just, he wants it. He yeah, likes that. Yeah, he that wants to be known as the pastor who hates, who hates the gay community. Because a lot of society. passages they don't ever get preached from the pulpit because they're simply not popular. Yep. I have to be honest. When now, I, heard I, I agree sermon, with him about it this, sounded right? Like the that the Bible is hateful towards LGBT. And it is. He, and that a lot of passages don't get preached from the pulpit because they're not popular. He's he's yeah, absolutely correct about this. That. Yep. They have to go around that. So as hateful as he, as hateful as he is, I think he really reflects the actual yeah. faith. Yes, that's true. Yeah, because a, a lot of a lot of uh, pastors they have to walk around this part, you know, because it, so many people of their uh, congregation have. Uh, uh, LGBT uh, people in their families, that they'll 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 leave. You know, they'll leave. They'll lose members if they go full okay. on what the Bible says, full anti-gay, uh, you know, um, sermons, and uh, and they they know they can't. You know, that if they do, they'll lose uh, they'll lose a part of their congregation. So they have to walk around it. Absolutely. Have either of you guys been watching Jennifer Bird's channel? No, no. I don't know who that is. She's got a series called What Does the Bible Say or Does the Bible Say It? And she covers a lot of these hot topics and what is actually written in the scripture. What's actually written in the Hebrew text. Actual words. This is what it is. No, we can always Yes, just... it says this. No, it says that. In this context, in the way they live, and they're only like 10-minute segments. So, you know, we can, always, they're interested. we can always just ask Richard Madsen what it says. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he actually might know. He is polite. Oh, yeah. With the peace. Uh, what is it? Peace and respect that, he, uh, that they all say to yeah, each he, other. Oh, that just gives me cult like Bob's when they do that. I was thinking about Spock. This is crazy. All right, gang, we can roll tape. Good shit. Yeah. It's all spot. Things of someone who was either a hate monger or a religious it's zealot, and I'm wondering which are you? Again, another <laughs> seemingly loaded question, right? Anybody else being asked these questions would want to keep it more veiled and be a little less obvious about what they believe, but not Steven Anderson. Well, I'm a religious zealot, and uh, you know, I love the Bible. I love God's word. I believe that the law of the Lord is perfect. See, he's all about embracing hate. He loves to hate other people. And he loves for others to know that he hates them. He's a deeply no, disturbing really person to the bottom of his black little heart. Absolutely. This happened not too long ago. This one is from January 5th, 2022. Check out what happened when somebody walked into his church and wasn't really familiar with the setting. Hey, I guess sit down. Sit down. What are, you, what are you coming up here to do? You want, you want to come take over the service? Uh, huh? Over the service. What, what do you want? What? I just want a prayer. Man. Get out of here. He wanted a prayer. So in some wow. churches, like Pente Pentecostal churches, for example, you can go up to the front and, and do a prayer or whatever. Here. This, is, nice this is the guy that No, you can't. No, you, you, you get out of here. Kill get him out of here. Work. Drag this bozo out. Wait, what the hell's going on here? Pull him out. Hey, help They're him out. They're dragging him out of church? And you know what? Yeah. If anybody wants to come up here and take over the service, we'll throw you out of here, buddy. This church is not a free-for-all. This isn't an open mic. This isn't a karaoke bar. He's deeply hateful in everything that he says wow. and does, obviously. Damn. I'm the man of God here. I meet the qualifications. Church. I run this church. And if you don't like it, then get out. This God is not some church where own. every first time visitor and brand new believer and people who've never you know read the guy Bible guy are going to come up and up. take over the service. Not happening. Okay? Dude, if you want that kind of watered down leadership, go to some house. And like look at how his bug. fucking secret, his, his security guys look like secret service, like broke yeah. ass secret service agents. They've got the dark suits on and the dark sunglasses indoors. 
I know, man. At it's, this 200 creepy. person church. No, somebody beat it's his ass growing up. Church. I mean, yeah, like, beat him church. down repeatedly a lot. It's a tiny little church with folding chairs, and he's kicking people out. And this guy, this guy is creepy as fuck. Yeah, and honestly, like, it's important that people are able to cover this because okay. even though I knew he said the, the like hateful stuff about people I didn't I didn't know he was doing wild shit like this in his church the most canceled pastor in the world oh, yeah de yeah definitely most canceled pastor in the world yeah I didn't know who this guy was I mean we were joking about uh who side Tim Bruden cake uh, what he said he would be a, a serial killer if he wasn't a Christian I think this yeah. guy really would be probably Maybe this guy is. I don't know. All right, you guys want to hear a funny story? Yeah. So well, when yeah. so when Nano first started making those crazy edited videos with Steven Anderson, yeah. not only did we not know who Steven Anderson was, me and fucking No Name sat there and had a debate about if the person in these crazy-ass Nano videos was Nano. Uh. So, like, we thought somehow Nano was, like, just making these crazy videos where they, like, I don't know, like, like fucking green screen themselves onto, like, a yeah. pulpit or something, like, screaming yeah. shit about. And so, like, we, I remember asking Nano, like, and I was, and I felt like a such, and I was like, Nano, is that you? And then Nano's like, no, it's like Pastor Steven Anderson. And then we yeah. looked it up and realized that was that's who it was. It's yeah. so incredible. I didn't realize it was actual, actual the first time I watched that. Well, it's, it's so ridiculous. Yeah, you think this yeah. is this is some atheist or somebody pulling a stunt. Like, on, yeah, is this a comedy skit? Yeah, you know? like some sort of great hysterical comedy. And I almost didn't want to know because you feel like you're asking somebody to like, go behind, like pull the curtain back. And, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, so it was Nano who actually told me, like, "Oh no, this is this this is Stephen Anderson." Yeah, and then I looked him up. He's, yeah, he really yeah. Bad. So literally, I wouldn't even he, know yeah. who this guy was if not for that. But yeah, I literally thought maybe that was <laughs> Nano. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I was. I, mean, with your I, was I would suspect too. I would suspect. Too. <laughs> yeah, because you wouldn't. You don't know. You just all I knew is that this person sends us these clips, and this is what's in them. <laughs> I was yeah, like, maybe right? that's yeah. you know, you know, because I mean, I could, like, does somebody really talk to the congregation? Like that? <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I don't think so. I'm suspect. Oh, <laughs> you know? willingly go and give their money to that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's good thing. Look at them, and they're. Why clapping. would you pay to sit in a room with they're, them? They're clapping for him. They're amening and hallelujah, and they're with him. And I and gang, remember this. I bet you there's a bunch of them. Who are giving him ten percent off the top? Uh, yeah. Please and sit around the coffee off table the top with a coffee of clutch. every chat. This is a New Testament church. A nice we have piano. a bit. Wow, that it's was a, that was Hell an yeah. oddly vivid and specific uh, creation that he just gave us. Okay, has he done that specific thing before? We have a bishop here. We have an overseer here. Like it or lump it. And if you don't like it, feel free to get up and leave the service at any time. Or 50% of people walk out. I don't care. Because you know what? I'm not going to pass for a oneness cult. Uh, yeah, bad news for uh, old Steven Anderson here. I think that's exactly what he's doing. I'm not going to pastor a Pentecostal church. I'm the pastor of a Baptist church. And if you're not a Baptist, then get out. So needless to say, wow. he's an angry, hateful, <laughs> vengeful person who looks for opportunities to attack and demean and, and whatever. That's just Steven Anderson. That's who he's always been. He's a cult leader, a full-blown cult leader, an extremist, always has been. A while back, Steven Anderson was actually banned from YouTube and a bunch of other <laughs> platforms, rightfully so, just like Alex Jones, yeah. who's pulled down. And he had to set up his own website for it, basically. But he was so upset <laughs> that YouTube banned him that he had some things to say about it and, and went completely over the top. Listen to what he said here. Oh, by the way, this is from uh, early September 2021 when this happened. It's too bad that this message about the love of God is struggling to find its way on YouTube. This is not about the love of God. This is very clearly <laughs> about the hate of God, but okay. Yeah. It's pretty sad when my wife has to call me before the service and say, what, where's the channel? I can't find it. His YouTube channel had 125,000 subbies on it. 
Because oh, YouTube has been shit. deleting no. our channel. It's not her fault. YouTube is deleting our channel. Like oh. every week, every day. You know, meanwhile, Insane Clown yeah. Posse's channel is doing what? fine. Truth is hate to those who hate the here. truth. And right now, Truth you know, is hate to uh, those who hate YouTube the truth. That sounded good. It's just banned me and just... Here's where it gets real. You ready? Buckle up. Deleting my channels one after the other. You know, it's just I make a new channel, it gets deleted. I keep respawning. Every yeah. time I die, I, I, I'm, I've got, I'm not, I don't have nine lives. I just keep coming back, keep respawning. Keep yeah, respawning, that's true. keep he, coming back. He keeps back. respawning, i.e. I, he keeps creating new YouTube channels. But you know how long it takes Steven that's Anderson to create a new YouTube channel? 20 minutes, probably at least, minimum. He has to create a new email account with Gmail. He has to set up a new YouTube channel, add a profile picture, add his name and bio and all that stuff, and then he has to upload the videos. But then how does he get his subs? He has to add yeah, metadata to them and thumbnails. You know how long it takes YouTube to delete his channel? No time at all. Literally enough. half a second. They just click oh. delete, and they're done. That's it. So he's wasting hours and hours and hours of his life creating new YouTube channels for somebody to just hit the delete button on the other end. No big deal. So, you know, I say this about people that I block. There was some dude a while back that kept creating accounts on Twitter that was like, Owen is stupid. Owen is a loser or something like that. And he kept like posting like pictures of my face photoshopped into like images or something. And I just block him and move on with my life. He creates a new account. Right, like seriously. Goes through the process of making a new email address, making Lock. a new account, and then photoshopping my face the onto troll. more images and posting them all over. And I just hit block again. Lock. And he does it all over again. It took me like <laughs> half a second to hit the block button. And it took him 20 Holy. minutes to create a new account. Like, I care. I will just keep hitting the block button. It really does it's not matter to me. Guys. He thinks that he's the one winning in this situation. You're wasting <laughs> hours and hours of your life that you will never get back for absolutely nothing. They cannot stop us from preaching the word of God. Maybe all, maybe the fact that California is God's going up in flames up right now. Yeah, there was uh, there were wildfires in California. It, it was that that's what was happening at that time. Maybe the, maybe maybe God can just go like, and maybe it can hit. Mountain View, California, You're like, what? and torch old YouTube's headquarters. Torch old Google's headquarters, right? He is literally wishing death on people. He is literally <laughs> yep, seemingly absolutely. praying for a fire to burn down somebody who he considers to be an enemy. That That's yeah. unhinged. He's that is extremism, me. plain as day. He's a that is unhealthy, yeah. unsafe, ridiculous. So now you should have an idea of who this guy is how he feels about things, and why we've got to talk about him. And that brings us to and our old buddy nose. Kanye West. I you promise these two Damn. subjects connect to each other. Oh, and it's gonna be interesting oh let's go. Just bear with me through this. Okay? Oh, yeah, Kanye back? West Did they find has him? been going through a, a serious anti-Semitic phase in his, recently. In his, I don't think uh, it's a phase. It's probably not the right word. Snowboarding, snowboarding jacket? His, uh, snowmobiling jacket? Yeah, I was worried he was sleeping guys, under guys, a hill Guys, guys, you know how like hip-hop fashion's always like uh, some sort of sports clothing with the twist. What's is this? Is am I right? Is this a snowmobiling jacket G gang? Guess how, what sport is this? Is this some sort? This looks like a snowmobile it's racing got, yeah. jacket. Yeah, definitely some kind of winter sport involving snow. <laughs> and uh, but, yeah, the headgear goes with it too. So, yeah. yeah. yeah well, this, oh my goodness. You know, what sport do you have to wear believe, for? I cannot believe that he has co custody of his children. It's fucking Klondike uh, snowmobiling in, in like blizzard yeah. conditions and you have to have a full face covering to yeah, protect exactly. yourself from dog the conditions. Dog sledding. Dog <laughs> sledding. <laughs> oh my goodness. Nerdy said, I think the official name oh, for that yay. is doing an Otangelo. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know, oh, today yeah. he's been leading the Damn. charge against the Jewish community. It's been, really it's been terrible. In fact, I've made a lot of videos about it recently. He has come out as an incredibly hateful person, doing everything he can to demonize the Jewish community, 
and yeah, hate and them and turn people against them everyone. Else. I wanted to give you a little bit of insight into that. If you're watching this five years Actually, in the future, you're unfamiliar with what Kanye West had to say recently. Give this clip a listen. This is uh, an interview he did with Gavin McGinnis. Check it out. Uh, again, this is Kanye West. He's been wearing a mask for these interviews for one reason or another. But for one reason or another, sure. In charge of everything because they don't. Oh my He's talking goodness! About Jews. He's talking about they don't Jews. Put Christ of course. And, and but how do you legislate that? They need to work for Christians. Jews should work for Christians. What? I'll hire a Jewish person in a second. Mm. If I knew oh. they were a spy and I could look through their phone and follow them to their house and have a camera all in their living room. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? You know, they're laughing, but it's really not Are you a laughing serious? matter. Even, even to them. Like, they don't really <laughs> consider that Holy shit. an amusing thing. I got funny. the impression that they were laughing because... They recognized how ridiculous this was going to sound when it finally came out. But they're dead serious <laughs> with this stuff. It Kanye is West, true. It Nick Fuentes, so his little buddy over here on the left, they're dead serious. Kanye they West thinks that there is serious. a legit a cabal of Jews out there pulling strings like puppet masters. I mean, it's absolutely unhinged from reality. I don't know what else to call it. This was with Gavin Ooh. McGinnis, right? This is like, a, I don't know, a five-hour interview or something like that. It was really, really long. He did another three-hour interview with Alex Jones on, on InfoWars, and that one was, that was just as unhinged, yeah, at yeah, least. He... Check this one out. I don't really care that much about Hitler. I love him. Seems like he just doing his own way to like a troll. Uh, no, he seems oh, okay. like a this cool guy. Right you know, it's like, like he, uh, <laughs> he, you know, it's like he had a really cool outfit KKK and stuff. And he was a really good architect. With hate speech. And, uh, and so he, you're in love with the with the with the with the with the, with the, arch, the, 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 the look of it. And he didn't kill six the million Jews. That's it? just like factually incorrect. He did actually what? kill yeah, six million did. Jews. This is part of Holocaust denial, Seriously. questioning how many people died in the Holocaust. Listen, I mean, guys, when you line people up, he did not kill. He was part of it. He did not kill six million Jews. He killed about five million nine hundred nine nine hundred thousand nine hundred and ninety eight. You know what I mean? They added in all the young children. Six million Jews. He killed six million Jews plus four hundred million other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He took orphans, underprivileged, and like a mental deficiency children in. Did experimentation and killed them too. You just have just to be Jews. the These were worst German children. person when you want to argue about what the number should be. It's just mm. that's yeah. And I, and well, honestly, really that's what I realized with COVID was. You know, well, like we, did, we didn't care. What the, we didn't care out. what the numbers were at some point, and then when we reach like a million. When when we reached a million American deaths, I was like, man, we celebrated with a moment of silence. And by moment of silence, I mean, don't talk about it at all. Yeah. It was crazy. Dug a hole and pull, that and they dug themselves it, and, and pulled the trigger dogs over and, and over and over everybody in an entire town. Okay, and the people that are like, pulling the trigger are drunk. In the first right, place, Kane. when you're sending people Mo. through these chambers day in and day out, you lose track of how many people die. That's inevitable. So we don't have exact figures. We've had to sift through records and count through graveyards and, and all kinds of other stuff to try to get an idea of how many people actually died. It was roughly six million. That was roughly the number but again it's really hard to tell when you hear people like kanye say it wasn't six million that's factually incorrect they're trying to get a foot in the door to make claims that it it didn't happen at all they want to right start back, out small sure. and claim it didn't happen to the degree that is claimed publicly and if they can convince people of that then they can convince them that it wasn't you know, out of the ordinary, like Jews weren't even persecuted practically. That's kind of the idea behind the rhetorical strategy that he's employing here. So, yeah, it was about six million, give or take. So Kanye, needless to say, has gone full blown, complete anti-Jewish, like really, really disturbing stuff. Now, here's where this connects with Steven Anderson. OK, interestingly enough, Steven Anderson released a video I think in 2015, about Holocaust denial, of all things, right? This pastor decided to spread conspiracy theories about it. 
Listen to what he had to say here. Again, I think this is from 2015. This was either from the documentary, quote unquote, that he did, or it was like part of the promotional thing. I don't remember which. It was like 37 minutes long. I watched the whole thing the other day. If there was no mass cremation of millions and millions of Jews, then can you really call it the Holocaust anymore? There oh, was. So my Steven goodness. Anderson spent the, the previous 20 and minutes yes, trying to convince people yes, that this didn't With happen. these terrible ass arguments. Okay, we have yes, historical records. We have people happen, that were there and saw this happen. It did. It did happen. This guy Holy just lives in a fantasy shit. land. All of these people live in a fantasy land. Of all things to deny, it just blows my mind that people are even It's like the people, there's like this one story where... Um, there was like a building that was involved in, you know, one of the concentration camps. And apparently there's like no lock on the building door anymore. And rather than drawing the sensible conclusion that, you know, the shit's happened since then or whatever the fuck happened to the fucking lock on the door. It's like, oh, there was no lock on that door. Therefore, what were they really doing there? They couldn't have been, that couldn't have been gassing people there. Well, then the whole Holocaust didn't happen. Like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like, they just picked these random facts, which to deny them is silly. They said anything that but involves even if of they were true, they're just bad. irrelevant. Just irrelevant. Yeah, it's crazy. Of denying, but yeah, Kanye okay. now is okay. on the same now again, Stephen Anderson tip. That's what he sounds like when he Jews says this shit, die. though. He does sound like Stephen II. Anderson, and that Jews were not even murdered in World War II. Again, if they can convince oh you that goodness. it wasn't a mass scale, but again, campaign, if they can convince you, then they can convince a miracle you baby was born to a virgin, so I guess attacked, or they practically weren't even persecuted in the first place. It's nonsense. But it's part of the rhetorical strategy, and it has been since day one. Lots of people were murdered in World War II. There were all kinds of casualties on both sides. And, and the thing about it is yes. that just because people were rounded up and put in forced labor camps, that does not mean that they were systematically exterminated and cremated to the tune of six million. You know, keep in mind, the United States rounded up Japanese people and put them in a yes. concentration camp, okay? That's actually very true. Matter of fact, there's a um, the actor on the original Star worked. Trek who nice. played Sulu, George Takei, yeah. was one of those Japanese people who was rounded up and put in a concentration camp in the United States. A lot of people don't know about this. Was, they, they were not like was. taking them out the same way that they were in Germany. As far as I know, they weren't using them for forced labor either in the United States. Um, somebody can fill me in if that's incorrect but anyways they were jailing them absolutely george wow. takei's family owned a dry cleaning business Made i believe sell their houses they seized that. their assets took oh, everything there it is. damn yeah. carry on her shit all right gang we're switching over hey, yeah, I know much. and it is a championship fucking opportunity here for uncle bobby to win his third Ooh. heavyweight championship of the world man this has been a, a super fun journey i'm gonna try to finish out this career i might even start another one with the young bobby all right but uh all right coming up next a matchup to determine the baddest man on the planet oh the yeah heavyweight title is on the line Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, I want to be in their number, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the sun refuses to shine, oh, when the sun refuses to shine, I still want to be in that number. Uh oh. 
Bennett, UFC heavyweight champion. There he is in the flesh. What an absolute you got monster. This. What a title reign. What a monster. Yeah, but you yeah, got we it. Yeah, I, we can beat him. We beat him a couple times. That this challenger was the one who would wrest the belt away. Now the fight is here. We'll see if we get a new champion or if this man continues one of the greatest heavyweight legacies All right, I'm back. the Octagon has ever seen. Uh, yeah, I had somebody go with me up to that room. Was there money in it? Nope. Of course. So now that's going to be a problem. Well, at least you, you brought a witness with you. That was smart. Yeah. Uh -huh. For this heavyweight championship fight. Two years apart, these two fighters. Damn. There we go. Some differences in reach. He's got the reach advantage, too. Bruce Buffer. Oh, oh, Bobby lost the reach advantage, yeah. The main event of the evening. And when the action begins, a referee in charge of the octagon, Eve Loving. And now, this is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live from the sold out United Center in Chicago, Illinois. It is. Championship of the world. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a Muay Thai kickboxer and jiu-jitsu fighter, holding a professional record of 30 wins, four losses. He stands six feet five inches tall, weighing in at 255 pounds. Fighting out of Austin, Texas. Introducing the challenger, Robert. And now introducing the champion. Fighting out of the red corner. This man is a boxer, holding a professional record of 26 wins, nine losses. He stands six feet four inches tall, weighing in at 250 pounds. Fighting out of Paris, France. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning, defending USC heavyweight champion of the world, Francis the Predator. UFC belt on the line, guys. Protect yourself at all time. Obey my command at all time. If you want to touch love, do it now. Go back to your corner. They touch him up, and we are underway. Here we go. to come as he lands a kick there. Nice kick landed by this gentleman. You wonder if the offensive fighter is going to start to get frustrated here. Most skipped on all these shots are getting blocked. They're getting blocked because he's fighting one of the best defensive fighters in the UFC. Look at him whip his hip into that kick. <sighs> oh. Oh, shit. Oh. Ooh, oh no. Got these fucked up button inputs. Circling away towards the left. Oh! There you the go. Oh. Oh! Oh! He's hurt bad. He's, hurt bad oh. He's got to press it. He's got to go chase that finish down now. There you go. There you go. Good punch. Goes oh, in and secures the takedown. Looks pretty tight, DC. There you I know go. you're saying Jiu-Jitsu black belt, but maybe not good here. No, it looks like he's getting in deep. A triangle, a triangle. There he is. He's moving to the finishing position. Now there he's watching he... old parallel, right? That's the most important part. But when it's time to finish, oh, he might have got him with a choke. Oh, 
That was for the belt. Celebrating the effort. Yes. Cool. He got him. Woo. 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 Yeah, that's about as good as it gets with that choke. And if you're not willing to tap out as he was not, then you're going to go to sleep. And that's exactly what happened. A beautiful setup and even better technique to get the finish to put him out cold. All right, let's take a look back at the replay as he gets it done by submission tonight, champ. Just watch how slowly he approaches the submission. Notes. He never rushes. He takes his time, but it's his trickiness. It's his ability to <laughs> trick him into going to the floor with him that puts him in danger in finishing fight. Put his ass to sleep. Is that what that music was for? Yeah. <laughs> I got to find that. Did you want to finish that, that uh, so. Marco um, series? Yeah. Okay. Nine day? Huh? No, I was asking if you wanted to finish that Fargo series. Just incredible. Yeah. All right. Over at the card table? No, no, I mean, not right in this minute, but in a few minutes. Oh, yeah, you are quite out of work yet. <laughs> we still got you. So friends, we just saw the real world consequences of DOJ and put them in jail. I believe I, I've listened to George Clooney. If I remember correctly, I think he said his little brother was it's born just, let's in talk this about that. internment camp because just in America matters. that was for like set up for Japanese people. He, he viewed it as home. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, let's have a look at the real world consequences of the Department of Justice deciding not to prosecute people who plainly commit federal crimes. And let's use as an example, something that we learned from Cassidy Hutchinson's testimony to the January 6th committee. There's a great article out today. It's a piece in Salon, authored by Harvard Law Professor Lawrence Tribe, and former federal prosecutor, Dennis Aftergut. Here is the title of that piece. Scene of the crime. Was there a conspiracy to keep Cassidy Hutchinson silent? And the article goes on to lay out the evidence that to this old prosecutor's eye, sure looks like. When they released them back into the world, his little brother was sad. He, he, he left his house. He didn't know anything differently than living in the jail. It's crazy. But you know what they weren't doing? They weren't systematically exterminating them. They weren't withholding food rations. They weren't forcing labor out of them, as far as I know. And it wasn't a systematic effort to gather all Japanese people in all so the world, Europe and everywhere else, and Me send too. them this through these really good. chambers to take them out permanently. It was a completely different situation. And he knows that. He knows it was completely different. He wants to blur the line between what was happening with the Jewish community in Germany in the 1930s and 40s and what was happening to the Japanese community in America in the 30s and 40s. He wants to make it look exactly the same to, like, what's, what's his goal here? Your guess is as good as mine. To rehabilitate Hitler's image, I guess. I, if that's not his goal, that's the end result. But honestly, these camps, Auschwitz, Treblinka, and others, were probably forced labor camps, not death camps. or. Mm, they were definitely forced they labor camps. Forced also, labor until you die. people enter these camps, <laughs> specifically what Auschwitz, is wrong I know with a lot them? about this one because I've uh, read books about is... people that were there. 
Uh, in fact, I've read books by people that were there. When you arrive at Auschwitz, if you were of working age, say between the age of like 18 and 45, maybe, and if you were in good health, you didn't have you any, you know, if you had uh, decent cartoon, teeth novel, and, mouse. and all that other stuff, they would put you to work. You would stand in front of I didn't the read administrators. It. Mouse, you talking about the book? Left yeah. or right. If really good. To the left, I heard that I heard about the way they tried to, to get it canceled, but I didn't. Section um, of the camp. Yeah, if it was really to the right, it. you got to go to the. I read, uh, but in another Mouse section Mouse of Mouse this really Holocaust good. denialism thing that Stephen Anderson produced, he had commissary, like a, a, a dollar or a type of dollar, a, a currency that he found from one of these camps or whatever, and claimed that Jews were paid for their work. That's completely oh. absurd mm. i have no idea where he found that currency i don't even know if it's actually from one of these camps but jews were not paid for their work they were given rations every day well most yeah, days ham, and it was we'll absolutely not enough for too. them to survive they looked like skull uh, they looked like skin and bones Damn. when they were rescued by americans or they did or, or whatever else Awful. but you know what the, the whole goal doesn't matter by Steve my Anderson narrative seems makes my narrative work confusing yep. people Mm -hmm. and convincing them that the whole thing was a lie, disgustingly. You see, the Germans wanted the Jews working to fuel their war machine. I mean, they had drafted every man that was able-bodied into their military, especially toward the end. I mean, they're drafting 16-year-olds, they're drafting 45-year-olds. That's true, that's true. Um, they were still running the death machine, though, even through the war. At the beginning of 1942, 25% of the Jewish people who would eventually go on to die in World War II were dead. At the end of 1942, 75% were dead. Hitler took power in 1933. Full-blown attacks and executions of the Jews started in 1937, 38, and then the war was over by 1945, April 25th, 1945, I think. So 1942 was the key year where the death machine was at its height. And beyond that, they started conquering other lands like Hungary and Holland and other places like that and shipping Jews into yeah. Auschwitz and other places. The war started going badly for them around 1944, 1945, and they started pushing oh, that, forced labor heavily, but they were still that. definitely taking people out at these camps for sure because they're just trying to get as many soldiers out there on the field and they needed people working to make the bullets the tanks the equipment to keep the yeah war they work them going they and so they're die. using the jews for forced labor in these camps actually that makes a lot more sense when you look at the facts don't you love how this is like built oh. like a documentary it's framed up like it's a documentary when it's complete nonsense beginning to end Check this one out. This is another is clip okay of Steven Anderson. That, Again, this connects oh, back they, to Kanye West in a second. Bear with me. Let's go back to 1933 when Hitler, please do, first take, took power. Into a gas and chamber and killing him the immediately. The goal of the Nazis, the goal of Adolf Hitler, his stated goal was that he wanted the Jews out of Germany. Now, he persecuted the Jews also. Hitler wanted the Jews out of Germany. That was his goal. He didn't want to hurt them. <laughs> Those poor guys, he just wanted them out of Germany is all. Right. No big KKK deal, right? didn't want to Where did he get these murder black people. Ideas? They just wanted to protect, protect white man's well, America. He, he wanted to make their lives miserable. Okay, I, I don't feel like that is a reasonable description of what happened in World War II. Of course He's just not. trying to make their lives miserable so they'd leave. That's insane. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying that mm -hmm. that's right, but he basically made their lives miserable and he also tried to offer them incentives to emigrate wow. somewhere else. He offered them incentives yeah, to emigrate somewhere else. To back is so like incentive. he paid them money to move to America is what you're telling me? Is that why the trains ran straight through the Atlantic Ocean to the United States rather than, you know, somewhere else, say in Poland maybe or in Germany? Weird. Was to get them out of Germany. Now, who else had that same goal? <laughs> okay, God, this guy, I can't. I cannot with this dude. He claims that the Zionists were the ones that were, he says the Zionists were working with uh, Hitler in World War II, which oh. means people who wanted Jews to what? go to Israel. 
Zionists mm. are people who are pro-Israel, basically. So he says Zionists wanted to create the country of Israel. They did that in response. And they were working, like Jewish people were working with Hitler to drive Jews to Israel. There. That was the whole goal of the whole the thing. The comment about God Israel being Jews destroyed, was it well, meaning Israel be itself or the people because of Israel? Because the goal of the Zionists was to get the who Jews knows? to go to Palestine. And well, I'm guessing that people. Guessing the people. people. Nothing yeah, this guy says is yeah. based in historical I'm thinking that's what motivated whatsoever. that. He is a lot completely of it. full of it. From beginning but I think part of the Zionist thing is that they, I don't like know, they've got it wrapped up in like the people yeah, need to be returned to the land for to was. activate uh, and the it was crazy from beginning apocalyptic. To end, up. Oh my god, dude! So Ignition. now it's the burning so the question: How does this relate to Kanye West? Yes, a lot of people who are Others have to die. Kanye West's recent meltdown. Now, as we've seen, Stephen Anderson is most definitely. Anti-Semitic, yeah. obviously, that was right? I, I feel like there's no way to avoid that. And when, Kanye West um, is obviously anti-Semitic. Kanye the, also uh, claims uh, to be ultra-Christian, like a super Kane, giga ultra-religious wing nut, right? So you, you know, think Steven Anderson is like a huge Kanye fan now. Yeah, Listen to what he had weird. to say about Kanye West. This is from early December 2022. After Annihilism, five years as annihilation a so-called fantasy. Christian, isn't it time for Kanye West to be able to quote one single Bible verse correctly? After five Wait, years of supposedly after being a Christian? This is actually pretty deep lore, but in the Alex Jones interview that Kanye West did, he wanted to read a Bible verse, and he didn't know how to quote it. So he said, I don't remember what, what verse it was, like 2 Corinthians 23, 5-7 is how he read it. And any Christian who's been a Christian for any period of time knows you don't say five dash seven. You right, say, just say five seconds. Take a two five Corinthians two seven. That's probably what Stephen Anderson is referring to. Kanye West not knowing how to direct people to a Bible verse. That that probably yeah. tipped him off. But I find the the more interesting point here is that Stephen Anderson watches Infowars. Now I, I've known that for a while. I've known yeah. because Stephen Anderson has come out and said. That he likes Alex Jones. He watches Alex surprise, Jones on a regular basis. But he watched the Kanye episode too, apparently. And the thing that upset him about that episode? Not that Kanye said that he loves Hitler. Right. Not that he thinks that the Jews were not really persecuted. Not any of that stuff, of course. Sam's yes. barking. It's it's he didn't know how to direct people to a Bible verse. That was his problem right. with the yeah. Kanye West, Alex Jones interview. I don't and expect Kanye a five-year-old to be soiling their pants. I expect that from a baby. Yet Kanye West soils himself on every interview. He soils himself every time he goes on TV. He pants every single time he opens his mouth. Dude, I am so confused. Why? <laughs> Why is he drawing this vivid imagery for us? I don't get it. You know what? When you're five years old, it's time to grow up. But guess what? He's not five years old because he's not even saved. He's not even a fetus. He's zero. Five years because old. Because he's not a Girl. child of God. He's not saved. He's a fake, false Christian. Oh, okay, wow. yeah. So his big issue with Kanye West is He's a fake Christian he because he can't. It's that he's a fake, false Christian, quote unquote. Because he can't. The guy gets he really buy that Bible on the Alex Jones passage show for correctly. three hours. And there are over three million Seriously, people. Seriously, should we buy that this three thing. He's literally speaking no. on a live broadcast yeah. that was listened to within a few days by three plus million people. Up there. Yep, that's a lot of people. So not a surprise. I mean, Alex Jones does have a lot of reach, especially when Kanye West is a guest on there. Let alone all the different excerpts of it and clips everywhere. And, and, and Alex Jones is like, you're the host. You have the floor. Say whatever you want. I'm here to give you a platform. And for three hours, the idiot can't even quote a single Bible verse. Why can't he explain how to be saved? He did quote a Bible verse. He just quoted it incorrectly. And I'm assuming that's what he's upset about. Not only that, but I guess he's also upset that he didn't talk about how to be saved. He talked about the Jews. Well, Steven Anderson's done the exact same thing. Like yeah. I said, 37 minutes and 10 seconds of nonstop Holocaust denialism from Steven Anderson. This is... Like his bread and butter. I'm honestly really surprised that Steven Anderson doesn't seem to be a fan of Kanye West after the things that he said. Explain yeah, how to be saved. Why couldn't he spend 10 hand. seconds explaining how to be saved? 
how to go to heaven. Because he's not saved and because he's not going to heaven. That's why. And when he says at the beginning and end of the broadcast, Jesus is king. Jesus is king. Folks, that's not a theological statement. That's the name of his album that he's trying to sell you. That's true, actually. That is the name of his album. But, I, you know, I feel like that's incidental. I, I feel like he named the album that because... He, he is trying to Jesus sell you Jesus be King. King. Yeah, like, okay. I mean, come on. That's the name of his album that he's trying to sell you. That's a sales pitch for his music. Okay, Jesus, dude. I, I, <laughs> Steven Anderson is absolutely nuts. Everything about the guy. It, it, I'm just really surprised that he didn't turn out to be a Kanye fan after everything Kanye did. Yeah. This is right uh, up Steven Anderson's yeah. alley. This hits all the boxes that he loves. I just don't get it. I don't know. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Do you want to hear more stuff about Steven Anderson? Do you want to hear more stuff about Kanye? Tell me what you think about it. All right. Hey, Kerry, I've got that set up. If you want to watch. All right. Let me, uh, let me end the stream. Uh, oh, all right, gang. I forgot it was Cooper Cohen. Huh? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'll end the stream. Uh, all right, gang. We'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to go to bed soon anyway. Uh, appreciate everybody in the name of Darwin, the Dawkins, the Christopher Rich, and Science Bless y'all. We'll see you later. Sometimes she don't want to be alone. Most times she don't want me gone. She don't know I try my all.